Welcome to St. Lotus 14. My name is Stephen Hagen. Peter and I squish in here. Get in here. My name's Hagen. I am Peter, uh, also known as Halt I Am Reptar. And uh, we are here with your announcing crew for St. Lotus 14. Normally, uh, Peter comes in from a distance, but today, uh, for this uh, special one, he flew in. And when I say special, we have a hell of a lineup today, folks. Like... Um, so, we have Mason, uh, three-time champion, drove down from Chicago. We've got Brandon, who has only won one, but ha is, it, ha is a former champion, but team has top forward several, team captain of the, of the, of the Chicago St. Louis Clash, uh, former champion. We have Adam Varner, uh, all-star local grinder, uh, who won the last one. He won St. Louis 13. Uh, we have Dan Mangan, all-star local grinder, who has not won one, but uh, finished in the top four uh, in his first one in 13. We have Cody Owen, uh, who has w won a friends and family and has top forward uh, several, a uh, couple on stream ones. Mm -hmm. Coming in from Canada, we have Elaine Cow, the our, elusive, the elusive Elaine, and Elaine was our first uh, two-time champion or three-time champion. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly. I know she won two for sure. I think there's a third in there, uh, but her versus Mason is one of these matches that we've wanted for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we've got, um, and I'm going to blank it on the name off the top of my head because I don't have the list in front of me yet. We have uh, one, uh, one of Mason's buddies down from Chicago as well. So, uh, oh, and uh, Kyle Vance, who has not won one, but is top forward at least one, uh, but is a very talented local mm -hmm. grinder as well. So, uh, real, this is probably just top to bottom our, our densest amount. Yeah, of, one of the, the tightest right, groups that we've had. The tightest groups that we've had. So, yeah. so it'll be really exciting. Uh, and it's been, let's see, the last recorded streamed VRD we had December. was... Yep, December of 2023, and yeah. since then we've had what feels like 18 sets. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. I don't know how much those sets really... I know, oh, uh, Brandon, was he hasn't done one of these for a while, uh, either online or as he had some personal stuff. Yep. And I know he was very worried about the um, not being up on newer cards. I don't think there's anything I think breaking in those sets. There's not a fourth Aerolingus or a Minsk and Boo. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. There's so. good stuff. So uh, Mason also mentioned uh, something similar. He's been doing prep, but he feels like he's under prepped for this. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that uh, before the city champs, uh, we as the St. Lotus team were talking about the commander sets that him had been released because that's where a lot of the tech that you can introduce comes from. Yeah. Um, Mason said that he had not really gone through the commander sets. And one of the things I noticed when I was going back through the uh, Discord drafts was that it seemed like people either didn't know about or didn't draft broadside bombardiers. It's been drafted a couple times. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seemed like people were really light on that card, and yeah. I'm curious to see if people do start picking it up in, in this draft, and we'll see I tonight. think it's harder to pull off in VRD consistently because you don't have as many little just artifacts to fling. I, I would agree with that, yeah. but you don't just need artifacts. You right. can You can... Uh, at, you know, attack with bombardiers for the trigger, and then in the second main, you can evoke any of the evoke elementals and then throw them that's with legit. with, yeah. with uh, bombardiers. You can throw boo. Right. You can throw a chalice that's on zero or one. Right. There, you're, I, I believe you're correct. There's not a lot of good stuff to be throwing with bombardiers. Yeah, I'm not even talking about throwing big stuff. I'm just talking about, like, you're not going to have as much... Like even you're not gonna have as many like baubles and little exactly right, yeah. exactly and, and like the the little creatures you can pack alongside it are not going to be terribly impactful at the one and two mana right. value slots. Um, it is it is a card that I do see a lot in Legacy. Yeah, I rarely lose to it because I end up killing it and then reanimating it and then flinging my troll of Khazad Dune right. with it because I'm that kind of player. Uh, but I'm curious to see what if it does anything here. What you yeah. want? Yeah. Oh, you want to come in? Yeah. You want to backseat us? Yeah, thought I would come in and say hello. Brandon! So how close are you guys to drafting seats? Uh, we've just drafted seats. Oh, okay. So, so let's... we've got uh, Cody in seat one. Okay. We've got me in seat two. There we go. Uh, seat three was the first pick. So Dan oh, took seat Dan three? three. Yeah. Okay, interesting. He said, uh... All right, first pick, and he's like three. And which it's a, it's I've, a, I've done that before. It's it lower pressure, and it's a power seat. I don't hate it anymore, right? Like you don't feel forced to do the Lotus or recall, and you can just yeah. kind of yep. I, I mean, like you're basically like I've done this before, and you're basically guaranteed to get crypt, right? While also like potentially snagging 
the last remaining mocks. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 I think three is a very powerful seat. I so like. I don't. I don't hate the pick. I like three for this. Uh, a lot of the same reasons you guys were talking yeah. about when my wife and I were talking about this draft and what could be done, um, and we were talking about the seat draft. I like three for that exact reason. You're not really tied to Lotus or Recall right. or Walk. And you also that, that there's a pressure to Lotus and Recall, right? Yes. Because they're so good. You just it feels sometimes like if I fuck this, I'm a I'm a scrub. Yep. You know. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely a pressure to it. Um, so no, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I think it is an interesting move that we might it, like. It could be a trend from right. here where some where you can you might know that somebody isn't. Uh, excited about drafting Lotus Recall and be, being forced into that, so they want to remain a little more open. Right. Or maybe the strategy that they right. want to employ is still something that's top tier, but isn't something that's going to be fought over. Yeah. So you can just easily snap your pieces off. Well, there's another thing sometimes when I'm prepping, right? I, I prep for a lot of other seats, but then I have, I sometimes I have like a, well, here's my Lotus plan if I get one of those yep. seats. But having like the Lotus Recall plan, it just, if you have a plan and it doesn't need it, then yep. you know, don't compete with it yeah. and then let it slide down. Like Let other people do that. And It also gives you a really solid spot, especially if you're a blue. Three is where you can often snag Will on the way back and then still snag Negation possibly in round three. Yeah, yeah like, for sure. Three is in that spot that gives you a really good uh, ability exactly. to uh, snag that blue. That's actually why I like eight, too, because you get to kind of... It takes a little while for you to see where everybody's going, but eight is a seat that lets you get usually uh, a Mox, maybe two, yeah. possibly Fast Bombed, yeah. some other broken stuff. You don't have to be the Artifact deck, which is kind of what we've seen in the past. I know we harp, uh, like we lean on that one a lot, Harpon. Eight very rarely ends up in the blue deck. I did this yep. recently in an online. It didn't work out for me just because of other issues in the draft, but I grabbed Force of Will round two and eight, okay. and it threw the rest of the draft completely off. Yeah, yeah. Because eight never takes the Force, but eight almost never ends up in a really blue deck because of that. Right? Yeah, I, I think eight is also really good for for the Gruel deck. Like You can put your yeah. stamp on it. It often ends up in that Gruel, good stuffy... Mm -hmm. Because you're not gonna, you might fight over Lightning Bolt, but you're not necessarily going to fight over Ragavan because you right. want to be Minskin Boo, you want to be Fury, you want to be that kind of right. stuff. And like even Ruby Rock, Rock. I've, I've won off Ruby Ragavan in the eighth seed. I mean, yeah. it's just <laughs> if there's nobody in front of you that looks yeah. like they're going to be doing that, absolutely. Right. Um, but it's just yeah, the, so. the difference between like the red deck and the Gruel deck are, are. Brandon takes the recall, so I don't know where Brandon. Uh, Brandon's been out for a bit. Uh, he. He mentioned possibly going very off script for him okay. and going um, Sasha's Oracle. Um, That's then fair. He also mentioned a kind of Just Guy Tokens um, wide oh, yeah, there's um, techy stuff. So, so we have Fourth Eralingus and we have Forma Posse out of. Yeah, uh, I doubt he knows that Outlast. one, but yeah. Okay. But I mean, just but just the general. He at cards he loves. He loves Mentor. He loves. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, those kind of tokens yeah. for sure. And yeah. we, and recall recall Mentor right like that. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, you have both Pyro Masters, young and yeah. seasoned. You so do that easily. Uh, but and and that's the kind of good stuff. And now of course he's got some shenanigans in there. Oh, that's he a does soul that. ring art I've never seen before. Oh yeah, what is that? Must be. Uh, it is a commander art for yeah. sure. But which commander? I don't know. No. All right, so Sapphire, and then to the quick Soul Ring. Um, that one is a little surprising to me. I would have thought we would have seen other mocks in front you of know Soul what? Ring. I mean, but... it depends on what you're doing. Some yes. decks, like, there's a, uh, I know uh, Master Plum Online argues that, like, he thinks Soul Ring's overrated because the, okay. the, the cost of playing it on one mana on one slows you down. Yeah. And then there's sometimes, he one time I know he drafted it and then didn't even play it because... Ooh. Um, it just, it didn't, in his deck, it was like a Thassa's Oracle deck, and it mm. just, it didn't do much. It didn't fit with the plan. Right, and yeah. I know there's a couple, uh, there was a, a couple, two years ago, I think it was at Marchesa, where the winner was this Heliod, old, older Heliod mono white deck, and he didn't run Soul Ring, and everyone was like, this is a big CDH yeah. tournament, right? Yep. And everyone was like, that's the biggest mistake, and he let it, wrote a thesis on why it was right Ooh, to not run Soul Ring. That looks like an early time vault. Uh, you know, I was wondering, I actually, I'm not surprised, the vault, Varner, Varner won with Bomberman. Okay. But if, with uh, the way Cody was talking about how time vault's kind of flown, fallen away somewhere sometimes, and I said I expect vault to go early. Okay. And if, uh, two to threes, I mean, two, it's fallen as far as the three four range, but two's, yep. two's old school normal. But, I mean, it's back to return to normalcy. But do you think yeah. before like before a walk seems a little? I don't know. It depends on what you're doing, right? Like if you, if you know you're if he wants to rerun your bomberman or something like that, right? Sure, we got I a mean, bunch of keys you can yeah. do. You could like effectively I, yeah. Mystic Forge combo. I think he had it last time stuff. too yeah. in the bomberman. I think it was bomberman with time vault. Right? Yep. And now with Agatha's soul cauldron, there's a lot more that you can do. That shell yeah. opens up. You can play a lot more one ofs and feel confident in yeah. that deck. Yeah. Morning, morning, Swifty. Uh, yeah. So no, I think that just from what I know of Varner, that that fits very well yeah. what he did last time. I, uh, 
The first pick, Soul Ring, moving into Soul Lands into another Eldrazi X deck would be outstanding. And that is yeah. something that I, if I, I don't like that deck because it's not a play pattern I enjoy, mm -hmm. but it is something I could see happening. All right. Saga Soul Ring, that's solid. Yeah. Yep. You got to get your targets. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, you can get Lava Spur Boots now with this we, card? We discussed that earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, uh, there was being discussion about it. Lava Spur Boots, a uh, new vintage a, staple, right? Like, new Legacy staple. I have, yeah. uh, at my Legacy group, there's somebody who just plays uh, Mystic Forge combo, Mono Brown deck, and we were talking on Monday about Lava yeah. Spur Boots being one of the best cards that he can now yeah. fetch with Urza Saga to kill in yeah. a deck that just combos out. I saw an interesting, so there was a vintage tournament recently. Oh, dread not, Dread not, Dread, sorry. Uh, Shred all over the world. There was a vintage tournament recently where the new Pseudo Bob like was in two of the Oh, the Dark Bronfanon. Yeah. Caustic Brontodon. Right, right the, or, the, the horse. Yeah, the, thing. yeah the horse thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, now, I think, I don't necessarily think it's VRD playable, but I mean, why mm. it goes there is because it doesn't die to Bowmaster immediately, right? I think it it helps the dead guy Al kind of deck the the, the Orzov right. like taxi like tiki well the vengeance looks like all the only creatures that ran were Bowmaster in it like that was it that is not a lot okay and it was that was the only one that ran because it's one where if it's saddled it does the damage to them yep and if it's not saddled it's you, to you to yep. you if it's yep. not saddled it's Bob it, otherwise it's, if it's saddled it does the damage it's to that them, vampire so. from Ixalan right yeah yeah, yeah. I but, think that's it's, right. but it's a two two you have to attack with it it's yes yeah uh, for Eternal Weekend one of my locals. Uh, they went off script from the vintage meta and played a Dark Confidant deck. And uh -huh. I do believe the only ways for them to end the game was with uh, creatures turning sideways, those being Saga Tokens, Dark Confidant, and maybe Bowmasters. Right. Because why wouldn't you in a format that has recalls? Yeah, you gotta run right. Bowmaster. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, Bowmaster will probably never restricted there at some point. I mean, there's just no reason not to run it. You... If you want to spend the next 12 hours that we're purporting this draft is going to go talking about Bowmasters <laughs> in this game and grief, I can do that. You can leave the room and I'll take over for 12 hours. All right. All right. So Elaine, Elaine is renowned. Uh, so Elaine was in a lot of our early ones before mm -hmm. uh, she retreated to Canada. Yep. Right. And she is renowned for being a very s efficient picker. Okay. I.e. slow. Methodical. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's slow. She, she will slow down the draft. Yeah, I think it's an early drain. I have frequently stated I'm not a, actually that big of a fan of drain in this format I, anymore. I don't like drain at all. We have frequent conversations of can you, are we getting to a point in Legacy where you could unban drain reliably yeah. because the format is squished so far down to turn zero and turn one? Well, the issue with drain is that I think unless you are in distinctly the artifact list, the majority of the time it's just a counterspell. Yeah. Right, so why You're second picking a counter spell? That's the, the, the same right. point in, in Legacy yeah. right now. It's like, what are you going to do with all this excess mana that right. you have no dump for? Because you either acquire a lot of colored pips, right, or you just have no good follow up. That turn you're just going to pass yeah. and brainstorm fetch. Right? I I love the and Dan with the crypt white plume is singing the song of my people. <laughs> do you think? Okay. So I haven't gone through all the Discord drafts, so I right. don't know where the deck has gone. I've just been watching a lot of LSV's vintage drafts because mm -hmm. they're just on YouTube every yeah. day. I've seen every color combo of the initiative deck played. I've tried most every color combo. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. is is mono white still one of one of it's not the white best? white X is still. It's, it, it, I don't like mono white. It's white X. Okay. Would you go uh, for Kate? What is it? Chaos Adventure, Caves of Chaos Adventure, or Under Mountain. I still think Dark white, white, red, or Naya are are the best okay. two. Um, black is also fine. Blue is the worst. So the the black spell is the is it only the reanimation spell that the, gives you the, the black? Uh, yeah, the black spell is whatever. Like it's the funny enough the rare for black doesn't get it's the uncommon that's solid. Oh, uh, okay. The one that has life link that when they cast a or when you deal dam or when you cast a spell or it gets bigger or whatever. Got like it. Okay. So, okay. Uh, the the rare is not that uh, great. Yeah. The, um, and like you said, the blue ones iffy. The one that I the know blue ones cost too much. Like it's a flyer. It's, It'd yeah. be amazing. If and it, it makes the one, one that makes a token right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the no. blue is the blue is the worst. Okay. Uh, whole range. Oh, Ragavan. No, okay. Blue okay. is Ragavan. That is that is for sure a strong play. I, yeah. Uh, I so I know one list that Cody was tweaking around, and I know it involved Ragavan. Yep. So, um, Cody, it looks solid. Cody likes some spice, and there was some uh, new cards that were pretty spicy in that. Sup, Tulse. Um. So yeah, uh, recall whole breacher is is solid. Yep. Right. Like. Uh, don't forget, there's some tech there in that you are in, you can be in a weird spot, and if you need ramp, you, you go, you. hey, I'm going to take some treasures. Yep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I need some more mana. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> I just ramp myself, right? I, I do like that play. That is, But uh, but yeah, no, I'm not a big the mana drain, right? Go yeah. back to it. Like, it's just like, in the control decks, if you've got a lot of blue, like, okay, I'm not going to do anything with that mana anyway. I'm just going oh. to 
Nice, nice. So we have seat one taking the gruel deck, right. basically. Well, from. and that's who CD. that you know. Uh, that's he, a stamp. He's he's he, that paints him down there, right? Like. No, I scrolled the the sheet down. Oh yeah, where's we gotta find the uh, the tab? It's like way far away. Uh, bu- 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 yeah. Okay. So this is this isn't unsurprising. This lot, this setup of cards, I. I love Ragavan as a card. I don't like it in this deck because if you don't hit it on... Oh, no, we lost a sheet. Oh. You shrunk it down. Um, if you don't hit Ragavan early enough, it just is kind of like a dead draw later. I'd rather have that card from Commander. Uh, it's a 2 and a red for a 2-1. It has dash and either... I think when you dash it, it puts a plus 1, plus 1 counter on a creature, and I think it might give a double strike. That card's not Commander, but that card's good. Yeah. Um, okay. And it actually have had it played against me with Minskin Boo. Do you know the name of it? I and off the top of my head. Okay. But I they he almost seventeen me he seventeen yeah, me turn two yeah or turn three because he turned one Minskin Boo and then did that. Oh. Um, but I I still managed to win that game. Yep. <laughs> off of like recurring archons of cruelty real quick oh, yeah, over yeah, and yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. All right, so then the Force of Will. So uh, he takes the Force of Will here in round three, which Elaine, uh, after the Mandarin, is like the tomb. Shaking her fist across the table. Solidifies very strongly there with the crypt and then tomb. And, you know, he can be in the Eldrazi X deck at this point really easy. Um, Kind of a death and taxes-y. Yep. A lot of ways he can go with that opening. Very open. Yeah, I would assume Force of Negation goes here for Elaine. Yeah, I I don't yeah, it's I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Elaine likes traditionally uh, blue white controls and then Grixis controls. So she's still able to buy, be in either of those. But you can't give up uh, the next best free counter spell. Yeah. Uh, like to somebody else further down the line. I, I don't think you can float that when you have somebody else who took time walk and you don't know what they're going to be doing. Yeah. Right. I, I Mason's next pick is thought sees. I almost guarantee it. Uh, <laughs> because that is always Mason's. Yes. Yeah. I just assume it's Mason's next <laughs> okay. pick. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that's solid, right? You know what they say? Oko is Broko. Yeah. They just take the power there. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing is in those round two, three, a lot of times we spend on setup picks. And yep. sometimes I just like, I need the win. I need the answer. Yep. Right. All right. Okay. So we're still. Very colorless here. I'm liking... Yeah, there's a lot going on right now, just in those three picks that I like, because yeah. you're so open, you're so agnostic, you have so much in front of you that it's difficult for people to attempt to figure out what you're doing and try... Like, counter pick is the wrong word right here this early in the draft. Right. But I'm sure people are looking at this and saying, okay, what... Like, how do I interact with this in a meaningful way while executing my plan? Yeah. And I know Mark agrees with me on Force Negation. I think Force Negation is overrated as well. So, <laughs> Thought sees, who would have thunk it? Either I'm really good or Mason's really predictable. Yep. I don't know. And there's the tinker for the vault. <laughs> okay, yep, yep. So there's, there's there's no way we see anybody counter comp Blight Steel or no, Bolas' no. house before. No, I mean, like, even if you do, like, there's so many value vault targets outside of Blight Steel. Yep. A lot of times the Blight Steel decks even just side out Blight Steel. Yep. Like, uh, it, have we seen Currency Converter? Yes, we have. Okay. We have, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we've seen her on camera, but we have seen currency converter. The card's legit. Yeah. Oh, um, I, that, that's why I asked. Yeah. Uh, now this is now he and uh, retrofitter finder is another good. Yeah. Uh, engine. Infinite mana. Yeah. Yeah. Here's in an interesting spot, right? Like he lost the Minskin Boo, which seems like the likely one to be targeted. You here. start with the Gruel Moxie, right? And now you lose one of the best cards. So there's still a lot here. I mentioned like you have Moloch in front of you, which is like the weird... Yeah, yeah it's way down, though. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's still a, a decent gruel look. Yeah. You have... Uh, I th- we have two Moxin. We could look into, like, Bombardiers just to get that package going. There's not a lot in green that we could do right now. Like, we could take a Collector Oof if we just want to shut everybody off, including ourselves, and right. just put a stamp on this. Say, like, here we are. This is what we're doing. Oh, um, man. I mean, this is such... is open. I mean, I think almost I have to say I go third color and grab something like a Comet here. Okay. Uh, or a fourth era Lingus. Um, or I start the Fetch Train and kind of keep myself a little open. I... With the strip mine going to the completely colorless deck, I don't think I'm too worried about losing fast bond. But if in my mind I wanted to I do mean, something, but it's completely co- colorless. It could be anything. Exactly. In it, my- could, it could be. It could be a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a couple of good ones right now. Yeah. In my mind, if I if I was thinking about going gruel and I wanted to stay gruel, I fast bond could be a decent pick right here. You don't want to lose it to somebody else, and then you could figure it out later. You might not necessarily need or want wasteland, but just being able to. If um, Fastbond doesn't go to Kyle or here, 
I wouldn't be surprised to see Brandon take it. Mm-hmm. Brandon loves a fast bond, and he's got kind of a wheelsy show going. That's what I was going to say. Like, um, you could take the wheel option. You do have Ruby, so that leaves actual Wheel of Fortune yeah. open for you. There's some other goofy wheels. Uh, yeah, he's in the tank here. Oh, then Bolt. Bolt's and then Bolt's okay. safe, right? I don't yeah. like Bolt in round three. I think that's. I think it's overreaching. Uh, well, this is what I was saying before. When you are on the dedicated gruel deck, you're not necessarily finding over a lot of pieces, except that, like, that card. That yeah. card, you know for sure you're going to fight the red deck. For. But I think, I don't know, to me, like, with out Minskin Boo and Ragavan, I think he's almost you almost have to surely go the third color. And so I think you stake that third color here. Yeah, whether it be I, um Bowmasters or Sheldred. How awesome would Fast Bond Fourth of your Lingus be here? Because then you can just right. dump it all out and then you Okay, Chrome Mox. Okay. It's, it's fast mana. I mean it keeps it but have we seen Sail into the West? I don't think so. It is the council's jet uh, uh Council's Judgment is a card. Uh, it's the vote mechanic Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Uh, no, we have not. Okay. Because it's a Simic wheel. Okay. So that that is well within uh, Elaine's wheelhouse, but if we wanted to stamp another color on our on our Gruel deck right now, going Teamer, picking up that wheel oh, at the, some point the, the in time. Oh, the diamond there. Okay. Yep. That's, uh... See, I would think the diamond would have been better for the red-green than the, the chrome. chrome box. I won't because lie, because it's the red... new art, I thought that was box diamond, not oh. chrome. Because of the Ren, because of the Ren and Six, right? Yeah. So I think that that would have been. That's the other place where I was trying to think what the other good gruel plays right. was, and I kept coming up with Domri. I'm like, that is not. So the here's right our, to talk our current top missing. No tutors yet of interest. Uh, I, I could see that going here. Oh, Snapcaster to Mason. So I was going to say, I could see that going to yeah. tutor. We could see uh, Kyle pick up a Karn. Karn here soon. would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, but no tutors yet. But this is our current top. So obviously very open here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Force negation is the the biggest follower. Uh, we can also vault here. Also makes a lot of sense for Kyle. Okay. Um, oh, not full casters. We want draft. There we go. Uh, All right. So Mason this, Mason's picked up thought season staff caster. Mage that picture of Kyle kind of looks like a picture of Mark, like a slightly yes. chubbier Mark. Oh wow! And it keeps throwing me off. <laughs> it's like. I was like, why is Chubby or Mark playing? <laughs> You're so right. Oh, my. Oh, man. Yeah, sorry. I, I, so, I know there's the the From the Vault art of Mox Diamond. So, that's, oh, why, right. that's what I thought right. uh, Jake Jacob picked up. So, that's why I was talking about uh, the, the Simic Wheel. Right. To keep us uh, fueled. Yeah, I, I think Diamond would have been better for him, right? Yeah. With, the, with the right man. Diamond also... Uh, they, oh, there's the... Nope. nope. Twice. Don't think twice. It's all right. Being pure color, hey, you could. That's a big jump from pure color yes. to red green, right? Yeah. Like, that's a big jump. Yes, there are another. There are a number of uh, Ren end cards too, right. but I don't think any of them. No, he's going right. with. He's got strip mine. I mean, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, recart. That means you're gonna, if you wanted to, you want to. Oh, he's hedging. He's oh, oh, back, 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 <laughs> forth, back, forth, back, forth. If this is the pick you want, then you could just say, all right, we're here, and take Crucible in right. the next one and leave. Yeah, I mean, you can Crucible later or Ram it up. Depends. Right, sometimes I want Crucible, sometimes I want Ram it up. If I want, if I feel like I'm a couple creature short and I need another person okay. to swing sometimes, yeah, yeah. I want Ram it up. That's, that makes sense. Um, I've stripped mine quite a bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes a little bit of either, right? For sure, like, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, Elaine, she has the Oko. I would expect maybe the Force Negation here. That, that It probably feels... Force is just weird. It's like, it doesn't do always what you want it to do, yep. right? It's very good at protecting, because it's got to be during their turn. So it's good at stopping them, not good at protecting you. Correct. So it really depends on if there's a distinct combo deck, yep. you know. Um, yeah. It changes the way you you have to play the game as the opponent as well. Um, so yeah. to, to disadvantage the Force of Negation. The type of deck, I, the couple times I've had Force of Negation, I don't end up liking it. But the type of decks I play, yeah. it's, I want it to protect me, not... Stop yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Right. You want it to be silence, right. basically, right? Yeah. Or Orm's chant, right. what have you. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, like if I if if I was a lane, I think I might have been bummed that I lost Mox Diamond or Chrome Mox on this runaround because yeah, that allows right. you to cast Force of Negation on two right. off the mana, so you don't have to worry about the the pseudo timing restriction on it. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But yeah, there's also um, what's the card? No more lies. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, that's the new one. White, blue. White, right? blue. It's yeah. not free, but it does exile, so right. if you're worried about that, um, you have that option in front of you. Uh, it's a very powerful card in Pioneer. Spell Pierce. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, Spell Pierce before Force Negation. I like it, right? I think this is cool. Uh, um, the. And there's. Okay. My, my solid one, right? But yep. he, yeah, he's got God Crypt and. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Brandon looks like he's on the wheels deck now. Yeah, yeah. With all I doubt it'll be dedicated wheels, but he'll definitely have. Brandon likes. 
well-rounded, a couple little pieces, machine. Well-rounded right? like a wheel? Kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like machine decks, right? So I don't think he's going he's gonna to go full on dedicated wheels. Okay. But I would totally could see him doing the fast I mean, look, line. you have Shieldred and you have Bowmasters. Right. Neither have been taken. They fit into that theme. There's right. a lot you can do with it if yeah, you want no, to be like... Yeah, no, for sure. So far, he's mono blue, right? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I mean, I, I could easily see him grabbing the fast bond here. Yep. Because um, I know Brandon. Mm -hmm. uh, I could also see Cody grabbing the fast bond just to be a spite deck. Because uh, I know Cody. Um, That's fair. A lot of people could use the fast bond in this instance. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's great for Cody, but, no. like, it's, you know, it's spiteful. And oh, for sure, for sure. There's three decks that it could be relevant to. <laughs> Even yeah. four with uh, Elaine, like, you know, just value with Yoko and everything. Yep. Yeah. I, I do like the spell pierce before the Force Negation. I think it's a better card in general. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I have been removing Force of Negation from my sideboards in Legacy. Uh, as a Delver player, the disadvantage mm -hmm. of that card cannot be understated. When you're trying to tempo somebody out and two-for-winning yourself is often a very bad place to be. If it's not a winning position, you are going to be making right. after putting that card on the stack. Um... Oh, Lelia the Blade Reform. Early Lelia, but good. So this is kind of with the things that I thought that Cody had originally thought about. Um, oh. Lelia's solid. I mean, I, I I don't think it's this is a horrible pick this no. uh, this high. I want to see some of the Doctor Who cards and the other things that pay you for casting stuff from Exile. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I know he's got some spicy a spicy uh, Outlaws card possible in this deck. Not Slick Shot, whatever. No, right? though it was uh, that's good. And yeah. it's, it could be that's not spicy. Uh, uh, laughing Jasper Flynn. So you got me on that one. Any creatures that you control that you didn't start didn't start in your side, uh, didn't start in your deck, or mercenaries. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, or you, well, here I'm just nice. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you target player exiles a card from their library for a mercenary you control. Yep. And you can cast them and spend mana of any card to cast them. Oh, okay, that's cool. So like it'd be like Bitter Blossom, which are, have, makes rogues, yep. which are makes uh, outlaws yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. You have three; they exile three, and you can so you basically can kind of mill their deck through your own creatures. Oh, that's really cool. Them, so similarly, yep, there's the fast bond. Similarly, if somebody wanted to play Bobbles, I think there are enough Bobbles so, here to play the Fibble. I'm guessing the Jasper Flint's out now though, because I don't think he's going to go four color. So no, I think he saw the fourth air lingus open and that's said, a, "I'm going to draft good cards rather than and, cute cards." And, yeah, and make Jacob's draft that right. much more worse. He's just fucking he's just awful. <laughs> Just crushing Jacob's draft. Like, this hurting is a yeah, possibility. And that, with, and Brandon the, bond, with Brandon on the fast bond, that does open up Simic. He, he's lost the Oko, but that's still... This Oko, it still leaves uh, Salem to the west if he's... Yeah. If, he under, if that's the deck he wants to be in, there are several more wheels available to him in blue and Simic. He doesn't yeah. have to worry about Wheel of Fortune. Um, I'm very curious now what Jacob does. Jacob's in a rough spot. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's why like eight has a lot of interesting things because you can do like some of the double ups, but eight's yep. just so like you get that double mox. Oh, Brandon, with, with the fast bond. No, nah, I think there, there's something that was going on with the sheet. It's done okay. it a couple times. All right. Uh, you can get that double mox, but it just is painful sometimes as yep. you wait and see. Well, where am I going to end up with? Yeah. Or my mox is going to be on color and. Um, you know, it is definitely powerful. It is really good, and I think probably a lot of more people don't do it, is going with the plan of, I'm going to do a whole lot of the, not even worry as much about my Moxes, but I want to do Painter Grindstone. Yep. I want to do... The do, two card do, lines. Do a lot of those yeah. two cards that a lot of times first pick takes, but I think H also needs to be considering those more. Yep, yeah. Something that I'm, I'm looking at is we have the opportunity for Kyle and Adam to do something that's become popular and threatening in regular uh, Vintage Cube draft, mm -hmm. which is going into Retrofitter Foundry and Currency Converter, taking both Gaia's Cradle and Academy. <laughs> so you make a ton of mana and a ton of tokens. Nice. And, and like with Candelabra, so you can just turn all oh, your Retrofitter... And he is still just heavy on the on mana. Colors. Yeah. Uh, he's got the one color at this point, right? But... That could be the Eldrazi deck. A very... Yeah, he's got the White Plume. But... Yeah. Season Dungeoneer would be the yeah. next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, but yeah, the White Plume Eldrazi, I think at this point, mm -hmm. but you know, Eldrazi Aggro, Death yeah. Taxes with. Kyle. He, he he's rolling out. He can also still splash into blue for the Academy. Yeah. Because you can get like that Vault real quick one ring and just draw a ton yep, of and cards. Yeah, and go go through it that know? way. Yeah. Kyle has the Saga, which leads me to believe that would be more a Kyle thing than anything else. Lutri's a very lame pick there. Yeah. yeah. Your forty first card seems easy. Yeah, Retrofitter often sees play for the, like, Zerta deck, but it hasn't seen play outside of that. Yeah. But 
Yeah, if you don't have that setup, okay. and it's a lot of pieces the, to the setup. Mark says that the missing card sheet is open, and a lot of players have it open, so we're probably yeah. not going to have any missing. So our tech is being utilized uh, by, by, by a lot, so that's uh, that's, that's good to that's know. Fair. Yeah, fair. The, the people are... And it's, it's, it's more, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's, but like... To the point, man. We should disable it during draft and have it only available oh, to God. us. Like <laughs> password protected for the time. Yeah. Um, Retrofitter Foundry as a package is not really good unless you have all the supporting parts. Right. I like that idea with the academy and cradle and, and just big mana. Exactly. You know? And then you, this way you can just continuously untap Retrofitter and turn all your one one turds into four fours really right. quickly. And that is kind of like the best thing to be doing all with right. Retrofitter. So we, we, we've got Jun now. Out of Kyle? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because we took the red and six. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is like, um, what do they call this in modern? Saga Jund? Okay. Something like that, where you're basically, you use red and six to recur the onslaught cycling lines that cost the colored pip. Okay. Cycle, like, this deck has a kind of foundation in front of it. Oh. Somebody's taking a tutor, but I don't know who. I'm guessing Mason, and it just got moved he over to the wrong the gun slot. On the, this, or yeah. maybe Varner. Nope, Mason took the force of negation. Okay. All right. Which makes sense. So we've got Mason is one color away from taking uh, Jet Time Leovold. Vault Thought C Snapcaster Force Negation. I like that from Mason here. Yeah, time tested. Hey Mark, did you hear what I said about Kyle Vance's picture? That here, here look at it. I said it kind of looks like chubby Mark Caterberg, <laughs> and I keep getting <laughs> confused. <laughs> I see the picture and I keep thinking it's you. <laughs> All right, so there's our first tutor, late demonic tutor, right? Like yep. that's definitely. But it plays uh, into what Adam seems to want oh, to be no, doing, finding something. Right. We just don't know what it is yet, and I think that's fine. You float your targets as long as you can. So who does Varner? Who thumbs in the uh, the Thorkel deck at this point? Like, it's pop. it could be it still could be Brendan with enough wheels yeah, to turn be, through. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you just take you what you, you only need one or two wheels. And you don't need sail. You have Twister. You could take Time Spiral with Fast Bond. Yeah. Dump right. your hand, and then with Breach. Even Windfall, the yep. man's, you know. Exactly. And then with Breach, you just exile enough of your graveyard so that you have a minimal library yep. for your Thank last you, Twister effect, and then Thoracal from there. Um, uh, I'm oh. very curious about what Jacob's going to be we doing. We just lost a. Uh, we lost image here, so we're we're talking blind for a moment. Um, all right, we got this. Over. All right, so Jacob still, as I said, Jacob being in the tank, understand fully. Um, I'm going to join you here and just be pulled on cards. All right. What do you need? Oh. That was it. There's two mics. Okay. All right, so there goes the Besaju. Okay, solid. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, it's still... No, it's good. I mean, it's, it's I, I think it's over-drafted a little high. Okay. It, you know, sometimes, but I think it's 8 to 9 range, I think. We have a lot of fast mana already in front of us in this draft. I think it's... It, it is a little high, but I think it's a yeah. good option overall. But the, it's just still so agnostic that Jake. I just don't know what Jacob's doing. Right? Yeah. There's just. I don't even know what he does either, and that's you know that's okay. What like what are you exactly? What are we trying to do here? Like I don't know. So we get the wheel. We're still in gruel. Do we want? We've lost bowmasters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> as Jund. Do we have... I mean, at this point, I'm Jacob. I'm just going to think about just, like, you, taking, like, Fury here and then going... Ta-da! Da -da. Uh, you know, just showing up things with, like, birds and stuff here and then just going, like, Goblin Bombardiers, uh, all the Goblin oh, Totem there's makers, Thorcles. Right. Okay. Adam. You gotta smash that Thoracle in with. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering with the tutor that would, right? Um, I thought maybe he would drive a Vampiric and then do it, right? But I mean, if you want to call it the slow Thoracle, you got Tinker Vault, right? So you just take infinite turns and cast Thoracle at yeah. some point in time, right? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's then, legit. Yep, then all you need to defend it is negation, Pact of Negation. Yeah. And or silence I mean, or something like that. So Jacob's got the double mocks, so I think, you know, if, if I'm him, I'm just going to uh, grab all my little three three mana red goblin makers, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So and Rabble Master, Rabble Master War, Legion, Legion War Boss, Boss, Bombardiers, yep. and all those little hasty, obnoxious guys. Yep. And, you know, just try to go that route. I mean, I think you just got to go the aggro route at this point. Um, <coughs> You think he could scale clamp as Jacob? There's the Teferi. Put, so we got, we're now in the three colors there. So. Okay. 
So we're not moving into Leovold, we are just sticking... Yeah, so we got Esper there. And also the thing with Mason is we gotta be aware is that he could very easily not be Esper. He could... He's drafted a Thought Seize round two or three many times, yep. and then just not Pivoted, it. Yeah. And, uh, or sideboarded it in for some matchups and things like that. So it is always a possibility he just doesn't. Yep. So do you think we will actually see like a small mono package out of Jacob for elves and various other like ticky tacky stuff just to to get where we're going? Yeah, I don't know. Do think? I don't know. I, Jay, I I don't know Jacob well enough as a drafter to to go with it. I I know in Chicago he had a Rakdos deck that mm -hmm. didn't do so well. Um, his white deck did okay. I know he felt it underperformed, but he I think he finished like three and four mm -hmm. uh, the first time he came down with a white deck, uh, but. I, I, he definitely has done stuff frequently that I am not able to predict. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So Foothills takes off our uh, our, fet, our 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 choo choo train. train. Yep. I'm you know. We'll see how disciplined people are because you could you could avoid the the fetches and just go into duels before people start stealing them from you. Yeah. So like right now Elaine is still mono blue. No, she has uh, Elaine has the Oko. That's right. Right. So we're still blue green. We could see her take the trop. This way Brendan doesn't get the the opportunity to nab it. Yeah, I don't know. Elaine does love, love a good man, mana base. That's one of Elaine's good strengths uh, as a drafter. Yep. Uh, was frequently a very, very solid mana base. So I would not be surprised to see her yep. go ahead and jump on the train yep. here. Is six early for fetches? I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure we've seen them higher. Like, just the run start on them to get it out of the way. This is about the right spot where the train starts. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I've seen some groups seem... Uh, Feel like you know other groups have a little bit sometimes where the duels go a little more first yep. than the fetches. I think the fetches are just better because you have more basics. That, um, that's why if I was somebody like Elaine right here, I would move into the duels instead of the fetches because I have if I take Trop here, I have right. all the blue duels and sorry all the blue fetches and all the green fetches to go get well minus foothills now right. to go get my Trop. Right. Um, I know Elaine is a big proponent of Prismatic Vista as the best fetch. Uh, that gets the basic? Yeah. Yep. Because okay. you often have so many basics that, you know, you just... Yeah. And dodge uh, wasteland. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. So, so she's renowned for a good mana base. Oh, so I hope Dan surprising. just interjects here with Caracas. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> oh, yeah. So he's got... I mean, he's got the mana. If, if Dan got is... the white plume. Yeah. If Dan is planning to stay... Mono white. You can take Prismatic Vista here, and you're right. Like okay. I said, very powerful fetch. Yeah. Or you know, take Caracas because you know Minskin Boo is, has already been taken. Yeah. It's, and Caracas is just always good. I mean, it's hard. Exactly. It it it's an untapped white source with upside. All right. Definitely, I, I, you can feel the feel their chomping in there, right? Some of these picks are rolling in a little slower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are hard thinking in the tank, and some of it, uh, you know, rightfully so, as they're, uh, you know, you see cards that you want drafted up after your start. Some right. of them, just Elaine's natural so, uh, state of slowness. So while while we're while we're waiting for these picks, one of the other things I was looking for when I was going back over the previous Discord drafts was Tishana's Tidebinder to see where that card fell in the draft. And it seems like it falls all over the place and people... I don't think it has a spot yet, but it's been consistently drafted. That is exactly yeah. what it is. It seems like some people know they want Tishana's Tidebinder yeah. because they want it in their deck just to be sure, other people will just feel like floating it and taking it as a threat later yeah. on. So, I mean, it's been drafted in just the random value, yep. but it's also seen heavy in kind of the flashy tempo lists. Okay. Like, the card's just legit. Yeah. I, I mean, so 17, uh, I think that feels a little late. Yep. Right? So three out of six, so it's not been every time, uh, but around 17 on average. Yep. Um, I expect it to move up to be drafted at least most uh, most every time. All right, Pedal, he's just keeping himself open. Um, oh, Brandon had snapped that that's, off. That's a that's a Brandon. Yep. Hex, but uh, but fast bond hex drinker is pretty silly, right? It's like, a known combination. Right, you, it's a lot of mana to. Uh, yeah. Forest fast bond second forest hex drinker. Brandon's also combo. a big channel fan, so I wouldn't be surprised to see channel in there somewhere. Channel hex drinker and. Oh, there's uh, comment. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, once you get the fourth, that comment, oh, four, yeah, so that, yeah. oh, man. man. One and eight are Cody, eating each other's Cody's lunch. singing the songs of my people, right? Yeah. He's got the Lotus. He doesn't have, it, he doesn't have the fast that I like from that, because Dan's got it all outside the Lotus. Yep. But, you know, he can still, like, 
Lotus Comet. Yep. Lotus means Kinbu is yep. uh, ridiculous. You know? Yes. I'm not the biggest fan of Comet because of the logistical issues around that card, ah. but at the end of the day, I think it is good. It's much easier in face to face than it is online. I mean, it's much <laughs> easier online than Space Bellerin. Right. I don't even think that card is online. It, it, it's a pain in the butt on uh, on Cockatrice, but uh, that's face to face is you know. All right, there's the Karn, but not yeah. where I not where I expected it. Yeah. I mean, the other the other person could have been Kyle. Kyle. Um, but it makes perfect sense in this deck here. Yes. And, yeah. I didn't think we would be this artif artifacty uh, in Dan's spot, but this makes sense. Yeah. Um, but that means the package of, like, the pure sideboard package of Bridge and some of these other options, I wouldn't expect Dan to pick up because uh, turning the combat step off for your own creatures seems a little a little weak. But Yeah, but it depends on what you're, I mean, uh, you know, Bridge is just value. You don't always have to get it, but sometimes you just need it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, like, at the end of the day, uh, Face is the place, and Walking Ballista does that. Yeah. So you can just wall up. And power up your ballista if you need to. So there's always an option. That is Hydro Blast. That is Hydro Blast. Nice. I don't think I've ever seen a Blue Blast go before the Red Blast, but uh, I like it. Uh, Elaine staking it out there, right? So um, this is the, now. Now it's not uncommon for for Pyro or Reb to go this early, right? Because there's only so much blue. Yeah. But yeah. But I've never seen a Blue Blast. <laughs> this is. I am very curious to know where. Elaine is going with the rest of this. If Elaine, Elaine. goes pain or next, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, she loves, loves a control show, right? And I don't disagree, but you have two dedicated red decks right now, and they're on the they're on the ends. Yeah, I mean that blast is good. No, there's because we've also got the red and six, right? Oh, so okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the W. We've got. I sorry. The, for me, the word dedicated means right. we know the wings are going to be playing right. that. Ren and Six is still up in the air. But yes, you could make the educated guess that the person directly after you is also going to be red, yeah. and you want to take care of that. So have we seen? Is it questing druid, questing dryad? Questing druids, yeah. It's been. It's not dominated. Uh, it's seen play um, here, here and there online. I don't think it's seen play in a face to face yet. But uh, okay, uh, it is definitely a potential. Oh, four of seven, not bad. Yeah, definitely a potential in Cody's list for sure. Um, okay. it could be really good even over in um, uh, Jake's list. Yep. So, or in uh, Kyle's, like, I think that's a, yeah, definitely early for it, but yeah. I, I think that's a solid card for this draft for three people. Yeah. Uh, that um, little bit, just that little bit of car, extra card advantage, that little bit extra reach. Yep. Is, is... Uh, can we bring up the synthesizer from uh, uh, Laws of Thunder Junction? Yeah. Uh, Simulacrum synthesizer. Yeah. Cody was talking about this in the way up. Obviously, he's not going to end up in it. Yeah. But uh, this was discussed in the car on the way here. Yeah, so. this, this is a card I really enjoy for two reasons. The first is that it is an outstanding card. It basically just makes a lot of constructs. Yeah. Uh, so it does a lot of great stuff. People are playing it in Modern and Legacy, so it has a little bit of a pedigree in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has the opportunity to be better here than it does in constructed formats where everybody can run Dress Down. Right. Yeah, this card's good. Thoughts on this, though, in... Yeah, no, I think this card's very legit. I mean, the the issue is the balance of enough to, to actually trigger it, right? Yep. And you're probably going to be, you know, weak to the meltdowns, weak to the yep. rando hate. But the artifact deck always is. So yes. what are you going to do, right? It just gives you an opportunity to close out faster. You know, Ooh, make a lot of top. Yes. That's yeah, a little, line with the top down. little early there. So, um, well, that's, we still have the opportunity for Kyle to move into like Mystic Forge or anything else that wants to. Yeah, he's pretty the open. Top. I mean, you know, he's got the red green, but. but. Yeah, it's, it's not bad with the Ren and Six, but the opportunity to just, like I said, play off the, the top, no pun intended, with yeah. the top. Always decent. Um, okay, Delta showing probably still going to stay in the Esper range here. Yep. Um, will not be surprised if he... Working hard on that one. Um, oh, there's the Academy. Okay, yeah, I, I, I thought that was going to go back to, to Dan there. Okay. But... Uh, which is the opportunity, like with the Tinker, to do the whole right. retro, retro fitter foundry. Wouldn't be surprised to see Mason grab Inquisition here, but also no one else. He seems to be uncontested in black at this point. So, yeah. um, you know, that's really interesting in spot to be in is uncontested in a color, and no mm -hmm. one else has touched black. Now that doesn't mean no one else will. Yeah. But um, so far, not a single not black card has been drafted outside of Mason. Yeah, and we don't really see the triumphs. No, I'm sorry, I lied. Demonic Tutor. I, the, I, Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
a black card. Right. But it, that that one's Inquisition as well. Yeah. So yeah. Duress uh, Inquisition, very good. Right, Duress Inquisition, because you want to be ripping away. The, as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. the counter spell, yep. or whatever's going to stop you. Yeah. So. Um, and we don't really see the triumphs in VRD, so it's not like... You do, see... just much later. Yes, but yeah. we wouldn't... So, like, there's the opportunity for Mason to extend it into four colors, probably more so if the Wasteland and Strip Mine don't end up in the same deck. Right, if anyone's going to, it's Mason or Cody, right? Just because I know their personalities. Yep. Uh, or Brandon. Actually, Brandon's done it several times as well. So, there's three players whose personality does not mind being in four color. Yeah. So. How have the Surveil lands been? Um, we, We've only seen them online uh, once, I think. But I think that was in, like a ban league where we already had like the first two rounds of banned yep. after each draft. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we've seen them in a true VRD yet. Oh, two, two of them? Okay. So we've seen them a bit. I, I don't know. I think they're fine. I I think it depends on your deck and your threshold for how many tap lands you can run. run yep. right? If you feel you can use one or two, then I think they're very good. Mm -hmm. um, so the monolith there. So he is not Zertable. So that's just a value monolith. No, but he is... Uh, what's that card from is it from Murder? Oh, the, the new one. Yeah, the Gadgeteer. And so the, you can also go infinite with Zerta 2.0 mm -hmm. Forensic Gadgeteer. That's it, yep. Um, you can also, and you can weave into that the uh, tra Training Grounds. Right? Yeah. That's the blue enchantment. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, if you need to go back front, I can remember to pull up cards. I just forgot, I forgot it existed. Okay. Uh, we have two people pulling. So okay, cool. I, Perfect. Happy to hang out here. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's always nice to have a Mr. Wizard. Oh, absolutely. No, I love having a Mr. Wizard. I just you know Mark's got a lot to do, and I just want to make sure that I just forgot pulling up cards was a, you know. Something we should be doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I still wouldn't be surprised to see Inquisition here, knowing Mason. Um, you, f you float it long enough, you know what you're going to be doing, I think, if you're Mason. Yeah. I also wouldn't be surprised with just another fetch if he's going three colors or another land here. Yeah. Um, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of... Uh, we haven't seen a duel yet. No. So... Could be that Mason could take, the, you know, his tundra or his. I'm gonna go grab safe. a bagel. Can you top me off on coffee? Yeah, thank you. Anything in it? Uh, no, black piece. Yeah, I'm. I'll hop over with you for a. All right. Coming in hot, Mark Caterberg, host extraordinaire. We have Petrizzo here saying hi to you, by the way. Oh. I don't know who Petrizzo is. But, I don't know who that is. Uh, presumably. Oh, a, I know who that is. A great friend. Yes. Um, a magic player from Atlanta. Mm, nice. Yeah. Uh, mainly amulet player. So um, he's got that big combo brain. Nice. Probably drafting Scape Shift in uh, Outlaw Junction if you can get oh. it off the Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So looking at a higher level here, we have Adam kind of on this Tinker deck that seems like it's coming together incredibly well. Did you hear, uh, did you hear me talking about what I'd seen, what I've seen like LSV and other people do in Vintage Draft? So you you build around Retrofitter Foundry with Gaia's Cradle and Academy so you yes. make it worthwhile. Because, like somebody mentioned in chat appropriately, Retrofitter Foundry on itself is just kind of, like, wimpy. Yes. Uh, even with Currency Converter to help kind of, like, stave off aggro, mm -hmm. um, you really need the mana to make that work. So it's kind of brought Candelabra back <laughs> into the fold. <laughs> Vance just taking the Vampire and pressure yeah. on Mason to make his pick. I'm imp uh, man, the re I'm impressed that some people aren't taking duels with the opportunity to, but I guess for Mason it makes a little more sense if you want to be three colors. Yeah, Vampiric is super up. late though. I'm gonna I'm gonna go pull it up in a second, but <laughs> that is, Vampiric Tutor getting taken in eighth round. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I thought that was did. Uh, oh, Kyle grabbed it. Oh yeah, he, he was yep. gonna be John. I forgot that. Yep. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, so I, I was surprised that the Vampiric didn't go to Adam. Okay. I thought Mason was just copying and pasting Flooded Strand. The rest they done the sheet. <laughs> Okay, so we have a Lampiric Tutor, which does allow us to solve problems pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, there ain't nothing wrong with the value of Vampiric. In a turn, you grab it, you can go. Exactly. Or if you build around the Saga, Jun Shell, like I was mentioning, right. you, could have the, you could have some Cyclers, like Street Wraith or whatever, for, that costs literal nothing. Life is a resource. Play like it. Master Plum frequently argues that Street Wraith is the most underdrafted card. Um... I don't think I've ever seen it drafted. He's drafted it. He drafted it in Thassa's Oracle's decks. Okay, that makes times. sense. Because, sure. well, you're like, yeah. you're basically his argument is you're, it's kind of like um, uh, the peak of the hand free spell. Yep. You're just playing probe. A, you're playing probe. You're playing a 38 card deck. Yep. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. If if anybody would have drafted it when I've been here, I thought it would have been Jeff and his brand of old man magic. Right. Like people like the tournament because Jeff has always played the Oracle. I think. How long are you in town for? Uh, we leave tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at AM. I was gonna say if you if you weren't you should get make it out to uh, my side of the river and go see Jeff's store. 
Yeah, I have wanted to the, uh, the last couple of times. Uh, the last time I was here. Yeah, well, it just opened. It. That's, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he's been working on that for a while. Then, right? Yeah, they've been yeah. working on it. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we have Fable. this uh, into Fable. All right, so that's second color, so we're in white red now. Without fourth, which is fine because Fable is a very, very powerful right. card. Right. Wonderful. Right now we're copying one initiative creature, but that's gonna. Yeah. Come. Right now we're settled into three with. Uh, uh, Narset for Elaine is that's very. Not necessarily Narset. That's a very, very Elaine card. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was. She was for a while when after those hit, like her and I were in the Narset. Uh, who's going to get it Narset. battling, right? Uh, but Narset, yep. it's definitely one of the cards she identifies with the most. Brandon taking LED out from underneath. Wait, does Whoever. he have? He has an authorical right now. He took no. it out from somebody. Yeah. All right, value as per Sentinel. Yep. Weak to the Fury, but you know, outside that. Oh, good. Stoneforge package. Okay. okay. Solid. Solid. Yeah, the, the Planeswalker pick's still look pretty decent. They could be your top end, yeah. basically, so you don't have to stretch your mana base as hard or as far. Yeah, well, in any of these, like, where you're just, um, you know, like, Lotus, Stoneforge, Esper Sentinel, seems... Uh... Yeah. Do the players see the other players' draft pools? Uh, yes. Yeah, everybody's... They all have the sheet open in front of them. They're all sitting around the same table, um, drafting, entering their picks into the sheet. So they're all there. Um, when someone picks, they get a yell about it. They're talking crap to each other. Um, hopefully, you know, unless they Listening should be. To I think Taylor Swift right now. Yeah, uh, most Carly. likely Carly. Miley. Oh, 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 Carly. Yeah. yeah. Carly. Okay. Carly. Carly uh, Brandon is the uh, DJ that keeps the music going in there to keep the, our voices drowned out some, yeah. and uh, it's generally Carly Ray. There's Caves of Chaos Adventure. So yeah. Which uh, Cody probably would have liked because he he has face down from Eric Levine previously. Lotus turn one Caves of Chaos. Yeah, uh, yeah. Though Cody did have an answer at that time yeah. where he subtly did it back to the hand and mm -hmm. basically put it down the Lotus. <laughs> yeah, I've I've definitely lost to that card a number of times in multiple formats. Yeah. It's a very powerful card, um, yeah. and I, I I think this is one of those times where you see it as a discipline pick as opposed to just a, this is my plan pick, because you could have taken... We have White Plume, right? That's the... Yeah, the he, he still he needs, had the season, season Dungeoneer. Exactly, a Season Dungeoneer in front of us, which we also need to pick up, but there's nobody looking to contest White from you in that type of way. Right. But there are people who could take advantage of Chaos Adventurer. Cody could grab a Season Dungeoneer just to, like, once initiative He's, starts going, yeah. a lot of times you'll see those value picks where people try to grab the, just one to of the take initiatives it back to take it back. Yeah, but, outside of um, combat. Yep. That's why I actually love Frex. My, since initiative has hit so big, Frex and Metamorph moved up in my deck so much. Oh, yeah, even you just copy here. Yeah. Like, I've had so many games where I was just like, White Plume, copy my own White Plume mm -hmm. with Frex and Metamorph, and just roll through it yeah, real that, quick. That's why I really like the Fable on the list. I've, yeah. No, so the yeah, Fable's good. Yeah, right. it's ridiculous in the list. Yeah. Uh, middle misstep there. That's a late miss. Is that a late misstep, Mr. Wizard? Feels like it. But I think at the same time, we, yeah, a little bit. we so. didn't have a ton of one mana spells taken in front of us. There's a lot of two and threes. Right. So that that missed up you know, coming after a show of... Lane going old school with the early true name. It used to be in this, probably around this spot, uh, but it definitely has fallen on, on rough, rougher times. But hmm. uh, that Sylvan smarts Brandon probably a little bit. Brandon's a big Sylvan fan. Um, but he's in blue, so he can, yeah. he, he's got enough draw to, to deal to with it. To take care of it. Uh, Do we suit up? Track? Also, Cody probably could have wanted that Sylvan. Yeah. Uh, so that's a good Sylvan there. I like that a lot um, in that position. Do we suit up tree name in this list, do you think? Like, give it a pair of pants or something? I mean, I don't... Not Elaine, I don't think she okay. does. I mean, maybe someone else, but... I, right here? Okay. Yeah. There is a... Not... Oh, not encumbered, but there's... I think the card is called Power Fist from the Fallout Commander decks. It's a green... Power Fist is a great metal band. Uh, equip creature has trample, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one plus one. Yeah, so That'd three, pretty, then six, then twelve, and then right. you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so that'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, yeah that that doesn't seem a lane style. <laughs> it, it does cost four to start doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. Two and two and two, a little much. There's another one. It's something in like Mason's encumbrance. Picture, Mason's picture looks so smug. He's got that little smirk. He's just like. He knows what, what he's here to do. Clean up. It, it looks half like, you know, kind of like a porn headshot, honestly. Like, he's just like, hey. <laughs> oh, what is that? Get probe? Just yeah, get probe. Just the wrong spot. Okay. There we go. All right. 
And that's about on cue probe, right? We're usually in round nine. Round nine. That is a perfectly on cue probe for the train. 32 out of 32. Perfectly uh, cromulent probe. Oh, probe's a crime. That's right. I hadn't thought about it. Probing somebody against their will is a crime. We should not do that. Is, that. Yeah. Consent is important, and no one ever consents to a git probe. Is there anything worthwhile from OTJ that triggers on crimes to be playing in? There's a couple solid cards, probably. Um, I don't think they're 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 not high picks, yeah. but uh, you know, there's definitely some things that if I had enough things going on, yeah. I might do okay. right, like uh, just a little incremental damage, yeah. like okay. engine pieces. I don't think there's anything that's absolutely bonkers. Got it. Um, I've only I only played in a sealed for OTJ. I enjoyed the heck that, out of it. I was um, gonna say out of all the OTJ I've played, Crimes is not a theme that I. Oh no, I play. I had I was playing uh, Jun Crimes or I, Red yeah. Black Crimes. It was so. I, I have not had the opportunity to play uh, yeah. Red Black. I, so we have Opal into Catacombs into a twist. Oh endurance. man, that's a sexy twist. Adam's there. gonna twist. Yeah, twist, twist again like we did last summer. Tolarian Academy into twist. Let's just let's do it. Yeah. I mean, endurance is solid. I like that endurance. Like no one's reanimating, but it's just a good body. There's yep. nothing wrong with it. Um, no, three, four, it's flash probably three. a little bit early. But yeah. Okay. Secret we'll reach. A bit early, but secret reach. Do you think, as Adam, we look at dark red? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I yeah. I think I I want dark red as Adam there. Yeah. I don't think anybody's contesting you. Right. I, don't know. I just don't know. Like we have Academy in front of us. I think we have Opal, so we know we're going to lean heavily into artifacts. I'm going to call Grief or Inquisition here out of Mason, though it could be another blue card, and I'm just wrong. But um, Grief or Inquisition feels right here okay. to me. So do you like Grief as a reanimation target as well? I just like Grief. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I love it as a reanimation target. I love it as a scam target. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I just love that card. Yep. You know, it's so good. It is a very good elemental. Um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think they banned the wrong one in Modern, and they, uh, should have, Fury was fine, and they should have killed Grief. They wanted, they wanted a, a enable creature decks, but it turns yeah. out that banning Fury didn't do that. Well, uh, yeah, there's enough other things that does what Fury does, and, you know, you weren't really going to have that many, I mean, there were, Grief's just good. Yep, grief was and always has been the problem. Yeah, the yes. Taylor Moon shirt was beautiful, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, every format where grief is played, I believe grief is the problem in the format. All right, Mason, a little on the tank here for a moment. Can no. you talk about the missing cards? Yeah, we'll do that. So we got uh, Vista at the top, as I said, uh, oft sometimes argued to be the best fetch. Uh, swords, uh, which, you know, could easily Cody there. Also yeah. could go Mason here. Uh Inquisition, which is, I said, one of the possibilities of targets. Pond, uh, I expect Ponder and or Preordain to go to a lane this Wait. round. We're, we're looking at the top of the list. Brainstorm is not here. Interesting. Brainstorm's lower. It's here, right? It, it's, oh, well, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, you have less right. fetches, so it's yeah. just like, it's not as good as Ponder or Preordain. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. You have a number of ways to shuffle your library. You could bring in Troll of Kaza Dune. You could, yeah. like, in Entomb is a goofy way to do it. There's um, ways to do it, yeah. but, like, in the decks that, that has that. But just in general, Ponder or Preordain is just... Yeah. Cool. More efficient. Right. I'm going to ask a dumb question. Where is Lorien revealed on this? Um, on the up and up, right? Okay. Like uh, nine out of fourteen. I think the ones that it, I think the five are early. Yep. Uh, before there was a, a lull where people didn't really get into the Lord of the Rings cards yet and hadn't figured them out. Yep. Um, so I think a lot of those five you can actually see it right here. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty early. It looks like there's been one where it was just forgotten. Yep, but uh, no, the cards drafted you know pretty well, um, right, right around twenty two. But uh, wouldn't be surprised yep. for it to be higher in any given draft. Yep, the cards just straight value. Yep. Another question from the chat is Val in this draft higher prio with how many blue and black cards we've seen thus far. I wouldn't be surprised to see Vale go in the next couple rounds anyway. Vale's pretty consistently. Um, I mean, I remember the one of the first drafts I snagged, it got drafted in, I got it at like 45 and something. And, uh, you've never got it at like a 45 since then. So, yeah. um, like, we can see it, right? If we scroll down on the missing right here, we can see Veils normally. It's in the third row of... Uh, of picks. Picks right now. So, average, picked 31 out of 32 cards. Yep. So, I would not be surprised to see Veil go within the next two rounds easily. Okay. So, average pick is around 16, it said. Yep. Somewhere in the, around there. Mason's still in the tank there? No, Mason picked up I-OK. Okay. okay. I have... Uh, uh. <laughs> like you said. I have... Uh, 
It's All right. Like, it's so like you know Mason. Or it's like you drafted or like enough I, with or against or Mason. Or I've commentated enough of these there's, drafts. There's that, yeah. I'm a much better uh, observer of these drafts than I am a player, let me tell you. And no. I'm an okay player. Agreed, <laughs> agreed. <clears throat> there's, yeah, the there's the swords. Okay, okay so yeah. Elaine finally stamping a second color. Yeah, got the ban- third card ban. She has the Oko. Oh, there's the Oko. Yeah. Despite the fact that Elaine only has the one fetch, Mason took the flooded strand. You can't take a card you already have, my guy. There's a ref missing there. Oh, the dungeon. Okay. Season dungeon. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. We have to fix the sheet. Momentary sheet fix. Yep. So our sheet is uh, fancy uh, for those that haven't done one of these, and it, it lets us know when there's mistakes. Mm-hmm. It lets us uh, does all these things, but that also means that sometimes when you cut and paste, yep. you cut and paste the underlining code yeah, with yeah, it, with and it. then you get a blank box. Oh yeah, uh, I have a couple sheets that do that too. Yeah. So that's why sometimes we get those little blank white boxes for those that are watching. And uh, so this one just uh, needs to be moved up. Yeah, not we, a problem. It should. It is moved up, but it, the sometimes this sheet, our, our visual sheet, needs updated or something. So while we're waiting for, uh, is it Cody's pick? I noticed Dak Fade seemed Excellent. to be kind of trailing <sighs> downward. Yeah, it has. I, I it I, the card's still good mm-hmm. in the right draft for sure. I could easily see. Who would want it in this draft? Um, I don't know if anyone wants it in this draft. I don't think anyone's in the blue yet, color. No. Like, uh, I, this is just a general question because yes, that card is generally pretty good. Yeah. Although it does, it is competing with um, Skydiver. Yeah, uh, I, I like it better than Skydiver okay. in general, unless I'm just in a straight like I'm trying to turn dude sideways deck. Uh, the extra cost on Skydiver is all more awkward than you think a lot of yeah. times. Like, you know, I want to play it turn two and do it because it can't steal a zero. Correct. So, like, if Skydiver can, well, steal, can steal a zero. It can. You just have to pay the one. Right. Yeah. It, it works well with Soul Ring. If Skydiver could X zero, yes. yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Know, it would be amazing. But yeah. uh, without it, like, I, I, I've always felt it underperforms. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Dungeoneer, like, White Plume's better because it comes down on three. Dungeoneer is actually better in every other way. Because right? the, the trigger, right? Just because it's so good. Like, yes. the unblo- the protection from creatures clause, and then the explore clause, which I always forget the explore clause, right? Yes. Like, like Dungeoneer is actually just better than White Bloom, but White Bloom coming down in three is ridiculous. Yes. Right? Like, the, there's a reason why in Vintage this is still a deck compared to Legacy, and it's because you can put White Bloom under a Chrome Mox and Lotus out a <laughs> season dungeon here. Nice. <laughs> yeah. like, the, like you said, that, that card is insane. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I love dungeon here. Uh, I still, man, I don't. I love Baldur's Gate as a set. I was, I was so high on it, and it got so much bad mouth. And I love that this is the year that everyone's starting to come around all the Baldur's Gate cards in Commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And starting to realize that. I know why people are down on it because yeah. of the weirdness of it called Commander Legends and after the other previous Commander Legends had you know different stuff, but yep. that set was amazing and it was like I mean, one of the most fun sets to draft. Even, I I still want him to do another Baldur's Gate set, even another the, Commander set. The is it, yeah, in the in the main set, even when you extend out and you look at the cycle of dragons, people are finally coming around on the fact that all the dragons are actually really good. Yeah. Obviously, the red one is hands down the best, right. but even the, the black one that reanimates when you roll a die is still right. really good. So we got a plat. Which makes sense. You just you want to play four colors, you got to start picking up your lands. Yeah. So you're just going to plat Taiga here and just hate them both out? I would. Uh, So we are... Wait, are we, Na- Yo, wait, are we only Naya? No, cool. yeah, he's Naya. I thought there was a fourth. No, no, he's straight now. Okay. Yeah, I then, yeah, yeah. I just plot Taiga here. Yep. Hate it out. Taiga. Taiga. You're the girl that I never had, and I want to get to know you better. You're the mountain that I never had. You know, uh, I think I only took one geography class in high school, but I know a lot about uh, land formations because of Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can tell people what a plateau and a yeah. Taiga is. And, like, if the, oh, the, more, Indian. Okay. the more RPGs you play, the more you learn, like, uh, synonyms for shoulder pads and, and, <laughs> uh, and wrist guards. Right? There, there was an old... Uh, Spalder uh, epaulets. <laughs> dork tower where, like, this guy, like, one of the dorks is at a fancy party, and he's talking about, like, medieval... Someone says something about a medieval weapon, and he corrects them and goes through this whole thing. And like, they're like, where did you learn all this erudite information? Are you a historian? Are you a scholar? And he's like, no, I play Dungeons and Dragons. And then they run him out of the building. <laughs> it's just like, I can describe medieval weaponry so much. Yeah. <laughs> Like between was it a flail and the other like a, the morning star? Yeah, yeah, hundred you know? no, <laughs> percent. 
I can talk about like 50 different versions of pole arms, like a glaive yeah. and a glaive gizarm. And okay. So Brandon right, takes the trap. That, yeah. If I was Elaine, that's what I would be concerned of, that Brandon was going to eat my, yeah. my trap. I think the ending could have floated there and he could have gone with the Taiga just to hate more. But it yeah. is solid. I mean, it's just good. You're not really alluded to anybody besides Mason, so I don't know exactly why you want it at this, like, this early. When I mean, Elaine could now, but that Elaine took the... The swords? The swords, yeah. right? I mean, that, that's... Path is a liability in this format. You have to play a yeah, number I... of basics that makes it a ramp spell. And it's not like there aren't other duels that he can do mm -hmm. around the Taiga, so it's... I mean, I, would you take... Like, okay, Prismatic Ending gets permanence. That's cool, groovy, right? But would, yeah. would you have taken the March? I, like, it depends. Uh, I I don't know. I'm a little bit... Of, I'm, I'm often torn on that one, right? I think March is, what, just creatures and artifacts, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why That's why I specified, like, there are a couple permanents you want to get rid of. Playing but sorcery is sorcery, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, being able to get, like, if Brandon goes turn one far as fast bond, like, dump a bunch yeah. of lands, like, you're already behind. Prismatic ending on fast bond is kind of weak at that point, but right. if he's just, like, one other land, you're like, a cool fast bond, like, eh, that's a that's enough enough play. Yeah. Like, nobody's really gonna. That is, uh, March oh, gets enchantments. March gets enchantments, too, okay. It, it doesn't hit walkers, is the big difference. Yeah. yeah. Which is at Thank this... you, Patrizzo. Yeah, it's just at this point, what I would be worried about, which is the walkers that I would be facing down. So, I mean, Walker's what? We've got... We really only have... We have Oko and Narset in the middle, and we've Nisa. got Karn. Not uh, Nisa, I keep saying this. Narset. Narset. Yeah, Narset, yeah. Noko, and then Karn, and Teferi. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we've got a normal fair. Yeah, we have enough. Ooh, City Traders. Okay, yeah, Dan, there's no way Dan isn't on just the initiative. <laughs> yeah, like, he's just saying... Uh, and, and he's going to get some Eldrazi in there, right? Like, that's yeah. just... Yeah. Your, your Reality Smashers and your... We're uh, too early for Null Drifter. <laughs> no, Null Drifter looks fun. <laughs> I'm going to reanimate that, though you don't get to draw the cards off the reanimate. No, I mean... But, yeah, Thought Not Seer is the, the, the big one. Yep. Um, the LED from Brandon still... I mean, I know he likes it. Uh, I guess, you know, if you're going to... He took that out from underneath the, the, the Thoracle player. Yeah, I mean, there's like, plays. He, he, he does often value play it, but again, Brandon's engines are often sometimes beyond my comprehension. Yeah. And then uh, they, they come together. Uh, obviously, oh, yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, why didn't I realize this? He is on wheels. He took that so he could float Echo of Eons. Okay. Yeah, that's good. what you, you don't breach. You Echo of Eons with his card. Yeah. Well, they're both. <laughs> he doesn't have Thoracle, yeah. so he can't win with a breach. Right, Unless he right. wants to, t and Bow, Ma Bow Masters is gone, so he can't tings you out. He's right. going to take Shildred to do that. But you can possibly, depending on how the deck sort out, you can just possibly wheel everyone out. Yeah, you, know? you could lab ban. That's right. also still on the table. Yeah, yeah. the hard way, because <laughs> you'll draw the card off Echo. But yeah, this is, I don't know, I I haven't seen this in, this one in a minute, so it could very well be. What time is it? Eleven o'clock. Yeah, it's Budweiser o'clock. I will. So maybe let's take a look oh, at the other cards that are missing. Baby. Yeah. Missing cards? Yeah. Yeah, let's go back. I'll pretend to be Steven here. Big shoes. Oh man, the the we St. Louis, by comparison to the online drafts, it's mm -hmm. really interesting to see where the Ponders preordains brainstorms go. Yeah. Because online these would all have been gone. It's kind of like round seven or eight is where those get taken en masse and usually like in a line. I am very surprised that they've lasted this long with the handful of blue drafters that we have because it just seems like everybody can afford the one blue pip, smooth your draw, get it done with, right? We don't seem to have as many combo blue decks other nope. than Adam with this Tinker. Um, so we don't have like the Storm or the Doomsday happening. Yep. And I think that might be part of the reason why. It's okay. like a lot of these, their value cards, if you ponder from a six into a seven, it's like not particularly as important. Yep. But yeah, you're right. Smoothing is still fantastic. Yep. I, I would expect the Urza to go in time and then um, yeah. into the, the the Tinker deck that we have right now, because why not? It's just a value play. Okay, so we did just lose Ponder. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's Elaine with the Ponder, which makes sense. Elaine wants to play the, the, the control deck, and Ponder is the control card. Uh, Preordains more of the combo card. Yeah, that um, makes complete sense. Unless you want to power up Darcy, at which point you need a critical mass of sorceries, and at some point Preordains just kind of float into your list because you got oh, it. And Kyle stole that Taiga. Okay. I think it's Cody. I'm fine with that. I could afford to take stopping grounds. Totally. Or I mean, even going the, uh, what's, what's the marketplace? The the surveil lands. The surveil land, yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, which is why I asked before about the surveil lands in the format. I um, think they're good. I mean, you, you need enough fetches to make them worthwhile. Because yes. you can't just be playing them raw. But Oh yeah, that would, be, that would be the worst, just drawing a surveil land off Correct. the Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at the same time, also, with the Naya, the Naya Triome is probably pretty good for him. Yeah, yeah. That, that could actually be uh, a better play. There's, but he has no fetch. 
Not yet, no. Not yet. Which So drawing that off the top is probably better. I think it would be better feeling than the Surveil Land because okay. at least you're getting your third color. Yep. Um, but still, it feels bad. The... I think, honestly, Cody's list is the reason why Kyle took the uh, Wooded Foothills first. Because normally you see people go Blue Lands first. Yeah. Um, but going for the Jund lands as the fetches is an interesting decision there. Yeah, you want to make sure your, your lands are decent. And if you just want to play, like, we've got, for me, seeing that fetch goes so fast, it would, to me, speaks to somebody who wants to play a lot of colored pips. Yeah. And we see that in Ren and Six. It's got two colored pips. Everything else has one thus far, but I would expect to see some more picked up later. I don't know if he's floating the Shieldred. Um, yeah, I don't know but, what Kyle's doing with this Vampiric, because a lot of his deck feels like it's built around Urza's Saga right now, yep. and then it has kind of a Jund mana base to go wherever he wants. Yep. But is the vamp just there as a value, kind of, I'll grab whatever piece I need, or is he going to be vamping into a win condition? Yeah, for sure. Uh, why is there no Orcish Lumber Draft? So Lumberjack actually has been drafted before. I think Orcish Lumber Draft, uh, Lumberjack got drafted in, like, in 2010 or 2011, one of the really early stages, back when it was still being run inside of Watsi, as opposed to having spread out to the wider community. Um, which is the reason why it hasn't, didn't show up in that first drafted series, Euripides. Uh, the, the first drafted series is cards that had been previously printed, they got taken for the first time in 2023. Oh, okay. So it wasn't trying to cover all the best cards or all that. It's kind of like, what cards flew under the radar for yep. at least a year before they popped in last year? Got it. And okay. it was all of the uh, White Plume Adventurer and all, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the Undercity stuff. Okay, so you got Mason with the Marsh Flats, which yep. helps finish out the mana base. Um, because at this point we can afford to just stretch into our colors. That makes sense. I would expect Mason's got to take a, a hand smoothing card at some point. Maybe, I don't know. He's like, his deck kind of all over the place. It's just like a blue-black control list right now. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, so Euripides, it only shows twice, but it probably is in the past, right? So it's probably a while back is when I assume it showed up. But Yeah, because this data, the zero day on the data that we're using is only a couple of years old. I, no, it runs, I mean, for, for that series. Yeah. This is a whole different thing we can talk about. Oh, that series, oh okay, how okay. that okay. Came, came about, but it's also possible I missed it. Okay, so... Cody has lost the Taiga and the Stomping Grounds now. Oh, man, and birds. That yep. scene, uh, there's the Ur And there's the Jer the Urza with the... Uh, the Ballista, yeah. The Ballista. Yeah, I like seeing the... Uh, I like seeing Jake kind of pick a lane here, because uh, I think he'd been kind of just splashing around for a while, mm -hmm. and seeing how his deck's actually coming together, it's going to be a one of those, like... I don't know if it's going to turn into a um, an Elves deck, but it could very easily right now. Okay. Yeah, w like... I question the idea of taking the the early monodorks, mm -hmm. um, but it does make sense to to lean in. So we might I I'd want to see some more three drops or four drops out of Jake. Yeah. Um, JVP from Mason. So at some point we are going to be looking to take advantage of flashback. So we have Snapcaster and JVP for that, right? So we have Duress still floating around as like the third best discard spell, right? That's probably correct, yeah. Because Thought Seize, Inquisition, yep. the rest are the three, the three one mana ones yeah. at least. After that, you have like Victimize and Ostracize. Yeah, and, like, you, well, you also hold the two mana ones that are the two uh, mana ones are well, better probably. Yeah, um, they're not Ignos, they're not as Ignos. But they have the new one that hits artifacts and creatures for one mana. That's oh, okay. fine. Ostracize. Yeah. yeah. All right. So continuing, on, so Taiga into Badlands. So we have our Jund mana base set up mm -hmm. so his mana looks great yeah he has red and six two fetches and two duels now yeah this does look like a saga jund list yes for sure um like the we have strip mine so we could we can keep floating wasteland if we want or just not with that soul ring he's gonna let blood blood bright i'm pretty sure okay and right now we have we're, even if we hit vamp which seems like the worst hit we're still happy i think we're still happy with that because totally. it's a tutor so it gets us exactly what we need yeah, Elaine's pick of Narset here, I think, shows that she hasn't drafted in a while. Narset mm -hmm. and uh, True Name, they're both very strong cards, but yep. it kind of is a very, like, I don't know, like a 2020 level of thinking, um, yeah. where things have shifted away from them, and maybe mm -hmm. it's still good. Maybe Like, this is the fun thing of seeing people come back after a minute, is you get to see if those cards went down because it's a fad, or if they went down because they actually are lower power level, and yeah, I don't know yeah. yet. We'll find out yep. whether whether uh, they oh. can perform. There's the deck, Faden. Okay. Oh, sick. Speaking I like Dak here. Speaking of cards, though, that have gone down right that 20 yeah. so you get that two-year-old yeah. mindset or whatever yeah right? so when we were talking about uh dak faden and, uh, and thieving skydiver one of my parts about dak faden is exactly what we talked about up top with brendan's draft of ancestral into hole breacher which is just dak faden target you how about you don't draw anything and i make two treasures yeah pretty <laughs> strong yeah dak has a pretty wild range of hits here like every deck has is vulnerable to mm -hmm. it which is pretty cool to see yep yeah. i i love where dan is going with this list by the way 
I just I, I think that this is one of the stronger uh, lanes we've seen for Eldrazi. Um, there's a Pyroblast, yep. which is and, a fine pickup. And he's purely uncontested. Correct. And what he's doing. So it's just that lane is wide open and like, like it, he and Varner are fighting over artifacts a little bit, but they're in very different artifact decks. Yeah, you miss the, the soul ring because it just you know, you can't turn to your Thought Not Seer as easily if you had it on top of your crypt and sure. your vault, right? Um, and you can't just what is it, turn yeah, turn to your one ring, but like sure. Mm-hmm. Like Days. Okay. Well, okay. He can still turn to the one ring off of the vault though. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. taking a lot of damage off of that. That's fair. <laughs> You're very right about that. I feel like it's trying to speculate on whatever Brendan's doing at this point is just you can, completely you a loser's game. Like, we'll see in pick 35 what his deck's going to turn into. We but... took Fastbond, right? So you just yeah, exactly. spell Fastbond back to land. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll be doing things. I it wouldn't surprise say, if we see crabs at some point out of I, I oh will say God. with Brendan, this kind of reminisces to me of, I think it was like three or four, where he had ended up with um, Zur, uh, Zurin Orb... And uh, he was like twisting it with Zoran yep. Orb. Yep. And, this feels like a, a Zoran Orb combo uh, list. Crucible. Crucible, yeah. uh, but he had a like Tireless Tracker and, and uh, Emrakul. Yes. It's kind of reminiscent of something he's done before. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you, you have Fast Bond, Zoran Orb, and, cru- and a Crucible effect, you have infinite mana on top Curse, of Curse, infinite life. Right. Yeah. So you can do whatever you want once you if make you it. Have try or you draw a card. Draw exactly. Card. Ooh, Skyclave yeah. Apparition. Okay, that's that's a, a standard pickup for this list. But I, is he taking that because he anticipates that Elaine met Wanta? Is he Both. trying to grab it's those? Just, it's just so good, so good removal. On yeah. The body and... I wonder if he has uh, Cody has a Stoneforge, right? So nobody's gonna really step on his toes for equipment unless you were, were leaning on Lava Spur boots, which yeah. was de- I, I would assume would go to the Saga list if, if he's, he's up to that. date. Well, he, you got to know about we, the card. We okay. talked about it this morning. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah, I might want it, but it's a pick 30 kind of card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, like, I like this Brazen Borrower a lot. That card usually goes around 10-ish. Okay, so Brandon's basically trying to play Tempo at this point. It feels like he's drafting the best card that's available uh, in the colors he's in. Yeah. It feels, feels about right. Okay. It's, it's brought down because it's been forgotten a couple times. Like, I got like I got it around 44. That yeah. STL presents 4. Oh, jeez. Yeah. When, when you look at where it gets taken in yeah. the drafts it's taken, it's mm-hmm. usually in the 10-ish range. Okay. Yeah. Eight, seven's the high. Yep. Uh, never before seven. Uh, on average, right around 12-ish, it looks like. 11, 12 is the most... 9 to 12 is the most common. Mm-hmm. Um, lows are like 34 and 44. I think those are both me. Where it's like, <laughs> I was like, no one's taking that. I'm going to take that. Yeah. <laughs> so I know Mason loves control decks, but tends not to love stack control decks. In this case, it seems like he's falling that direction, though. Okay. Like, he does have the, the time walk uh, to pressure, but, I mean, his Jace and uh, Snapcaster make me think, and plus all these counter spells, makes yep. me think that he's going to be doing a blue black control list of some kind. I don't know what his combo is going to be. If he's going to go, uh, like, Helm, possibly. He could go um, He could okay. go into something really silly with, like, uh, uh, with Cephalid Breakfast. I don't, oh, I don't okay. think he's going to go that direction, though. That one's hard because you only have one Cephalid Illusionist, whereas the... the the cards required to trigger Illusionist are plentiful. There's only one Illusionist. Yep, exactly. Um, this Lauren is good. Yep. It's good to pick up. Lauren's one of the nice cards that have moved. It's versatile, but it's moved up because it also is good against Thassa's Oracle. Oh, sure. You can just kill him. Yeah. Yep. I, I've killed... I've done it. And Prismar, Prismari Command. Like, Prismari is often... If I'm in Red Blue and someone's on the Oracle, I always want yeah, you can also, You can just... also do it Noxious Revival. Boop. How would you put a card back? Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I wonder if that was floated up because Cody took Skyclave. I think so. I think I think Dan is pretty heads up and knows which lane he's fighting in, and it's yep. only Cody. Yep. Yeah. So if we see uh, Athalia, that would be we expect from Dan, right? We're not going to Cody's not going to th- uh, thaw his own planeswalkers. Cody, I, Cody actively hates Thalia, actually. All right, that, that's fair. I can get behind that. I think most players that have played this format for a long time actively hate Thalia. Yeah. Like, she seems better than she is most of the time. Got it. I think three drops Thalia could definitely see play, but yeah. two two drops is probably not going to make the cut. Okay. Let's see. So I mean, Elaine could just take a preordain. It's <laughs> pretty heard, strong. I heard yeah. a conversation outside. Uh, Brandon was asking Elaine if she had if the uh, trop messed yeah. over plans. She's like, no, there's Brainbow. There's enough lands. I don't care. She's like, I, just, yeah. I don't. There's so many lands. I don't care. So. Yep. When a lane gets thrown off, she will also never admit to being thrown off in a right. draft. So <laughs> I, I respect that out of her. Uh, and I have no idea. There's and a Vulk from her. Okay. Yeah, okay. Wasteland. Good pick. Yeah. That, that seemed. 
I like I like this wasteland a lot. This is, it really leans into that gem strategy. Yep. We lost the face the the fast bonds to Brandon. We don't know exactly what he's going to be doing. Still not really showing that he would want Wasteland to go with Fast Bond, but might as well take it at this point. He like, just likes to value Fast Bond, too. Yeah. I mean, Is Kyle going to fall into the Grist deck, you think? A Grist, Grist a green side makes a lot of sense there. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to see, like, what, what are, like, the powerhouses that have Jund? And he already has most of them. Um, Shieldred is one that you still know, could get taken. Mm -hmm. so grief. reminiscent of... Um, yeah, Grief. This is so reminiscent, uh, in a way, without the extra color of Mason's last winning deck. Yes, true. Uh, not as many fetches, though. Not as many fetches, but you could end up with... Um, Mason, I think, Mana League is the pick that I have for him here. Yeah. Like, that could be... Oh, uh, yeah. Deep Root Wayfinder, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I were Kyle, and I was aware of Grist... And Agatha's Soul Cauldron. I would probably look into taking Kyle's those work. back to back he, soon. He, he, he modern. He's a modern. Yeah. I don't know if anybody plays that in modern. Is the thing. No, he does. Kyle, Kyle knows that deck because okay. he he's, he knows Yogmoth really well, yep. and Yogmoth splashes plays that sometimes. Yeah, Yogg yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. plays it. All right, good. So I, I wouldn't. That's actually a great heads up. I, I would not have anticipated that, but Agathas makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about Agathas for uh, Adam's deck when it looked like there was a possibility of Bomberman because mm -hmm. that allows you to just kind of uh, unlike Cephalid Illusionist. Uh, go wide on your, like, threats in Bomberman, um, so you get a lot of redundancy there. Um, okay, here's my wild speculation for Mason. He has all Esper lands at this point, mm -hmm. and I know that he's been thinking a lot about uh, the one mana 12-12, Phyrexian... Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Shrimping uh, all over the world. I think he's yeah. gonna do it in a Stifled Knot. Okay. He's talking Esper about Stifled I, me I mentioned Shrimpin' before. Yeah? Yeah. Like looking at his list, it all, you know, it all lines up incredibly I, well for it. The, the way the the way Kyle's list started to shake up after strip mine, I actually thought Kyle was going to be shrimping. Mason has talked about Stifle not a lot in mm -hmm. his passing. Yep. Like this is something he wants to do, but he mm -hmm. never got around to doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, look at this Esper deck just taking Assassin's Trophy. But Mason, I told you earlier, I think it was going four color, right? And that, yeah. he, he made a say, "Fuck the fairy." Maybe it's not Esper. It right? is. Like, he he does have Delta. Oh, and there's the dress. Adam taking disciplined picks all the way through this. Adam's a hell of a player, man. Hell of a drafter. Yeah. yeah, I don't like how fast he won his first draft and now is on the road to win another one. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let him have nice things, people. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> like... All right, so... Green Even... Sun is probably the pick that I would, if I were Jake right now. Oh, just to keep Kyle from... Pop... Or it works... It's Which... just the best green card. And there's some... You have some powerful options before and behind it. Ignoble into... Noble. Ignoble into Noble. That would be pretty strong. Yeah. I like the art direction on the Ignoble Hierarch. Oh, the me too. are like Noble Hierarch but Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really love... I love that, that card. Because it's like not too powerful. It's slight upgrade, yeah. arguably. Yep. I don't know. It's it's the cycle I hope they finish in Modern Horizons 3. Like, oh. We're short two of them, I think. It, it, it just have to be green? Green plus two? Is yeah. that the idea? Okay. Yeah, so you, you get a teamer. Yeah. Ignoble into Noble. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's say he's weak to Fury, but he has the Fury, so. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Oh, and what there's the Shieldred. Okay. Denying it to Kyle. I, I kept talking about that card. I knew somebody was going to take it. Where is Dark Ritual? Look, why do these people have no respect for the, the for Elders? I, pff, all right. <laughs> uh, so, I, it is Adam's card to, to draft. Correct. I still believe. I don't think anybody is showing that they would want Dark Ritual. So, if I'm, if I'm Adam... Yeah, I'm probably just floating it until it looks like somebody like I would take it if I were Mason, but that's fine. Okay, I, the the my only problem w if I was Mason about taking it is that I have nothing to do with three black mana on turns one through like a lot, right? Yeah, I mean I'm always thinking combo, but if I'm Mason, I'm looking at like a thought seize time walk snapcaster deck, and I'm just like, oh, you're playing Doomsday. You already have a Teferi all lined up. You're ready. Yeah, to go. yeah, yeah. This I, is Esper Doomsday, but he's obviously being Mason and taking green there, instead. There's, <laughs> there's that. There's also a lot of options inside that shell too. Like, um, there's a lot of overlap with Dragon. Yeah, and, true. And Doomsday and stuff like that, which is also another deck that could. Somebody's going to do a minor reanimation pivot. So I here. will say at this point that if Kyle does not do the Gris soon. Yeah, Mason will grow screen sun. I, th I agree. Next wheel. I think okay. you're right. Like, like looking at those last two picks. Yep. Mason green sun is is bread and butter. Correct. Like Mason will windmill slam Gris green sun, and on those last on that next round, if, okay. if it doesn't. Well, clear. green sun grist. But yes. Yeah. 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 yeah correct. And because he, he'll do it the right way. He wants to deny it from Jake. Yeah. Right, he'll do it the right way. If he does do green sun, 
he, he needs a one drop target, and he'll need Dryad Arbor, of Dryad course. Arbor, that, yeah. that one can float forever, but he needs a one drop at some point here. Does Elves of Deep Shadow get taken? Yes. Okay. There's a Veil somewhere. I like that pick too. Okay, that is something we talked about a lot uh, pretty early yeah, on. Something I asked about earlier. Yeah, Veil. Veil, I think, is a card that uh, is both one. drafted very highly and often underdrafted. But it, it's the best sideboard card, I think. Veil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, looking at the shape of this draft, it could actually be a very crime and mean deck card too. Correct. Yeah. That's the thing. It's you, it's a sideboard card that ends up hitting six six of the decks in the field, so you run a main deck. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with Veil of Summer, and it is a, an opportunity to have happen here, is when you have it when you're playing against a Teferi, you just untap and in your own on, in your own upkeep or main phase, you just cast your Veil of Summer sure. and then win. Yeah. <laughs> like cool. Do you have the counter spell for the Veil? If you don't, this is the turn. When you watch Bryant Cook play, that's often what he'll do. He, yeah. he won't he won't try to get cute with it. He'll just all right. That, first spell that I'm gonna play is Veil, Veil of Summer. That, yeah. When I was playing Sneak and Show before Grief took over Legacy, that was a uh, and like Beans was the up and coming act. That's what I do. Like, okay, cool. You tap for Teferi and my upkeep. Since I have Soul Lands and a bunch of Lotus Petals, you've got to stop some amount of this stuff. And if it's not the Veil of Summer, then I'm a win. Right. And if they do counter it, you just say, okay, I'll try next turn. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have all your mana again the next turn. Yeah, exactly. Or depending on how they countered it, which is usually forced, they're down enough where you could probably just go. Correct. So that turn too. So it's just. That's the classic Belcher line, is they force your target, and then you just play another one. You mark. Yep. That's my phone. Oh. I'm going to text Vince and tell him to come by later in game. Nice. I need to see some Vince. I was having a natter day, and I thought of him. <laughs> yeah, so Elaine here is, I mean, she's going to go just uh, American control. Or I guess, no, French control, because she's in Quebec now. Yeah, uh, Quebec what? Yeah. Oh, is she in Calgary? Or did she move to She's Quebec? Montreal. She moved over. Still up, still open for Teamer, though. So she, <laughs> with a, uh, one fetch on the list, right? One, just, just the turn, just the turn. Yep. Yep. So we could, and we've seen the Taiga. We've seen the Trop. She, oh, she's the only has the Valk. Is she gonna abandon the Oko? I think. No. Nah, well, the reason I bring it up is because there's still the, the Triome in front of us, and Elaine does have this sure. kind of slow plotting deck right now. Just the rug is, one. Yeah. Yeah. Elaine played pre triomes non fetchable before, so yep. she definitely wanted to play some tap lands. Correct. Like yeah. she played um, Crumbling Necropolis at least twice. Yep. So. I, I do. I do like that Elaine has the opportunity to just show up and and have the respect your elders deck right here with sure. like those UTB tap lands and just take care taking care of all yourself with some very low cost solutions. There's four colors cost though. problems. That's tough. Four? Uh it's green, white, blue, red, right? Wait, does she have white? No, she has yeah, she she swords. Could, yeah. Oh she has the swords. Oh yeah. I thought that one okay. I thought that swords was one over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think Swords may just be, I'm going to take the best card and see if I can splash into white, and then looking at the field, seeing that there's three white drafters out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe not. Got it. Or maybe she doesn't abandon the Oko. Sure, yeah. That's, uh, I don't know. Oko seems too good to abandon. I, I always fall into that trap and then hate myself as, okay. I'm, as I'm playing it, and I win, you always win one match off Oko, and then yep. your mana base is a little worse no, for the rest. I've abandoned a, I've been in a time bolt. I've been in Force of Will recently. Okay. The the first ma the first sanctioned match of vintage I played was at Eternal Weekend, and it literally was the Oath Mirror, and I I didn't real like I I played Standard during the Oko days, but I wasn't playing Oko, so I never realized that it it is when you're in the Oko Mirror. Not only does it take forever, it's very skill testing, mm -hmm. but it is actively that uh, Star Wars gif. It's the meme of the two Jedi's just flickering each other's lightsabers <laughs> on and off. Oh, speaking of Star Wars, it is the fourth. We forgot. I, uh, I, almost wore, I had a double entendre shirt I was going to wear for, wear for you um, that because I, I saw it when I was playing a show up in Vermont. I was like, I love the shirt. I got to find it. It's uh, black and it shirt's black and white, really rough looking. It's just an X-Wing on it. Mm -hmm. Like, as foil unfolded, and above it, it says, uh, this machine kills fascists. Nice. That's funny. For the double entendre. I like that. But instead, I just want to wrap the podcast. Death right. Kyle would have liked that. Um, Elaine, with the, the Elaine with the DRS and only one fetch. I and, think that she, she's playing it as just a kill you card. And also okay. other people's fetches. And I do think DRS is underrated just for the kill you card aspect. Like, right. Agreed. Yeah. Um, it's also graveyard hate. I'm going to also ask a weird question, because I don't know any of the names, and I don't expect either of you to know them. The Streets of Nuka Penna, ETB, Tap, and Sack Lands, the ones that, that are being played in Standard now, and the lands that just like do nothing but come in and fetch their oh, shards. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not seen like, it Okay. But. No, that, that card's not been played. Okay, Palace Jailer. There's the Green Sun. Brandon took oh, it. Oh, Brandon. boy. Nice. Brandon just denying Mason the value. I, is this he can read a draft better than almost anybody? Else. I was gonna ask. Isn't this Ooh. exactly what he did in the city champs, where he just read the draft and was was hate picking all the way down? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that hate drafting in a in a mm -hmm. draft like that is very different than in this field. I don't think yep. he's hate drafting here. He's just no. taking good cards. Yeah. 
And Brandon loves the green tent. Yeah, and, correct. Okay, so Loris oh. right now can't be a companion, but no. Loris can yeah. be in the in the main. Well, we could abandon the Planeswalker pick. So yeah, for there's no Lur- way. No, lo- just Loris Lotus, just in the mains. Okay. Yeah, because you go Lotus, Loris, oh, yeah, no, replay Lotus. Yeah, no, right. I know that. I'm yeah. saying like we're not. Like, our Planeswalkers are too powerful. No, to no. Abandon. Well, but also all the three drops. There's so many in here. Like, yeah. There's no way. No. Uh, green tent and mystical. So the mystical is just for a, another wheel. The green yep. sun is presumably just for ramp. This but is, what are we ramping into? This is, so, <laughs> this is so reminiscent of his... Um, it is. That one from like three or four. Ooh, there's okay. a bad Thalia. Well, first got to spell it properly, and then... Ah, they'll figure it out. So, it's bad because it just doesn't do enough. It's right... His deck's the deck that's actually his Bastion right here. The, the combo decks are not pressured by mana in a format that is this slow, as opposed to in other formats where... They're trying to go on turn one or two. Yep. In this format, they have time to build up to three or four land drops, so the Thalia mm-hmm. just doesn't pressure. Like enough. I turned one against a, with Mark against Doomsday twice. He still won both games. Yep. I made it hard work for it. Right. Yeah. It was hard, but like if if, if you're not following now, this deck is the deck that it works in yep. because if you're following up Thalia with Reality Smasher, right? Yep. The okay. question is, what pressure are you following up Thalia with? Yeah, I know we're just like we're uh, complaining and saying she's bad, but by bad I mean she goes pick forty, not that she is unplayable. It's it's Got a completely it. okay. reasonable card. It's yep. just it's not one that you need to take a tenth pick or something like yeah. that. Understood. Divert is a fun one. That's that's one we don't always get to see. That's a a misdirect, right? It's a misdirect unless they pay one and you draw a card. Oh no, it's unless they pay two. I think. Yes, it's a misdirect unless they pay two for oh. one mana. Okay. I always mix this one up with Divert. Or not, uh, what's the other one? That, Divest. Maybe. Nope, there, there's one that's uh, <laughs> blue, counter, it's a force spike, but you draw a card. Not and it costs, it costs two mana instead of one. Arcane Denial, they draw two, you draw one? No, it's, it's another, it's a really silly one. Oh. I like the oof there. From the, Mason with the him. There's the Dark Rip nice. from Adam. Good pick. Okay, Natural Order. Are we going to go Crater Huff? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay. So we should see more... LB. More low-to-the-ground green creatures in a cradle coming from... Probably. Oh, man. If I were Adam and I, I... I don't know if the Retrofitter Foundry Pack, like, thing... It actually does well, but taking Candelabra and Cradle, if I thought about doing that, would be, I think, some top-tier memory right here. Yes. So you have a bunch of creatures already, right? We have... Eh, Thoracle does his job on an ETBs. We have Ballista, so powering a Ballista. We have Urza, we have Shieldred. Disrupt is the card I'm thinking of. Disrupt oh. is the card that you rarely get to see, but it's counter an instant or sorcery unless they pay one and you draw a card. And it only costs one mana. Got it. Natural Order, I like this. Yes. So people complain about that card because it, when it fails, it fails miserably, but it's very good. Is the break now or on the way back? Uh, Right now. Right now, okay. All right, we're gonna take a break. Uh, who do you want in the booth? I'll okay. people. Uh, who do we want? I don't know. Let's grab. Let's grab Kyle. All right. Here you take. Here you take Kyle. I'm gonna take. Go. All right. I'm gonna go fill it. Hello. Hello. All right. How you doing, Kyle? Good. Doing great. Having fun out there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me um, lower that so chat's not up. Oh sure. Yeah. That way people don't call out cards to you. Oh, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, oh, this one, this one. You're like, oh, there it is, and you win the draft. So how are we feeling about our draft, sir? Great. I love it. Love it's it? like super solid. I took some uncolored things first and second pick, the Saga and the Soul Ring. Yeah. Um, obviously a good one-two. Um, and then uh, just like watching what others were drafting, where the blue was going, if anybody was going hard into like burn or reanimator or something. Um, and it just seemed like a, a, like a fair lands based plan was uh, gonna be there what I, go. what I felt yeah. like uh, was gonna be scoot in, you know, scoot in. Yeah. I felt like a fair jund amount okay. lands plan was the the idea um, and I like honestly I love this for the first 15 for myself that's why I called you in right I think this is a very good looking draft uh, mm-hmm. what, any, what have you lost that you wanted here uh, I definitely wanted uh, Varner took something from me demonic tutor was okay. on my list 
Um, yeah, the, the vamp. And the I, vamp. There's an yeah. argument about which is better, vamp or demonic. I know. Yeah, uh, I mean, it depends on the list somewhat. But right, my my mana curve is like super low right, right. now, uh, so I think the vamp is great. Yeah, uh, the shieldred would have been nice. Yeah, we thought. Um, yeah, we we mentioned that. that, that um, seemed... the Inquisition was a pick before I was going to pick it when I picked Bloodstained Mire. I wanted some hand disruption. Right, Thoughtseize was taken again right before me by Mason. So Mason's kind of cut me out. Yeah, on some hand hate stuff. Um, the green Sun did that. Green Sun didn't cross my mind. Okay. Not yet. I don't really, okay. not really in that uh, in that mind space. The card. Yeah, we, we were wondering on the Green Sun. We had some thoughts about a possible lane for you on the uh-huh. Green Sun, and then I had said actually, if you didn't take it, if you were thinking of that lane, we were thinking about. If you didn't take it here, I thought Mason would take it here, mm. uh, and then Brandon took it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like and the whole Brandon's like, I'm yeah. just gonna take right because yeah. I mean, Mason does love a Green Sun, so for that's sure. Yeah, no, uh, I feel good. Uh, the Karn would have been nice, but right. not really like attached to it. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, sure. But yeah, honestly, I'm not really upset about any okay. any. So what's our our big finish then? So what are we? That is a good going? question. That is okay. a good question. I think I want to get life from the loam at some point okay. and have an engine. It might be. Um, I might try to like go a little bigger and like maybe fit in a, a titan at the top end but okay. that would need like a natural order maybe or oh, natural order went oh did it go yeah, the, la- the last yeah, pick, last pick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay well no longer going that way okay. yeah, yeah uh, that's been our question right back here is like all right what, he, he's what got it? this very very solid base right uh-huh. what's he closing with and that's why we thought the shieldred which you mentioned i know right? the shieldred and, right. also the uh, caves of chaos adventurer right i was uh, that was on my list so yeah. Um, a couple of the there's bigger... still other initiative guys that are still pretty good. I yeah, think, there's yeah. the the green one that gives double green. Right, gives double green. Um, so green. he's on my list to, to take a look at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe like a questing beast or something. I don't want to. I don't mm-hmm. think I want to go too high, especially if the natural order is already gone. Mm-hmm. Um, too high on the the mana curve. Right. Um, but yeah, just like a, a fair a fair grind them out kind of situation. Maybe a toxic deluge for some can like some catch up uh, right. aspects. Answer the true name. Answer you know. the true name. <laughs> Answer the the weenies. Right. Um, Cody's deck looks really mean. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. What, what, what do you, what decks? I mean, what are you? What, what's hitting for you on other people's decks? Uh, Cody's. Cody's. I mean, I mean, it's Naya. Cody. Let me tell great you. Great cards. I mean, when um when Jake went Mox Ruby and then Cody turned around and went Rag Minsk mm-hmm. like I, I could just see like the next pick Jake, Jake was just like in the tank on like it yeah. was it yeah. was earth shattering lightning bolt on three I don't know I think it's high but it's I mean, high. It, it ranges around like you know I understand it I don't love it but you know I think that was partially on the you know my world just got shattered right and, yeah you know? yeah he definitely had to like pivot a little bit and yeah. it, it like even in his next couple picks it's like a little unsure where Jacob was going yeah. from Mox, Besage is like right. leaving yourself a little open, um, but he's like found like a solid. Yeah, he's found he's found gruel, a spot, right. Yeah, gruel like mid range. I did want that ignoble hierarch. Um, yeah, that would have been nice. Would have yeah. been nice. Um, but yeah, no, I think everyone's got a, a good idea um, of what where they're at. Yeah. Um, Elaine's deck is kind of chaotic. Yeah. Um, Lutri is always going to be fun, um, but it's just like a, a fair. Like just guy kind of thing going right. on. Um, it, it, if she splashes the fourth for Oko, if she keeps the Oko or the swords, it's kind right, of right. Question, right? Like, is she gonna splash four or go four or not? Mm-hmm. Uh, we were kind of kind of so I mean, Elaine did a lot of these oh, a long time ago at this point, mm-hmm. and this deck looks like an amazing deck from four Tw- three yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 like you know, the, right. the, 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 the VRD shifted, and, and that's. You know, so like not like true name, right? Like mm-hmm. it's much lower now than it used yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, you know, DAC even much lower than it used to be. Like this Narset much lower than it used to be. Like I was like this deck was amazing in twenty twenty. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I think I mean obviously Elaine is a good player. Right. So Elaine's, so, yeah, gonna, like, Elaine's always yeah, a threat. Just gonna go right. you know, six and two or whatever right. with it and just yeah. be like, Yeah, I played fair cards the entire time. Yeah. Um which makes sense. I mean, they are fair, they are good. Right. Um Elaine's a good player. Yeah. Everyone here is a good player. Yeah. Um if I'm scared of one deck, I will say it's Varner's. Varner's uh, deck looks a little scary. It's, you know? it's really scary. Yeah. He's got, like, uh, game plan A, you know, he's got Thoughts Oracle. Yeah. Like, game plan B, he's got Mind Twisty out of the game. He's got Time Vault. Time Vault. Tinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some... Um, there's, yeah, it's definitely scary. You know, he came in and won, the, won his first one yep. last time and uh, sitting in a pretty good spot right now. Sitting so. in a pretty good spot. 
Yeah, so uh, for the next pack, um, I'm definitely thinking like pick up some win cons okay. and then. Um, yeah, I liked your I liked your Sylvan pick a lot. Yep. Um, I thought that Brandon was probably Brandon or Mason would have either liked that. Uh, There's been multiple times where like the the Sylvan pick, um, the uh, the Bowmaster pick, yeah. and I think the uh, Veil Summer pick, like three people all like oh. groaned. They're like. Oh, that was my next one. I really like your oof yeah. pick there too. I think it's yeah. a very quality time for the oof. Um, yeah, just close out the the pack with a good yeah. card that's gonna be main board. Like, yeah. there's no reason not to play it. Like, yeah, but your land base looks solid. The the engine looks solid, right? And this yep. is just uh, I I really like this. This is a very me deck, and I'm, I'm down with it. So um, I'm gonna draft. I'm sure no one else will grab this, and if they do, you can like clip this. Mm -hmm. There's that worm. Is it a green worm seven drop? Where if you search your deck, you can put it into play for free. Panglacial worm. Panglacial worm. Isn't that just free? Is if I'm free, free? Or I think you can cast. It. I don't think. It's is it cast? Free. Oh, oh, oh. Let's let's take a look. I'm pretty sure it's cast. It's cast. And yeah, it's you have to cast it. Yeah, it's a lot of mana. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the weird commander decks. Yeah, you can just cast it. Uh, the weird commander decks that do it do it because they have. Um, because it was that weird combo with it, but it's got Silvala, which makes a lot of mana. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they don't have to worry I, I, about mana. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, then, maybe I won't draft that. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I saved, yeah, I saved you some pain. Yeah, yeah. I would have looked it up before I drafted right, right, it, so right. I would have shifted off. All right. Yeah. All right, man. Well, well good. Yeah, Kyle, this looks good, man. Thanks yeah. for yeah, coming yeah. on. Uh, the, the guess, I'm going to say I'm gonna say six and two. Six and one? Six and one. It's seven rounds, so. All right, all right. You've heard it here, folks. Call the shot. Kyle says he's taking one down today. All right. So, yeah, I think that's uh, so interesting to hear that he um, hadn't really been considering the uh, Green Sun Grist plan. Uh, I thought he would definitely have would have been on that with that list. Um, so quite interesting dynamic there on that one. Uh, but I think it's a very good looking list. As I said, I think it really is going to come down to what he closes with. He mentioned... Uh, uh, he mentioned Questing Beast, which uh, wouldn't, you know, is a Brandon favorite, so don't be surprised if that gets snapped up uh, pretty quick by Brandon. Uh, Cody could also snap that up, though I don't know if he's going to be going the double green, honestly, with his list at this point. Um, so, yeah, I think he had a pretty good, um, he had a pretty good feel for the draft. I liked his commentary on other people's decks there. I think he saw the, the right things. I think Kyle had a pretty good feel for the draft there. And it'll be interesting to see what finishers he kind of finds and that he's in the kind of the same assessment of, yeah, I, I moved this over here. Uh, so let's move that back there. I'm Peter for a minute. All right. But they are getting ready to draft. Oh, they already drafted. Sneak right. Attack is taken next. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, chat. Okay. Where's chat? I lost chat. That's okay. It's that over here? Yeah, it's over here somewhere. Oh, I can see it there too. Okay. Yeah. I have the extra. Uh, oh, yeah, so Sneak Attack. So Natural Order Sneak Attack. So, okay. Um, so he could bring in some fatties then, right? Uh, that's an interesting... Uh, I like Sneak Attack. I, I think it's underdrafted, um, but not too much, right? I think it's a hair underdrafted because it does, like, amazing... It can win big, but it also just sometimes it just dirtles. And, um... Yeah, I also was talking to Adam, and he's never resolved the card, but one of the cards on his list is Doomsday. <laughs> So okay. We'll see if that okay. one makes the cut. I almost did a Doomsday uh, an online one recently, and I had to message Mark. I was like, Mark, explain to me how Doomsday piles work. But I ended up not doing Doomsday. And then we talked for a while, and you said, I actually don't want to do this. This yeah. seems terrible. Well, no, it was it, I, I was going to, like, uh, but I lost. I messed up and didn't prioritize LED right. Mm -hmm. And once I lost LED, it was dead. So like, I was all in on it. I was like, okay, cool, I'm doing Doomsday piles, and but I I didn't prioritize cards yeah. right, and lost LED. I oh, like we point out. There's a difference in Doomsdays. There's um, there's resolving Doomsday, and then there's the puzzle of Doomsday. And those, Correct. The, those are those have one right after the other. Hello from SCG Richmond. Yeah, Iron Claws here. Uh, the bot will be up here on Twitch, but it will also be on our YouTube channel. So uh, definitely go check it out on stlotus.org, and you can find all the details there. Um, um, but yeah, resolving Doomsday is nice because you know the game's going to be over in a minute, regardless of whether you win or lose. Mace with the library there. The library is always the always somewhat controversial library, right? Of uh, where does it go? When does it go? It's amazing when it's amazing, but at minimum, it taps for mana. Yep. So and Mason's in a slow blue control deck, which is the place where you want a library. Yeah. it seems very now he is here. in potentially four colors. So the library seems that's true. You know. Uh, 
But he might kick out of the Teferi. I was going to say, he might no. kick out of anything at this point. A lot of the he's not gonna get, drafting him says he's not going to kick out of black. A lot of the conversation that we were having in here about Mason's draft is also being ha- uh, had outside uh, about yeah. Mason's draft. And, po- and they mentioned Leobold and some of the other Sultai stuff yeah. that Mason is on. Yeah. Yeah. Mason and Brandon have very similar decks in that they're both like very splashy and still figuring out what they're doing, but yeah. have a lot of synergies going on. Yeah. Um, to go back to Sneak Attack, though, something I like to point out is that Sneak Attack and Channel do kind of go hand-in-hand hand because yes. a lot of the creatures you want to be putting in off Sneak Attack try and end the game that turn, and they yeah. are generally Eldrazi. Yep. Where where does Channel usually go? It's got to be earlier than yep. this. Uh, it's not this one. No, because it doesn't go a lot. So the average is going to be a very skew. Um, I'm sorry. We are very lost. Yeah, there yeah, it is. There there is. There the average is going to be very high. skewed. Because it just doesn't go sometimes. We, we got a Void Walker on a Kyle, okay. which makes sense in that the giant disruption yeah, strategy. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, okay, so China usually goes right around here. Yeah. yeah but 18 to 32, right? as I said. It's, it's like... Uh, Brandon's, yeah, of course, always a channel threat. Brandon loves channel yep. and loves, you know, especially with the Hex Drinker. He talks ad nauseum about those two together. Yep. Um, well, that makes sense. Um, I also really do like that Cradle, the list you're talking about, um, with the idea of running Cradle, Antelar, and Academy, and Retrofitter. Yep. Like, that's a good synergy. We're also, uh, Adam just realized that Attractions, if you take an Attraction card, you get to take any 10 Attractions. Mm-hmm. So he is, his head's spinning about the idea of Lifetime Pass Cody, holder. Cody did it, man, that one time. Well, yeah. What Cody mentioned also was that when you have Urza, Attractions tap for Mana, and yeah. Cody did not realize that in the yeah. last Until round, after he, you know, yeah. Because Attractions aren't... It's mono artifact, right? That's the technical, right? And they yeah. well, they also count for Talarian Academy, so they tap for mana yeah. off that too. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. And you can sacrifice them if you need to. Like, there's a lot of value you get out of them. Yeah, yeah it's funny, funny, and funny. Speaking of value, the Doffy Voidwalker that we're seeing. That's really, a good, good. It's not counter comping anything right now. It's just a value creature. It's a three two for for double black. It just it, swings in. It's also a threat, and that's, that's what, what I mean. we were discussing in, in here. Uh, yep. Was uh, where, where's his th- where's his end game? Was his threats and where's he? Yep, almost oh. entirely unblockable. Arbiter has not been picked in a long time, probably since the last time Elaine picked Arbiter. True, yeah. Um, uh, we do have, uh, yeah, Adam is on the favorite archetype of Infinum, uh, Infinitum, and yes, his deck is incredible to me. I'm really excited for it. Very, very good abrade there from Dan. I just, yeah, I, I, I like it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, let me recess that. Yep. Oh, and the Beast. So I mentioned, so... <laughs> Kyle had mentioned Questing Beast, and I, after he left, I was telling the chat, I was like, Kyle's not getting Questing Beast because yeah. <laughs> Questing Beast is the, uh, is the Brandon favorite, and it's not going in, uh, it won't probably go past the next couple rounds, and Brandon's going to take it. Yeah. So, uh, is it Marauding Raptor? Marauding Raptor is, like, it, it's not been drafted yet, uh, but it is good. Right? It's like, the four drop Raptor? Yeah, Raptor? it's the, no, no, that's, it's something Raptor, the, 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 the red Questing Beast, that has yeah. less, slightly less abilities, but pumps. Side Questing Beast. The Fire Breeze. Hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. I knew it had yeah. a lot of text on Questing it. Dino. Uh, I like side questing beast. Yeah. It pays homage to <laughs> the original. So. Yeah, but Arbiter, uh, again, <laughs> a laser deck, very 2020, right? Yeah. Because you know. we just got that bird, didn't we? Out of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Yeah, we printed similar. it. Even something. Yeah. Even Cloud Chaser. Even something, something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think you printed that one. I did, yeah. yeah. It's, it should get oh, drafted. Cody with the Crocus. He's right. like, I'm Finally. not losing... I'm not losing my boo to that bullshit. Yeah. I said Dan should have taken yeah. it earlier no, on. He cut should. the Minskin boo. Somebody drafts that card and you snap off Crocus in the mono white deck. Yeah. So, Crocus is very good. Yeah. And Crocus counters questing beast, of that course, as uh, Weirdo of Oz points out here. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cause the, the only keyword questing beast is missing is Shroud, Hexproof, or Ward. Pick one. Right. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Ward, Kappa Cannoneer? For Adam? But Adam's He's got close. a lot going on. I don't know if he wants Kappa, but Kappa's definitely been drafted. And Kappa, speaking of the simulacrum yep. thing earlier, that's your Kappa, you yes. know. Yeah, but it, it, I don't see him doing it here just because he's got so many li- lines already. I don't know if he wants a. I don't know if he wants it a combat finisher. Correct. Okay, he'd, al- he'd also have to do the thought cast creatures, and he'd probably want to do Emery at that point. Like he's kind of pushing into a different deck, which might be a good one. I don't know, but it's a different right. deck than this combat but, aspect. Dan going into a blue and doing Kappa Cannoneer is not unheard of, right? Like, that's, you know... Correct. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Dan... Dan no, I think Dan's... He's Dan, pushing into red now, which is... No, he, he... That's fine. I mean, what red... A splash of white, red in that. I think he already had something. He had Fable and Caves. He had Fable and Caves, yeah. Okay. He went back-to-back on those two, which right. 
Yeah, and that's right. That deck is easy, easy with red white. Like, are it's are easy we sure he's on it. on the the thought not seer though? Is no, that, not, I'm that? not sure, but he's okay. got enough colors that he. I mean, it just looks. He's got so much. He's got tomb. He's got city of traitors. Crypt and vault. He's got crypt and vault. Okay. Right, like there's just almost no reason he wouldn't be. What's the worst that happens? He ends up taking um, the pain land. Right, but sure. I mean, in this like, in my world, whether he does or not. I'm taking. I don't know. We may not go in full Eldrazi, but I'm going a couple like the Reality Smasher, the Thought Not Seer, and I'm going Eldrazi Displacer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the Displacer. I like that a lot in the yeah. list. I like the Bone Crush, the, the Bone Crusher here, but I'm a big fan of Bone Crusher. We don't have Null Elemental Blast yet, right? No, that's, that's no, the next set. Sure. No, next set. Because that would be another one that pe- theoretically could be good. Although I don't know if we have enough color, enough multicolor that, here. Man, that set is going to change everything. I'm very excited for it. Um, what's his face? Uh, not Justin Janari. Piotr Golgalski was joking with Martin Jusa because Martin Jusa didn't realize that the new uh, Everything Land mm-hmm. was a part of the Commander Only product. So he was like, and so there were like a bunch of tweets in a row, I believe, from Martin Jusa of like him like, well, this Land is insane. Oh wait, it's from Commander. God, <laughs> this could have been bad. And Golgalski comes in at the bottom and says, yeah, but uh, MH3 Commander direct to Legacy. Right. Yeah. Like, and we don't know what's in those decks the, yet. The, the fact that there's modern MH3 Commander is automatically coming away because it's like, oh, we're MH3. It's Modern Horizon, but this one's Commander, so they're not. Like, come on. Like, Ooh, there's the Brainstorm. brainstorm with Brent, the... Brandon. Is that the best one? There's still a preordain out, right? Yeah. I guess he wants... There's still a preordain around. Which yeah. one of these is the... Stuff? Draft is what you want. Yeah. Uh, so, Brainstorm is interesting because he doesn't have that many fetches. Uh, but he, he does want instant speed. We have the Misty, we have the Vista, we have Green Sun Zenith, Mystical Tutor to shuffle. He's got a few shuffles And then we there. have Fast Bonds to put lands, if we brainstorm, put lands back on yeah. top. We need a way to play him off the top, but... That's fair, yeah. Well, as soon as he gets the Courser, though. Courser, yeah. yeah. And then... We gotta take the right, March there. Just, yeah. solid, just solid removal. March is fine. Yep. What's funny is both Dan and Cody are playing decks that I love, it's, but I generally mash them together and make it one deck. Yes. <laughs> Just like, take these both lists, mash them together, and you have my favorite list. <laughs> uh-huh. That's like Mason and Adam for me. Yeah. Mm. So, Emrakul's going to come for Jacob very soon, if not this pick. I would hope so. Because uh, without Emrakul, it's like, I mean, he wants But he can't, natural, he, he can't natural order for, like, I don't know, does he want both? You can natural order for... You want one or the other, at least. Yeah. Crater Hoof, right. Prime Time, and... Uh, Progenitus? No, the... Uh, what Fall Promise? Sure. Right. right. Like, Progenitus... Tera- or Terastodon, yeah. Yeah, Tern- Ternasty, yeah. Oh, or Atraxa. I mean, Atraxa's a pretty yeah. strong one there. Mm-hmm. At that point, he's not in blue for Flash, though, right? He only Ooh, has no the... Flash, yeah. No. Okay. That's a pivot Jacob could make could be like the team or flash deck because then all those folks are with, really good. It, no ones. one's done it yet, and no one's done it in this draft. But with the new uh, the new flash target from the fall set or whatever, uh, the one that when it comes in, you can put all the creatures from your playing hand. Like I'm surprised no one's flashed the Galta Primal. Yeah, the Galta yeah. Primal, the new Galta. Like Brandon was thinking about it a lot, so I, yeah. I don't think he's gonna do it this I, one. But. I snap bought one of those for Sneak. <laughs> They're very good. Before the before Legacy change, I was like, this is a really good card. Did you just show and tell in mm-hmm. or sneak in, and then yeah. you just dump your Trox and dump your Ember Cool. I'm like, all right, cool. Galta's gone, but these other two threats just remain. Uh, t- I know he's not gonna do it, but I would love to see Cody take a Mangara. Mangara Caracas. It's played old yeah, school. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I saw one get drafted. I saw one get played in a in a legacy league last yeah. week. Brian played against a, a death in Texas with Mangara in it. Which Mangara of Karandor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't think there's two Mangaras because there's yeah. the one, the one new one. It's very bad, but it's. Really I mean, fun. it used to be the bomb. <laughs> Correct. Is is Vile? Who who wants Vile? No one in this oh, one. I don't think. Cody does right eventually. I mean, I mean, if you get, if you get a you get three, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel you do. Vile and planeswalkers, not necessarily the best. But he only has like two planeswalkers, right? Yeah. yeah. He's mostly a creature, a, a, a mono white creature deck splashing red. Yeah, I mean, maybe he could. Or over from lane. Okay, so there's that. That highlights we are staying in the green. Yep. And the light harbors. So we're probably staying in four color. Unless the Dax just the. Well, we have the bulk. That one's hard to. Yeah. So we're gonna stay in four color. So interesting. interesting. Oh, the wheel. The Taking wheel. Interesting. Hmm. So that makes the Doffy less of a, a value pick and more of a realistic option to play. Correct. Yeah. Just pull up the... That's fine. Steven. Yeah. We are in some serious shadow. I know. It's it's impossible to see. Oh, Sorry. I didn't realize we'd gone so far. 
I was waiting for you guys to tell me. No, no, I just scrolled back. So, I mean, when you're looking at Mason's list here, mm -hmm. I feel like I just keep get, bringing up Mason's list because it seems really fun. But um, let's pull, let's pull actually at the full draft and see what's out here. What's left? So what we would take if we were Mason? Yeah, I'm just gonna jump over to the missing cards. Priority and balance is pretty good. Okay, so we have Tef, and if I'm Mason, I think at this point I'm going to abandon Teferi, and I am going to take uh, Leovold, and then I'm probably going to take Salem to the west. I just, just be very hero of Dominaria mentioned, so I might be coming for somebody. That's fair. I, I would, I if I was Mason, I'd just try and lean into some goofy stuff, something like that, where I have the opportunity to take over a game with Leovold, making my stuff harder to interact with. Yep, there's a the Terra hero of Dominaria. For Mason? Mm -hmm. Mason took All right, hero. okay. So we're. I feel like he needs he needs uh, reanimate. Like somebody needs to do the little reanimator push. So what does that look like? Then? I mean, I don't think you're gonna see it beyond about just about your reanimate. That's yeah. Let's get you back in here. Uh. All right. There's the demonic consultation. I know Adam has been yeah. talking about floating this one for a while. Yeah, you can't float too long, and that's. All right. Hey, I, we, we don't think we've done one of these in a bit. Um, I am I am Stephen Hagen, and I am. Peter Christberger, also known as Hot I Am Reptar. And uh, in the room we have Mark Caterberg, our uh, wonderful host. And we are here at St. Lotus, and this is St. Lotus 14. So uh, we have a room full of uh, talented people. Oh, there's the friends at Gadget. <laughs> With the last three cards we actually talked about, and I think called almost appropriately. Yeah. Tireless Tracker into Atroxa. Yeah. So we might see Flash coming from that deck into the Gadgeteer, which I mentioned much the, the, earlier the, on. In the... Right. The, track, the tracker hurts Brandon, but uh, we got a room full of winners in there, right? This is one of the more skilled drafts. We have Elaine, who is a three-time or two-time champion. I would call them sharks. Elaine is a two-time champion, uh, returning from her, uh, Canada to visit her... Uh, St. Louis. Uh, we have returning last champion Adam Barner. Brandon has won one. Cody has won friends and family and came in second. Uh, Mason is a three time champion. Um, Kyle Vance has top four several of these as well. Dan top four one. So uh, we have a, a shark filled draft in there and it is cutthroat. And there went a treasure cruise to Mason. Uh, what are we? We don't have a lot of spells right now. We, we can't fill our graveyard. I mean, he's got discard. He's got, you know... He's got two discard spells, but not a lot of actual spells. Not a lot of things to just help you cherry. He's got discard a couple fetches. Yeah, but... We can get there. And he's got more to come. Removal. Yeah. And just like game refill. Yeah, but if you want... In Mason, we trust. I believe in I, him. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to disagree with you right. on that one, but we have Snapcaster Mage. And right. without having... So we know Ponder is gone, and we know Brainstorm is gone. So that leaves us with Preordain, Consider, Opt... A lot of these other spells. We pull up the friends at Gadgeteer. Whatever. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, there's got to be some. Uh, there's going to be some self mill going on here, given the Jace and the Snapcaster and the Treasure Cruise. And it's also, Grist something. is still yeah. likely to come up for him. Okay. So, he loves a Grist. Yeah. He's, he's he's smarting over the Green Sun for it, but uh, so friends at Gadgeteer is uh, a card that uh, I actually wondered in a draft recently and got it sniped out from under me. Uh, but it plays with his monoliths and makes infinite mana. So it yeah. acts as an index Zerda, but it gives you the extra that you get to investigate City to play with his academy. Yes. Like, this card is so good in this deck, and I think in the format as a whole. And, uh, and you just turn through it, your library. It just again. does quite a bit here. It only works with the salt monolith, true? Uh, yeah, it does not work with Grim. It does work only with, with the salt for the infinite mm -hmm. mana. You are correct. Because Grim's four, right? Done that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just break even. Yeah. So if you had something to make a it, now, if you were uh, you know trying to mill your had something to work on untap, it would get Miss Mirror Corp. <laughs> Miss Mirror Corp. Just mill yourself out. Exactly. And then cast out the Oracle. Exactly. <laughs> That's what he's doing. It's Ms. all Mirror coming Gorb. together. It's coming together. <laughs> so Voidwalker into Wheel, Dark Confidant. I mean, Voidwalker just so so like. Well, last time I played Green Black, I just won games off just turning Blood Wrecker sideways. It's just an ongoing threat. Mm -hmm. It's just, you don't have to do much. And he's got the Vampiric. He could also, with the Voidwalker, grab Helm like, to just have a single Silver Bullet combo. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't need much more than that. Yeah. I mean, he was talking about finishers having that uh, pairing as, a, you know, just there. Like, okay, I got Voidwalker out. I'm just going to grab this. Yeah, sometimes it can go wire to wire. Right. And then refilling his hand with, with, with Wheel 
um, yeah. you know, feels good. So If your opponent can't combo you back, it does take a while, love, but wire to wire is right. an opportunity. I don't love the wheel, but I, I get it, right? The value wheel. Mm -hmm. And I'm not capitalizing his cards, driving me a little, you know. <laughs> Neither is Jacob, though, so that's a... Right. I'll with the hard counter spell. All right, Sacred Foundry. So... I think Cody needs to shore up his mana a little bit. I love Cody's list, but I, I still didn't like the ending over the Taiga, which he then lost. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I feel on Cody's here, is that the mana feels a little short currently. Yeah, uh, like, if if there was one, like, I don't know what you want to call the, the movement across the draft, but if there was one left to right portion of the, of the draft that just went absolutely wrong for Cody, it was that round where... Cody took prismatic ending, and then out from underneath them were taken in the same run, uh, Taiga and Stomping Grounds. Yeah, almost assuredly he'll take a Jetmare's Garden at some point. Um, mm -hmm. He lost the, the Stomping Ground. Oh, Chrome Host Siege Shark. Oh, man. That is the... Uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, so this creates uh, little incubators. Yes. That you can then flip. Uh, yep. Not a lot of... So it's it, only off of non-creature spells that make incubator tokens, right? right. Yeah, Savannah fits in. Okay. Yeah, non-creature. Uh, yeah. So, you know, this actually you know works really well with um, uh, Academy, obviously, but which he doesn't have. Nope. Um, Cradle is still around, but we don't have a lot of creatures for Brandon, so right. we can't really take a look at that. Well, we can, but like, we just need to fill out the creature base at that point, so we right. can take Cradle soon, fill it out. My concern is that we have one, we have fast bond, and we have one wheel, and not a lot of good spells to um, power out or power up the seed shark. Right? We have ancestral, great force, mm -hmm. okay. Twister, fast bond. It's a lot of like ones and threes. Days, right. which is a two. Petty theft, which is a two. GSZ, that's a question. Like at least a one, right? Right. I, I would, if I. Brandon's a seat where I like to see more cantrips because even if you just chain a bunch of ones together, that's still pretty powerful. You just like one, 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 and then cradle, right? Like, flip to, them. yeah, flip a bunch of them or flip them over time. Um, you don't need to keep making fives with Seed Shark. It, it takes over. It can take over pretty quickly. Um, yeah. The so yeah, Mark is uh, bringing it up here the card that has seen some play. It's a yep. seven on thirty two. It's another know. shark. I, that's the other shark I was thinking of, but I just don't know how how. How often do you see this cast, not cycled? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I actually had both of them uh, in, a, in a deck as well oh. so at one point. Once. All right. Once upon a time. Oh, there's the Lorian. Okay. I like the once there, right? Uh, it, it is it, it, it is mana fixing. It digs for the creatures. The one, Actually, that once there is really, really good. Yeah. Uh, especially with Mason going into green. He loves mm -hmm. the once. I, I really like that once pick. A really good I trick. always forget about once yep. uh, all the time. Uh, the Lorian Revealed's very solid there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good look for that deck. Yeah, like, sure, that mana draws cards. Yeah, make sure that uh, Adam can't take it as a value play later on, because if anybody's going to be able to hard cast it, it's Adam with all, with the artifact oh, mana God, that yeah. Adam has and yeah. the Academy. Yeah. Right. Or Dan. Like, uh, yeah, but Dan's not blue, so it's not right there. So yeah. there's the path. Just the. Yep. Okay, so um, again, I've mentioned Troll of Kaza doing a bunch. Uh, have we seen Oldie Font been taken? Is that the white one? No, it's the the red one. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have. Generous Ent is the green one, and Eagles of the North is the white one. I would right, expect. Two of, yeah, two of fourteen. So. Yep. I would expect Oliphant to have been taken at like odd, more so as the third one, and obviously as the third one because it's eminently castable. And oh, wouldn't be bad. Cause, and um, uh, Jake's because you could sneak attack it in. On a, yep. in a quick thing. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's one of the reasons why I was thinking about it. Um, yeah. The Jun deck could also make use of it too, like as yeah. just a beater later on. Although that is really bad to flip the dark off it up. <laughs> yeah. Oops. But as they say, um, no, no guts, no glory. Just there's that. Um, oh, crap, I forgot the, the flavor text on Bob. Greatness at any cost. Greatness at any cost. Thank you. <laughs> one of my friends, that's Jaff, uh, has that on. Uh, a token just puts on the top of his deck when he's yeah. got Dark Confident out, which is great. It's any cost. All right. So, hmm. I would expect a couple yeah, more cantrips. Bob has fallen so far. It has, it has. I would expect Elaine to pick up a couple more cantrips just to fuel the Uro. Great card, but you do want to be able to... Get it back. Get it, get it, get it back. Um, 
that Teferi hero of Dominaria would have been pretty good for a lane, probably. Just yeah. Stick into this four color plan. Ledger Shredder, there we go. There's some. It's pretty good in there. Into, oh. uh, it, it's Ledger Shredder's underperformed for me in VRD, but I still think it's a very good card. Like, yeah. I, it. It can get there. Lily the Veil signifies the the possibility of the value reanimate somewhere in there. Give yourself a little bit of. We don't have the mind twist, and we don't have a lot of discard spells. Right. If we're Kyle, so he wanted some. He said he 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 wanted the Inquisition. Yeah. Uh, he he wanted some of that uh, hand hate. Yeah. Oh, I would assume so. Like taking Lily Veil basically signifies yeah. that you you wanted it. Um, just the, I don't want to say it's the next best option, but it is one of the best at this point. It's Without another, taking grief. Yeah, it's another fall. Yeah, and grief's still out there. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, let's check our top undrafted or top cards list. Um, as Mason waits to pick his grist. Um, all right, so we've got preordain at the top. Um, there it is, grist. A, oh, grist. Sorry, grief. Uh, right, a string of duels, reanimate, uh, mystical dispute, V click, Jace the mind sculptor. Some more lands. Ottawa balance. Uh, yeah, Bra I don't see Brandon taking balance. So yeah, I don't know balance doesn't here. seem like it's going to fit right now on right. the draft. That could be a pick for a lane later on. Yeah, and Lighten probably doesn't seem in this. I don't think anyone that's in white hmm. wants it. Crucible, yeah. Uh, I think Crucible is coming. I think we're just floating it. I think there are a couple players that can take Crucible. Um, Grease and Cram. Uh, I oh, uh, Brandon will take Brain Freeze. Mason with the breeding pool because the trap is gone, so that takes it out from underneath a lane. So now Elaine is out of, not out of fetchable duels. If but... Brandon does take the breach, uh, the, bre the the freeze will be the okay. the way to go. And Brandon okay. just likes the brain freeze anyway. So let's talk about this. Arkham's Astrolabe was just taken, and this card requires a snow pip. Yep. What are the rules on, <laughs> they on can, snow basics? They can use them. That's it. Yep. We, they, fi they, we, we finally <laughs> tweeted over. They they can use them. And you know what? It hasn't changed anything. Astrolabe gets drafted sometimes. Yep. And uh, by me, quite often. <laughs> and that's about it, right? You, you want to talk about a card that just shrinks the size of your deck overall? Astrolabe is yeah, somewhere love, on the top. I love the card. Few. It's so good with the Tinker. Like, this is the deck that wants it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, yes, but also every other deck that's four colors and have bad mana bases. Yeah, it. that's true. Like, yeah. <laughs> in this four-color convert... world, this, yeah. in this draft in particular, Astrolabe seems good across the and board. Currency right? Converter can shore up some of that, too, for those decks as well, because you can make treasure tokens off right. of Converter, right? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. In this draft, yeah. for sure, Astrolabe looked really, really yeah, good. So. I forgot about Astrolabe, honestly. Um, it, uh, I don't know what Argum needed you, all that Astro Loop for, yeah, but... You, you mentioned, Stephen, that uh, Once Upon a Time it was is outside of your purview a lot, similar for me as well, but it's because these cards have been so banned for so long in formats <laughs> that I play. I forgot they're actual cards that we can play yeah, in other formats. Once, I love Once. I, you know, my, my favorite Pioneer deck before I got banned is, you know, Once was a four. Oh, yeah, I played, uh, I, I, I didn't play, uh, yeah, I played Death Shadow with Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Why not? You know, shrink your mana base down and just cast once and effectively turn zero. Right after Pioneer hit, I was playing the the copycat deck that was so good, the Oko mm. copycat, and won a, won a couple win -a boxes and uh, <laughs> was rocking with that deck. And then uh, every card in that deck got banned one way or the other because that deck was ridiculous. <laughs> it was like once banned, Oko banned. Yeah. Atali. <laughs> that Atali is a very good sneak attack. That is a good sneak attack. I like that. And yeah. with the and the mana, he can just ramp that yep. with uh, his ramp like. That's a solid, solid pick. So I mentioned there. Channel and Sneak I, Attack working well together. I do yeah. not think we're going to see Channel in this deck now. We have too many colored pips yeah. on our Sneak targets. So with, with a Sneak, with a Tally, you can Sneak it and then flip it, right? Yes. Oh, that's hot. But you got to pay a lot of money to flip it. Yeah, sure. I mean. But yeah, you can certainly almost infect somebody out, because I think it's a is it nine power when you flip other it. No, Tally, other Tally, yeah. Primal Conqueror. No. <laughs> The cereal box art. Oh my god. <laughs> That's still the original one, I think. Yeah. It's the Conqueror one. Is the one it. There we go. Alright, so. Alright, so you gotta pay, yeah, like nine, nine. and two life to flip it, but. But it, it's. It's an 11 11. Yeah. Uh, not Infector, but. Whatever you wanna call it. Alright. Okay, so we, another bobble. We got, that's the hand bobble, right? Yep. Okay, okay so the deck bobble. I started alluding to this before. Uh, I saw a deck that people are working on. I don't think it's going to become a CEDH viable deck, but the new Fibblethip that allows you to plot cards from the top of your library. 
for their mana value basically means that you could just chain a number of zero cost or low cost artifacts together for a while. And I think that fiddle is good. I think it is as well. If you have top or some other ways to fiddle fart with the top of your library and make sure that you put a lot of those baubles on top or stack it, you can, in theory, put enough baubles on top to put them all in exile over a couple of turns and then just have a massive brain freeze turn. Right. Because yeah, like just plot, 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 brain freeze, yep. go. Or you just plot the brain freeze early on. Yeah, exactly. And then just when you get enough later, you're just like... You Jaws know, Because then now it's protected. They yeah. can't make you discard exactly. it. Exactly. Jaws theme intensifies. Yeah. Like. yeah, I think that fiddle tip's good. It is. I don't, I don't know if it's good enough for VRD, I, but it like, is. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm confident in it. You just have to like dedicate... Like, There's a lot that needs to happen for yeah. that deck to work. Is plot face up? Yes. Yeah. So, again, Jaws theme There's intensifies. There's a great... Uh, dress down very solid pick from Mason there. Uh, very very good card overall. Right, right after the Atali, you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Hey, there's the hey, grief. there's the grief that we've been talking about for a while. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what round are we in? Twenty something. Twenty, so a little bit late on the grief, but I think. No, oh, spot on twenty. We're coming yeah. around to twenty. Yeah. So, but not too bad. Not no. too bad, but yeah, I, I think it's really good in there. Um. This is just something that uh, dressed on sparked this memory. Uh, where are we on Dreadhorde Arcanist in this format? Comes and goes. Um, the the issue is like it's obviously great with like the recall, right? But mm -hmm. it's just like pumping it has been, you know, you're you're just not going to get much past the one drop. So yep. just, I, I've just not seen a lot of decks that are able to pump it reliably. Yep. Um, I've lost games to it, and then I've had a lot of games where it's out, and I'm like, all right, cool, I don't care. Yep. You know, I will point out that this dress down means that Stifle Knot is very alive. Yes. We lost the Uro, which is... Uh, okay, so here... Uh, I, I've been so entrenched in Legacy. We are getting back around now as Legacy players to, first na triumph. to naming our decks after really goofy things. And a couple months ago, I played oh. against... Slow clap for Dan. Love the Atari got... Sun Glory. Oh, yeah, the uh, the Boros Fiat. Yeah, which, um, which is so... He can turn to that so easily. Yep. There's a, there's a Demir Stifle Knot deck. Uh, in Legacy, it doesn't have a name. It's kind of been outmoded. It uses the, the Lazav, uh -huh. so it can copy the Dread from your graveyard. But now there's a Bant version that has a Stoneforge Mystic package and Uro to take advantage of that because Cryptic Code is a hell of a card. And that is uh, solidified enough in the Legacy metagame to have a name. It's called Kinder Surprise. Because when you flip the Dreadnought off of Cryptic Code... <laughs> Uh, Crypto is interesting. I, I won't be surprised if Crypto Code gets drafted in a VRD. I don't, you know, it's not gonna. I don't think if shake Mason, the world. But if Mason wanted to dedicate the Stifle Knot, though, that is a way to do it. Crypto yeah. Code, Illusionary Mask, Stifle, Trick Bind, like all that, all that hoo ha. Yeah, That's too much. Like that Athari and Dan's deck is sick. Like you know, yeah. uh, Cody is solidly in Naya, so Crypto Code is out of the question for him. But that Stoneforge Mystic is in his deck. Um, no. That was the direction we could have seen that go if things had sh shaken out differently. Elaine with the that's the Bant land, correct? Yeah, Bant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we almost. Yeah, yeah fair. I tell you, sometimes you want the creature version because, and especially like with the green mentioned. sun. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes you want to do the turn sideways, or you yep. want the creature version, and that makes perfect sense. Uh, Brandon loves his urn orb anyway, so I totally you know see yep. the orb coming in here somewhere, uh, which makes me wonder: Does Brandon because it's all out there? Brandon also loves a winter orb, and does that mean Brandon grabs zero Urza sum game? And Urza at some point. Urza has gone. Urza went. Yeah, Urza's Urza is in Adam's list. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I didn't see it go, but um, I'm pretty sure Urza went. Cradle is still on the map. Correct. Kate Jake. Yep. Can we, we verify Urza went for Adam, please? It did. Okay. okay. It went for somebody. I, I think yeah, it, it did. I see it now. Yeah, it's above Shieldred. Yeah. Man, that deck's gonna be nasty if if Adam picks up a. A force draw spell. So if you're Cody, what do you take? Um, I take land and uh, three drop Thalia. Three drop Thalia sounds nice. Got Skyclave. Um, We're not losing any of our equipment. Trying to so think, think that's of are all the uh, are all the undercities gone? The Undercity? Uh, venture into the Undercity, whatever. No, like he can do... Oh, the, all the initiative creatures, no. He, uh, oh, no, right. Correct. Nice. Uh, he can do the like the uncommon ones. Uh, the, well, the, the green one's still around, which he has opportunity. Oh, yeah, he, he can do the green Undermountain one. Adventure. Yeah, Undermountain Adventure. That seems good. Yeah. Um, I actually like Phyrexian Metamorph there, too, for him. Like, as oh, like, yeah, you could go back-to-back -back and take, like you were talking about, uh, you take Undermountain Adventure and you take Phyrexian Metamorph, and now yeah. you have two initiative creatures. 
but he's trying to you know get a little. He's not doing much with his creatures. Or like, copy like, your Arcana no of Amaria. So he's going to shut a few people down with some Null Rod action. Mm-hmm. I mean, he only has the Lotus, so it's not the worst. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's fine on that. I was saying when I said Null Rod, I was thinking of... Uh, oh, Contemporary Ooh. Spirit. That is a pick in the face of Sneak Attack. Yeah. Also, um, not just in the face of Sneak Attack, it also st- stops... GSE? Um, potential, no, for uh, if Dan was going to do uh, Displacer... Kitten uh, stuff. Uh, no, Displacer, I'll draw, uh, draw the Displacer, displacer uh, Containment Priest combo. It stops Green Sun Zenith. Yep. It stops yeah. a bunch of other things, too. Yeah. Yep. It stops Athari from coming back into play. Um, so, I, yeah, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, Brandon, um, also pick up a Crucible. Things. Okay. Balance. Yeah, Dan with the Balance. That seemed... Yeah, we were wondering if that was going to go anywhere. I don't know if that's a realistic... I mean, so with Dan, like, it, it leaves Artifacts alone. Yeah, so it leaves your mana, but you're a creature-based deck. I guess that it does allow you to, to pay two balance, and then how much does Athari cost? Is it f- uh, five? Yeah. Okay. You also have to have, tap, uh, have untapped uh, rogues to do it. Mm. So balance. Uh, but still, like if you are, you know, if you have the initiative and you're wiping the board off. Yeah, like, it, it leaves, it, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just too good to leave on the table, even if it doesn't get played. It's just. This is a card I was wondering about. If we would see opposition agent. Yeah. It. Um. It's not great in his deck. I like it in decks that are going to have more counter magic because you're leaving the man open anyway. Yep. Um, he's going to be tapping out. I don't love it there, but yeah, it's a very. I do like the mastermind though. It is, yeah, it's an odd, re- an oddly reactionary card for a deck that plays at sorcery speed. Yeah, like, it is like bow master. I mean, I've it's pl- very projected. I've played it in his deck a lot, mm-hmm. and that, and it's underperformed in his deck. A Snuff lot. out. Destroy target black creature. Non black. Lose- non black creature. Sorry, yeah, you lose four life. Yep. Yep. If you control swamp. Which we will because we have shield. We are demir artifacts basically. Right. Fairy mastermind. I think just a, it's a like good pickup. Yeah. yeah. That's Shota. Right? Yeah. Shota Yasuoka's card? Yep. Yes. Yeah. No, no, Yuta... Yuta Takahashi's. Takahashi. Yep, okay. I wonder if we'll see Nathan the, Stoyer. The new card, is that his Nathan, one that's coming out this year? Yeah, Nathan Stoyer was out in uh, Thunder Junction. It's a X2 oh. or... Sorry, it's a Star 2 or Star 3. That was that in Thunder Junction? Yeah, the card's good. Power for the number of cards you've drawn this turn? Yeah, the card's good. I don't know if we'll see it, but it's very good. Yeah. It's like Flying Prowess, something like that. Well, effectively, Prowse, because right. it's the number of cards you've drawn. Right? Yeah. Okay. Night Autumn could be anything there. I don't... It's, you know. Yeah, we're going back to Value Land right. for this deck. I mean, but Night Autumn, there's just a million cards that do the same thing. Yep. That you don't need to spend a, a pick this high caliber. Yeah, I'm I'm in a spot... If I'm if I'm in the spot, right, I'm drafting eight, and I know that Gaius Cradle is on the board, I'm probably going to look into an amount of creatures to power up Cradle so I don't lose Cradle and then take it soon. Yeah. Because I don't want to lose it to Brandon, who I think is the neck, or Cody, both of whom are playing creatures and spells that could utilize Cradle. Uh, or Adam. Yeah, Dan could do I don't, Dan or Cody could do the Mind yeah. Sensor. I don't know if a lot of people have watched LSV draft Retrofitter Foundry Academy Cradle enough to know, and that's not to like be demeaning to people, but it's just like this weird thing that can happen. No, there is a thing where on uh, in the Discord where I've noticed that people that there's some people, a lot of people that watch the LSV stuff enough yeah. a lot. Yep. And then they, so they're coming with different thoughts. And yeah. Everything cause and there's also the value rub because I also watch a ton of Caleb Durward and mm. people will overlap from LSV's chat into Caleb and they're like, yeah, but LSV does this. And Caleb's like, I'm not LSV. I don't care. I don't, yeah, I'm not LSV. So GTFO. <laughs> like, I draft the way I draft. Snuff out, solid pick there. Oh, for sure. sure. It, that is a, a lovely card right now. We still have Odawara floating, which is... Yeah, and there's I, a lot of lands at the top here at this point. Vendillion click, V-click. That one, that I can easily see a lane. I mean, it's just solid. It's a very lane card. Like, That's uh, fair. And she has Narset. She doesn't have the Crocus mm-hmm. to go with it. Yeah. Um, she actually has locked me out with um, Narset, um, Crocus, and Vendillion click before. Well, the, the reason I mention is if it's good enough is because the Crocus is already in the Boros. Right. Or yeah, yeah. The Boros she doesn't have the Crocus, Anna, but... Yeah. I mean, it's still just a value... Yep. Oh, if we take out... We, so you mentioned uh, 8C taking all the goblin token makers, mm-hmm. taking that, those, and Cradle. Hmm. You just get out. Get lost. Um, what is that card? Get lost. Get lost, yeah. Such a good removal as well. All right, okay. K command for a little bit. Of, you can get your Void Walker back. Yeah, it's just good. A little discard, a little yep. bit of... It's just very versatile. Cards, a little bit of everything. Yeah. I think cards are underdrafted. Um... Yeah. Get lost. Destroy target creature. Oh, yeah. We've seen this a bunch of online drafts as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Enough so that it's been printed out. Yeah. So we got our key. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
We still have no new cards. So no cards that need to be printed. Interesting. I know Cody was considering some new cards, but I think that he was going to be in black for that, and he didn't end up going oh. it, So Both Cody and Jacob are in a spot where they can take broadside bombardiers. Sneak attack in bombardiers, sneak attack in Atali. Deal your damage and then fling the Atali. Yep, there's, there's the circle. <laughs> Do you just want to draft for both Brendan and Mason I sitting mean, right I, here and I sit can't. at their machines? I just I mean, finish it out. I know what bro- cards Brandon is taking here. I mean, it's like, take some stuff, some channel. Like, I don't know how you do it because, like, two out of the four times I've been in the seat to watch Brandon draft, he drafted some goofy Planeswalker stuff, <laughs> like Naya Walkers with uh, Dovin Bond and, like... And he's in Blue Hill. The, the Sarkin, Sarkin guy that animates all your walkers? Yeah, I was at the oh. Chicago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Brandon will draft open though, so he's in blue. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I, I like I kind of get Mason because when I was going back and doing like Mason's his... actually one. Of, I I get Mason on some things, but he is like he's ver- he moves around enough that it's. Well, I, I used to bring a notebook with me of like yeah. all the the notes I'd taken on a bunch of VRDs leading into my first one, and like Mason's draft in every one of those was very very similar. So Mason yeah. like tracks really well. Aside for that one time. I think it's my first or second VRD in the seat where he went mono blue tings. Yeah. Just like... I like the Revoker. And just ranched. There. It's a solid Revoker pick. Solid, yeah, Fracture Revoker. Yeah, okay. I'm not pithing needle with legs is never a bad call. No. Like, and you're not going to be pithing needle with fetch land, so why the heck not? I wonder... Oh, I wonder if Adam's going to take Bull's house. So... Yep, I was going to say, yeah, does Cody... Lost. I was like, does Cody take the Nissa here and take it from Brandon? And, and it's like, yes, he does. <laughs> it's not like we're getting to a spot now with Cody where I'm, I'm starting to question the Stoneforge Mystic. Mm. It just doesn't seem to fit. He may not run it. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's fine. Like, um, you have it. You if you you had it for a minute. You take a pivot, and it's fine. It just means that Dan just lost package, it. Package though. You just put yeah. one other card with it. Yeah. The, and there are there are a number of good options. And with Water this, it's not like you can't cast like those that really easy anyway. Like the, but, but, you know. Yeah. Like but anyway, that's a deck that would have liked balance though. Fiery confluence, huh? Ooh, mm-hmm. it's. But if you're Cody, I think losing the balance is actually one of the biggest things because you can't just jam all your walkers, then balance everything, and leave the walkers behind. Right. So fiery deals one to each creature, deals two yeah, to each opponent. Yeah. Can we bring a fiery confluence because it's got like eighteen modes? Destroy target artifact. So. Uh, this card not drafted very often, um, and but he's got the mana that it can probably work. The double reds a little. Yep. I mean, just did a double red and two. I think it's, I was thinking it was three, so it's been eight out of thirty-two. Yep. You can deal six damage to each opponent, which is good enough. But the like the destroy artifact thing. Is oh, that's right. You can't choose the same more broken ones. So yep. three. So okay. Yeah. I mean, it's... And it's not going to happen in this deck. But if you wanted to get really spicy, you could play the new Riku from Outlaws of Thunder Junction that pays you off for picking the same mode multiple <laughs> times on a modal spell. <laughs> Modal VRD. Yep. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, Lane is in Teamer. Lane could play Loot. <laughs> From the... <laughs> Give me my phone over there. Yeah, Key to it all. I think that, that's the name yeah, of the yeah, yeah, Loot. Yeah, yeah the, the one, two. You have enough different permanent types, but yeah, I think we're just wildly out of, be, out of, out of touch for that one. My daughter had a musical tryout, so I had to see if I got any oh, texture over yet. Good luck so. her. Community Theater. Ooh. All right. Lane in the normal. Uh, in the tank spot? The lane. No, it's, not, it's not really the tank with her, right? It's just methodical. <laughs> okay, so Lane takes dig. All right. All right. Bitter, Bitter trial. Okay, removal spell. Uh, is that the one? Discard or sack? That's the so payment. The additional cost to cast a spell, discard or pay three life. Okay, yeah. yeah, there we go. Oh, pay three life. Okay. Yeah. What's it, what, there's one that asks you to discard or sacrifice a creature. Is it bone shards? Bone shards. Yeah, that's you pay but, five or yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which can be oddly the sack a creature can be oddly relevant depending on what you're doing. Right. Uh, Sneak something in, sacrifice it to bone shards to clear after combat, and then it allows you to reanimate it back. So without the green sun, I don't know if Mason does grist or not. I still think he does, especially with the. Um, uh, we are sh- dig. Yeah, we're showing a light, or light splash with both the fairies at this point. So at some point in time, V click. Like I would actually think that we need to start moving in on lands that tap for all white mana. Because tundra is still floating, and yeah. Elaine is continuing to take white cards. That's true. Um, that is true. Tundra's still out there. Yeah. So I. Everybody drafts differently, and I would start. Uh, 
the phrase, eating my vegetables mm-hmm. and like making sure I could cast my spells at this point. You've got stranded and flat, so you may be thinking I can just get the planes and. I gotta try. Yeah, I gotta try on that way. But but even that, yeah, the well, planes is fine. I like the triumph, just look good. Uh oh. I don't think this is a contentious pick for me. So I don't think there's, you know, I'm kind of mega mind this pick. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good cards in the spot, and it's like, what do you want to stop floating? So I don't think Grist is off the table at all. I wouldn't want to lose it to, uh, to yeah. Kyle, which might be the, the thought now. Yeah, I guess it's just a question of without the green sun, is it, or is there enough value for him and everything? Yeah, being able to pull it up that way. Adam's not in a spot where we're going to be looking for secondary keys, right? We're not going to be looking at the fairy so. time route. Or not, yeah. not the fairy time route. Unless She's he takes monoliths. Yeah. I mean, he, he has a monolith. He has both of them. Both of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe that. So you could. So there's a Tezzeret the Seeker. That's the, the five yeah. mana value. Yeah. Okay. Seeker would be pretty solid. Three double I mean, blue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have the. Is Forensic Gadget Share an, art, an artifact as well? Is what? Is Forensic Gadget Share an artifact? No, I do not okay. believe so. Okay, Mason with the Vindicate. So we're all right, we are just very solid removal. And re- saying we are staying yeah. with white. Yep. Okay. Adam with Beb. So you saw Hydro Blast early on from Elaine, and right. we, now we have Blue Elemental Blast and from both, Adam. Both the red and the Pyro are gone. gone. There's Cradle. All right, so the Cradle goes. There we go. To Jacob. Yeah, I think we were lucky that Cody didn't take it. And with the Yavamaya gone, we have to take Cradle now. Right. And like a Sylvan carry did. Okay, uh, that's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. But you know, can't like them all. Yeah, it's also it, you know, like it's a, people are people are showing removal, so it's an un, it's uh, an unkillable creature, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the, that's, just a, that's just a lot of mana dorks. I, and I mean, I get if you're gonna, I mean, you do have the fury that's protecting you, but uh, the, the, to not get yeah. blown out. So, so. Yeah, if you go uh, forest, one drop. Cradle. Oh, you know what? Two oh. drop. Oh my God, he's got enough mana dorks. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? You could turn, you could turn three sneak. He's got enough mana dorks. Is he gonna do it? Rackadraga. Oh, this thing. I, you I drafted it in Legacy. <laughs> Legacy oh, really. Already. I thought you were yeah. bringing up Onzarog, Onzarog the Quake Mole. No, each creature you control with a mana ability gets plus two, plus two. Whenever a creature you control with a mana ability mm-hmm. attacks, untap it. Whenever you cast a spell with at least seven mana was spent to cast it, untap target creature. It gains plus seven, plus seven, and trample until end of turn. Yeah. Uh, we also have enough. We uh, don't have enough creatures with power, but like I mentioned, Moloch, and you kind of poo pooed me on that. No, Moloch's good. You, you just had mentioned when we were way up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, yeah. What is the. the okay. Have people picked Moloch? And yes, it has. Uh, okay. The first one I remember was actually uh, here um, oh, yeah, from down Brandon. Too. Yeah, okay. so um, Cody, uh, both Cody or Dan, or not Dan, because Dan's not green, but yeah. Cody could definitely take it. It's a miserable uh, sneak. It's good with uh, like the fast mana stuff that Dan has, so that's yep. why I mentioned it there. But. Got it, yeah. Maelstrom Pulse from Mason. So Man, right. he is just... I'm. Well, I mean, it, honestly, though, that makes sense. Like, this... Outside of Adam, this looks like fair magic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a fair magic draft. We are almost now pivoting into Abzan splashing blue. Yeah. As Mason. Um, outside... And, I mean, I guess Brandon's the closest of maybe he's going to be fair magic, maybe he's yep. not. We don't know. Um... But, like, outside of... Ovar the All Form. Okay. Interesting. Oh, man. There's, that generally means some shenanigans, That's, right? That's, yep, exactly what I'm saying. I don't know... Is it Ovar, comma? A, O-V-A-R yep. or E-R? O, O-V-A-R. Ovar. It's never been picked, so it's not showing up. All right, to Scryfall we go. All right. Here you go. Uh... Yeah, that is a card that, as far as I know, just does shenanigans. Yeah. Why is that not? Is it on or O R V A R? That was O R. Or V R. Try that O R V A R. Or just the all form. Oh, yeah, let's just do that way.
Orvar. That's okay. probably why we have it wrong in the. All right, let me try this. Drafted one time. Drafted one. So change it. Whenever you cast an internal sorcery, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, <coughs> create a token that's a copy. So, you know, if she starts targeting her own stuff, she can mm -hmm. start chaining. Um, yep. There's does bomb. that combo... Nothing yet. With No, but with um, the dual caster mage pieces. I think so. She's ran that before. Okay. She's ran dual caster... And she has... Um, Oh, we don't have Zarda here, but yeah. She's ran dual caster, uh, heat shimmer type stuff. Before. Okay, yep, yep. So, um, so yeah, so she might. <laughs> so Elaine is often in the past like backdoored into some combos with yep. that. So, right. and then we have broadside bombardiers into Frexy metamorph. Oh. Okay, nice. Uh, uh, See, part of the reason why I know Brandon so well is Brandon and I are kind of the same person. Okay. When it comes to, like our draft strategies have just kind of merged <laughs> into one entity, and you know, with like some slight variations. Yeah, when two become but, like, one. Fifty percent of us are the same person at this point. So, uh, oh yeah, that, that's Indeed. that's solid. I was actually just wondering about that uh, card and was gonna bring it up, and that makes perfect yeah, sense in there. Me, you're, you're, oh yeah, you yourself. Or... Uh, just wonder about that card, and that makes perfect sense in there, right? So, Inti yep. uh, gets bigger, that mm -hmm. you get a little draw, and get you a little bit of uh, advantage as well, right? Or yep. discard, get you a little Pumping bit. Pumping out some damage before we get to our Planeswalkers, which, in theory, could, yeah. could and should finish off. I mean, the game. big thing on the Inti is the play until next turn, and there's yep. the Calder complete, yep. right? So we're staying with it. Wait, okay. That makes sense. makes sense. Yeah. So, okay, I don't know which card it is, and this is like a, a bit of a a tangent and funny story, but also relevant to Elaine's draft. There's a card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It's a, I believe it's not a creature, it's a modal spell. And it allows you to copy a triggered ability. Mm -hmm. So the question on tw on uh, Twitter that's floating around was, what happened? people are now realizing that Animate Dead is a ridiculous card that's just templated poorly and has never been actually updated right. um, in Oracle to make sense. And somebody said, what happens when you copy the triggered ability on Animate Dead with this spell? The triggered ability that they're talking about is when Animate Dead... T um, attempts to reanimate the right. creature because there are a number of triggers on anime dead and Elliot Raff L4 just responded with LOL because anime dead is a card that we play on vibes alone not right. on rules so what happens when you do stuff like that with, with Elaine's deck when you start copying uh, like Orvar, Orvar triggers with this spell like you mentioned Heat Shimmer so there's right. Elaine could be um, breaking our rules today well yeah could, could be hustling here yeah. like respect your elders into some weird goofy combo stuff with new cards right. that are just not templated to work with old stuff. And start starting to copy you know, like the like, uh, Heat Shimmer triggers yeah. and yeah. Blue Caster Mage triggers. Elaine, and Elaine's a very experienced judge. She's just going to be trying to judge for us all, right? Yeah. Like, you know. Uh, so we got some mom action. I like the bombardiers there. Yep, so, yeah, so now we're just kind of going down the curve. Like, I would still hope... Uh, like, I think... Uh, not matter of shaper. What's the uh, reality smash? I might be out of question. Yeah, that's a little too far up on the curve. I think we might be filling in the like one to three slot. I yeah, would no, like to see I a mean, thought not see her. I slot. still want to see a thought not see a reality smasher and Eldrazi displacer. I think this yeah displacer is definitely good. I don't know like for me reality smash like Did, you have all the fast mana so it's not like right. too far out of the question. But. It, it's only yeah no it's, it's not like he can so fast cast it and yeah. the thing about displacer is that resetting your initiative creatures and still back the initiative. Oh yeah no for sure yeah, that that's why exactly. uh, that's why I think matter. Um, yeah. Uh, Displacer is a very good card here. I don't like Matter Reshaper. I think it's mediocre. No, that I, yeah. I, I that that card is poo poo. Nobody. Yeah, Brandon it likes it a lot, but I, I know I'm not a big. If fan. you're an if you're an Etron player, you could definitely jam it. That's fine. Right. I don't think it's but like when you look at the the white weenie deck, there are a lot of options in the one to three slot. Even so if you wanted to go, what is the new? Uh, what did I just do? There we go. Okay. I know there's a new one that plays well with um, dual caster um, from. A new. A new what? A new spell from um, OTJ. OTJ that does basically the same thing as Twin Flame does. Makes a copy. It might be the one on the the spell that I was talking about. That it copy, might be. It could copy a creature or a trigger, and that's why people were interested in it. Right. I, like I said, it was just this the story that comes about anecdotally from like playing anime dead is just now in the spotlight because of legacy. Tempt with reflections. That actually, if that's a source or an instant, that is exactly. Nope, that's not the, the one I was thinking about was a red spell. So this one's choose target creature you control, put a token into the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. Each opponent may put a token into the copy that's a copy of that creature. Each opponent. No, uh, it's not the one I was thinking of. So there was another one. 
The one I was thinking of was a red spell. Okay, yeah, the one I'm thinking of was a red spell too. Okay. Um, At this point, I might just hit Mythic Spoiler and start. <laughs> or Scryfall, or yeah. TJ at instance. Um, OTJ. Because we have Lutri, so we can at least start casting or copying spells that way. Right. Come on, man. For a lane. But you, yeah, uh, it. Molten duplication. So it's actually not OTJ. It's uh, the big score. Ah, uh, which is still I mean, right. It's still OTJ. I just pull it up. No. So Molten Duplication uh, creates a token that's a copy of target creature, artifact, or creature you control. Ex mm. a copy of target artifact, creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to other types. It gains haste until the turn, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Okay. So um, you, it's another one that if you or Vara, you could just be making big, 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 go, go, yep. go, go. And only takes miscalc. Okay. So mm. Needle. And reanimate. So Mason has. Okay, so Mason to reanimate. Okay. Yep. Trying, which again, you now Gris tracks to, to make sense here. Yep. Um, Value reanimate. He's also got the discard, make you discard your thing, I'll reanimate to show your yard. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Reanimate is a nice value card, which is weird. I just love value reanimate. Um, so, taking the miscalc out of Elaine is that's the second miscalc effect because we have divert. Right. Taking it early on. Um, still don't exactly know what we're doing with uh, <coughs> miscalc here, but. Eh, I mean, it's just a solid counter spell and it cycles, right? I mean, I guess it's. The... We're not miscalc, sorry, Orvar. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I've played enough Commander to know that Orvar is never a fair card. Correct. Right? It's always up to something. There's a lot more draft to be had anyway, so yeah. there's always the opportunity. Like, who else is going to take Twin Flame or Dual Caster right, right, right now? Right, right, right. So you could just take it and float it. So Elaine was the one that kind of, and then later John Ryan Hamilton, uh, or John Ryan sheared it up. We our experiment with allowing the conspiracy cards like Ether yeah, Searcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine was the one that broke that. Okay. And <laughs> with Dual Caster, with Twin Flame, yeah. and the, it was one of the cards that it, it tutored up yep. or whatever. So that makes sense. All right, so there's the C, and, and then another, another Manador. So many Manadorks, man. Yeah. I mean, I guess you want them for the Crater Hoof, but yeah. at this point, I want the Ragged Dragon. If I'm him, like, it's just an extra value. I don't. I, I like the idea of ramp, but this is not drawing another card. I would almost like to see a Utopia Sprawl so that mm -hmm. we can actually churn through our deck here because Wheel of Fortune is gone. There's Rafaelis, so again, yeah, so that's you know that tracks. Yeah, but we are we are so reliant on our draw step right. in this deck that I am just worried that I'm not going to be able to do anything. Right. I think Rafaelis is massively underdrafted. You know, uh, obviously you want the uh, Yabamaya, uh, but we, we've already lost that. Right. Portal, very value. You know, if he doesn't main deck it, it's an amazing board target for the Tinker. Yep. Uh, if, if he doesn't go Blystone, just goes value Tinker targets. I, I love it. That's, that's fine one too. Of my favorite yeah. things in the world. Yeah. Um, but Portal's bonkers in this draft, right? Like <laughs> in this fair Magic draft, like Portal is so good. You could be. God, I I really disliked being the person that cast Show and Tell into somebody else's Portal of Phyrexia. But if we are the person casting Show and Tell and showing in our Portal, that's yeah. also really funny. It's good times are had by me. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to have a good time now, and then on my next turn when I take that thing from your graveyard. I, 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 I'm loving Varner's yeah. deck here. Like, um, Chim on the Inner Sun, not really worth it. Uh, oh, there's Troll of Casa Dune. Nice, nice. So that that's that tracks with the value reanimate yeah. package. It's it's ramp. Yeah. Uh, Scrubland is still open. Uh, Underground Sea went. Tundra is unfetchable, but we have some options. Is um, he's, he, yeah? There's a it's Kazad Kazad. Uh, I think you can go in there. Bayou gone? No, Bayou is not gone. Yeah. But wait, uh, I don't think it's gone. That is an attractive talk. That is an attractive it's card. Doom. There, there, there it is. I do not think Bayou has been taken. All right, let's go. Look. Uh, there it is, second row middle. Yep, Bayou has not. So we shall have Tundra, yep. we shall have Steam Vents, Hollow Fountain, Watery Grave, Bayou. Um, Shellbox. Meltdown. That's not, okay. That's, that's just a solid meltdown there. I mean, one of the better... Artifact, screw you cards. It costs X. It's not free. Literally. Yeah, but it's so... I mean, but... It, oh. X is great, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a lot of zeros that way. Followed by the energy flux. <laughs> get... Add, two cards I play in my sideboard on Legacy. 
Gut. Oh, man, Gut is so good. Gut is such a powerful card, especially for this deck. I keep forgetting about it. Gut. Which one is Gut? It's the only Trusol. card named Gut, I think. No, because of stupid online stuff. Oh. There, because of Arena, there's a Got lot it. of cards you basically, named you Gut. Can, yeah, you can sack something and make a th and you make a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, right, you can sacrifice another artifact or creature if you do create a 4-1. Okay, okay. It was a 4-1? Yeah, 4-1 four yeah, four one uh. with Menace. Yep. Because a lot of Baldur's Gate skeletons were 4-1 yes, Menace. Exactly. That's yeah, the... okay, yeah. You just, yeah, it's really difficult to block in Limited. The, the cards, the, the skeletons yeah. that it pumps out. Good. She's a hell of a lady. <laughs> yeah, no, because of uh, Arena, there's uh, different versions of Gut, because they, oh, they, they, okay. they converted all those, a lot of those cards in Arena to those ones that you got to pick when you cast it. Got it. And, uh, and so there's yeah. like all these other that's a versions of Gut, where they change their color. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's miserable. So, uh, what is the... Uh, it's from Masks. It is effectively a free spell to destroy oh, all artifacts. Um, Hang on. I want to say it's, it's not trample. I can't, I can't talk. I can't talk. Alright, so... Leyline of the Void from Brandon. That... Mm, interesting. We could see Helm. We're just a, a two-card... Two-card Monty here, or Brandon's just looking to stop some people from doing their thing. Uh, it could, could be to stop somebody else's two-card Monty, or it could just be to stop a reanimator package coming out of Mason, if Mason did go a little bit further. With that, uh, I don't really see much else. So there's a Snapcaster value train from Mason as well. Um, that I don't think really plays much against that. Uh, Sunbaked Canyon, the Horizon Land from... Cody. What did Cody say? Uh, Sunbaked Canyon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're... It gives him a little draw. Gives, you know, yeah, it's better. It's lack on. Exactly. Better than, better than the, the pain land. Right. Because you, you don't need the color. Outside of... Uh, outside of Minsk and Boo, he's a little light on draw. No. So. so, okay. What is... I was asking. So, it's a sorcery from Masks. Uh, I think you can sacrifice two mountains. It's got an elephant in the art. Destroy all artifacts. Mm, I don't know that one. Okay. I don't know. I got a, I've got a, a couple copies of it for play because it is a very it costs nothing, so you. So Brandon has this habitual problem of drafting Leyline of the Void when he's not in black, <laughs> and I don't like in his brain. You know, I guess he he gets for it whatever, uh, but he does this a lot. So I I was musing on that as you walked out of the room if that was for his own two card Monty. Or... Oh, I do like the quest enjoyed there from Cody though. So that was we discussed that previously. You brought that thing up earlier, Peter and. That's a good spot for it from Cody. Feels about right. I wasn't sure if it's gonna work out because it does require non uh, non green spells, and I didn't yeah. know how how deep we were gonna go into non green. But, but honestly, even just the red one, is, you know, part and then just a little bit on the body uh, feels pretty good, yeah. right? I think the the important part of that card is the red side is an instant. Right. I mean, he's got Bone Crusher. He's got Loras. He's got Stoneforge. He's got quite a bit of non green, right? Like yeah, actually, sure. green's his mostly his his splash over red and white, but you know. Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about it growing out, uh, growing out of hand. Yeah. For for uh, for for others, um, it was mainly like I said, how much green were we going to see out of Cody's deck? And I think this is just going to be a fine threat, especially if it picks up some equipment. Right. Like it doesn't have to be that big to pick up something. Uh, we yeah. talked about it before. Well, it's not non green because equipment doesn't do anything because it's only white, blue, black, and red spells. Yeah, but if right. like so, it doesn't have to grow. I'm just saying is like you could cast like two or three spells that are outside green in front of it, make this right. a three three or a four four, and then yeah. you know, put a GTA on it or right. something. It's gonna get it's gonna get yeah. Good. The uh, you know I don't think it's going to, but I actually you know we've discussed it online. A lot of people are down on it. I think Lost GTA is still very playable. Uh, the untapped land aspect that of is, it in particular that is actually the part of that spell that I think is the most important um, basically having another candelabra of Taunos ooh robber man I love robber the rich yeah I love robber very good card sorry I'm looking up the spell what the hell robber of pulverize the rich. Is two mountains? okay you may sa you may sacrifice two mountains instead of paying pulverize's mana cost destroy our all artifacts I've never seen that card oh, really yeah this is a sideboard card in 
Extended when that that was a good format. I, I don't into I, I, I don't I never played Mask Extended. I played Extended after Mask. Mask was during my time away from the game. So oh, so I, I started playing after Masks, okay. but I started playing Extended once Onslaught hit, and they rotated the fetches out of. Uh, sorry, right. not the fetches. They rotated the duels out of Extended. Right. Well, I, that was when I yeah. That's when I. But I don't remember that. That wasn't in Extended when I was there, or at least played all the time when I was there. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. That's the card I would have liked to have I seen. I loved Extended, but... That's the card I would have liked to have seen instead of Meltdown, because it costs nothing but the two but two mountains. And yeah, you have... but if you don't have the mountains, I don't know, that's rough. You like... have Red and Six. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, like, on on two, you could blow away all of Adam's board. Right. Right? But you could with Meltdown as well, depending on what's out there, but if it's a lot of... If, if the monoliths are out there, you can't get those when you have Meltdown, but if you, right. if you pulverize... Yeah, um, I think Red Mountains are his, like... His splash. His splash yeah. at this point. Too, he has to get so. the, does he have the, the taiga? He's got the taiga. No, yeah. yeah, he has a taiga. And the bad lens. Yeah. So, yeah. His yeah. mana base is solid. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, he could. He could, yeah. yeah. Uh, there could also be another spell, like you said. You didn't know that card. Like, there could be an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just a blind spot. Or just don't even know it. Yeah, I, I did not know that card existed. Yeah, so Robert the Rich, like we were talking about, very good card. Like, yeah, I love Robert. Robert's, Robert's an <laughs> ongoing VRD joke for us because. Um, when we our first kind of preview show where we talked about that set, yep. I said Robert was one of my top one of my top cards, yep. and Mark was like, "That's that's idiotic. It's dumb." And then since then, Robert gets drafted a lot, a lot and yeah. every time he gets drafted, I'm like, "Ah, oh! there it is." <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, oh no, Triumph. Okay. She, uh, Can we bring okay. that up? Which one? Which yeah, it's, uh, that's a uh, Just Guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That, that's gonna allow. Lane's not afraid of some trap land. She's not playing. No, we games. talked about that. We, right. we well, and, that and this, case. I mean, today just does, this is not. There's the foundry. Interesting. Okay. I don't know if I like that, but he's got the saga. So that's that. That right. was the other deck. Retrofitter foundry could go into yeah. it was either this deck or Adam's deck, right? right. Um. The. The thing is, I think tap lands hurt less in this draft because this draft does not look amazingly fast. No. Right. They, like. There is no red deck. Right. There are gruel decks. Or even like just decks. the fast combo. Like, like yeah. In, like the only really combo deck so far, other than maybe Elaine's package, whatever she's going to backdoor yeah. into here, um, is Adam. And like it, you know, you're losing that combo. You're losing that combo. There's no yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Tinker on one doesn't care about your yeah. ETB tapped or untapped. Land. Right. Exactly. You know, it cares about whether or not you have zero mana interaction in your hand. Right. Right. Okay, so going back to Brandon, uh, the Leyline of the Void, like, do you think he would actually take Helm? Yeah, he often does, and even if he boards it, like, okay. it's a, uh, he, he, I can see him doing it. Okay. Uh, he, I don't like it, but he does it a lot. Like, he, yeah. he'll out of nowhere take a Leyline quite a bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but, and we want to see Brandon flex into, oh, okay, in Tomb. All right, so Mason... Mason, so so earlier Mark was saying somebody needs a flex and reanimate package. Okay. Mason's like, okay, cool. This reanimate package is open, I'm, uncontested. I want to remind people, Entomb doesn't just get creatures. Entomb puts any card in your graveyard, and yeah. that means life from the loom. Yeah. Not to say that Mason picks it up, but that is often something people forget. Thought monitor. Okay. Draw some cards. Yep. Now we're in the A cast mode, which brings up yeah. the conversation about Kappa Cannoneer. Uh, Woodfall. Yeah. Woodfall Prime. Woodfall Prime is. Now we're getting back yeah. into the stuff that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, we could see a reanimation package out of Mason. We could yeah. see uh, value loam as well yeah. because he has a Snapcaster Mage. Kyle mentioned loam in here, so. So with Snapcaster Mage and Jace Fringe Prodigy, we are not afraid about loaming over right. our reanimate no, or our entomb. So I think Mason has this kind of cute little package of graveyard inter- of ag- almost ag- like agnostic graveyard interaction. Kogla and Yidaro. This card's... Right. Koglo the Titan Ape is green. Yeah. Yidaro is this red. This is red. This is red. It destroys artifacts. Uh, or it gains trample and haste. Uh, and then it can fight. Uh, that, okay. I thought there was a fight. It's not it. bad. It's not bad for a sneak attack target. I, I don't love it, but I, I'm, not, I'm not against it here. Um, no. I think... I don't... Jacob feels like he's kind of backed himself into a corner of using... Uh, Vintage cube drafts for the basis of this deck, which is which are not a bad thing to do necessarily, but there are a lot of weird cards, right? Uh, that you're going to end up taking that are not going to be that could end up being poor in this draft. Right now, nobody's showing Eldrazi, 
but Adam does have the Academy and all the monoliths and gadgets here. There's an opportunity that Adam just starts snaking some Eldros. No, for sure. Uh, and then, you know, you never know. Brandon is known to backdoor Nimrical, you know, with, especially the Zorn Orb. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, Chantel and Eureka are hell of, are some really good cards. Right? You don't always lose to right. casting it. Um, Odawara goes to Adam. That's a card I could have seen a lane taking. I really didn't for think sure. anybody else yeah. would have taken that card. Um, let's see. I, I do find it kind of interesting that in the face of Leyline of the Void, Mason took the Entomb. I, I mean, it's one... In time we have to reanimate, some, there's going to be some hate. Like, yeah, it yeah. just doesn't... And the, and the late line's not even on color, so if he's doing it, he's milk mulling for it anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. just yet another piece of hate against that yeah. because the Dothy Voidwalker was taken a while ago. <laughs> so now our reanimation plan has hate pieces in two different decks. It's not just one matchup we have to worry about. It's two now. Right. Um, but we are in... But he also has Vindicate, Assassin's Trophy. That's what I was just going to say. We yeah. are... Now, beyond that, we are in green, and green does offer a little bit of utility on board. You could take uh, a Rex Sage, or you could take um, for, uh, Viridian Zealot. Right. It's just way too far out. But uh, Nature's Claim, stuff like that. Additional uh, pieces of interaction for this stuff. Snuff Out's gone. Uh, Swords is gone. Path is gone. Um, so we have three pieces of target. Oh, I mean, Dress Down also turns off the yeah. Void Walker, so we can do our thing. So you mentioned that this could be the grist pick for Mason. Yeah, I, mean, I, I still very much see it coming. I mean, I don't know if this one or not. Like, I, I think at this point, I mean, it's either him or Kyle. So it definitely there is a contest on it. So I don't, I don't think he can float it forever if yep. he wants it. But um... where does grist usually? Yeah, let's check it out here. I feel like no, we we talked about it, we didn't bring it up. 33, so okay. yeah. Alright, Watery Grave, because EC went not too long ago. Alright. Yeah. Right, this might be Mason's run on actually casting his spells. Right. Tundra's still out there. Yep. And with Vind But we still could abandon the Teferis you and could. cast the Vindicate off of Scrubland. Yeah. And and, and I, that is uh, Mason's greatest strength is he is not afraid to abandon anything. Yep. Right? Like, okay. greatest strength. So that may just be. The Esper Trium is out there, I believe. I want to, I want yeah, to say it it's is. out there. Yeah, it is. So we, we have a number of options in front of us that allow us to cast uh, the Esper side of our deck. Um, we You noted that the Bayou is still out there, which is open for right. reason. His Breeding Pool and Watery Graves, that's the Sultai side of our deck. Um, right. In, in Shocks alone. Um, I know. Toxic Deluge from Kyle. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned that. Yeah. No, it's good. It, it gives him answers. It answers the um, uh, true name. Um, yeah. You know, his it, life's fine. Like, yeah. It, I, I'm fine main deck threats alone, discounting Elaine's one creature, it answers yeah. like four decks in it's, the field. It's, it's, it's the only sweeper that's ever consistently drafted. Yep. And As it should be. It's, it's a fantastic spell. Right. You're not going to overload Cyclonic Rift in this format, so um, you don't have a lot in front of you. Um, the cheapest Wrath, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, by far. And life is a resource, so... Oh, Elaine takes the Tundra. Okay. There's Heretic yeah, the Fire. Right, right, okay. okay. So we're filling out our little, like, stacks list. Do you think we're going to see uh, a Sphere Effect? In that list? I don't think so. He needs to. I think he he wants threats, right? Yeah. Like, just, just a Sphere that doesn't do anything, doesn't feel... Especially not against this... Field. Field, yeah. right? Like... You've got the Thalia. Uh, yeah. We can slow down Adam. Yeah, like, we're not a workshop deck, so we're right. not going to take Lodestone Golem, which is, you know, both a sphere and a threat. So, okay. Just one of those things. Like, this deck isn't taxing, but we could make it taxing if we wanted to. Um, doesn't seem like the right direction. Right. All right, Brandon did take the Dryad Arbor with the GSC, which is something we noted before that you would want without a lot of the, the dorks because Jacob took those. You yeah. gotta do something, right? Like, Noble was taken so early on from Brandon that it's just kind of like, well, what do we do now? Right. 
Now, I'm sure uh, Cody wanted the delighted half lane, so that one probably smarted a little bit. Uh, Show yeah. that guy there. I was wondering where that was, okay. was going to go. Um, we don't have a lot of good stuff to cast off the Shell Duck. Yeah, right it's now. still just free, though. I mean, that's oh, the. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you could still surprise somebody with an Eldrazi. Or a brain freeze. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> yeah. We, the storm, brain... storm, storm, storm. Shell Duck. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, just because you don't have Thoracle doesn't mean you still can't cast Brain Freeze at some point, right? right? Um, maybe people forget that we have the LED. And there's no obvious breach deck in the in the field yet, so we could just float breach down and down and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and, and Brandon loves the value breach no matter what. Like even without the other, he's yeah, like, he yeah. just likes to go into breach. It's hard to say that like value breach still isn't a combo, but right? Like you know, uh, there's still the, like you said the opportunity for it. What is territorial Kavu? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think that's all there. Yeah, that's not bad. We're just three colors, and Kavu wants you to be five. Yeah, but he can easily uh, splash an off color. Um, or Ley Line of the Guild Pack. Right. I, I know, but he could easily splash an off color uh, oh. Triumph for four. And dry to the Lysian Grove. There you go. There you go. Problem solved. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> and it's an extra land drop, right? Uh, so Ley so Line of the Guild Pack um, has four colored pips in it, but they're white, blue, black, and red yeah. split with green, and we have Yava yeah, Mind. Oh, that's true. So it yeah. is eminently castable right. if we feel like it. Ley Line Dra 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 Draco. Someone got a beans? Someone got a beans? No, no one's got a beans. With up the beanstalk? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lane? Uh, no. In the car ride right of Chicago, we just talked about beans a lot. So, yeah, gave uh, a, is someone going to beans? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, we are green, so yeah. Uh, Cody could beans. With, you don't trigger it off lay, uh, guild pack, but you do trigger it off... Um, oh, why can't I think of that enchantment now? Uh, lay, white ley lane. The six mana yeah. exiles. Right, ley lane. O-ring. O-ring. Yep. <laughs> Gush. All right, you know if you're if you're gonna play fast bond, you gotta yeah, respect yeah. The gush. I just heard some of the other ones say it's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah, you know? so. Return two islands and then put two and then pay two life to put them back on the battlefield on top. Yeah. Seems good. Oh yeah, there we go. On the the most recently drafted with for territorial Kavu, Leyline binding. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Actually, Cody has a lot of those wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, he could easily go that route. Yeah. Just splash a... Uh, what do you got? Inspiring Vantage, which is land. like red-white yeah. fast land. Yeah, the red light if you... <coughs> is that fast? Yeah. Three or less. Yeah, three or less, yeah. Not showing... I cannot remember the name of that the pain line for the life of me, but still not showing a color, the, the, the full colorless splash. Yeah, I mean, he's got enough of the, the colors rocks or maybe he doesn't need it, but yeah, you know, uh, the it's a um, battlefield forge. Thank you. <laughs> it would be nice to. See, I... I mean, maybe he's just not going to. Maybe he yeah. doesn't. I mean, I, I think you at least want displacer because God, displacer and the um, yeah, initiative really really are so good. Yeah, <laughs> running through that dungeon to five somebody. Yeah, and then what is it? You make a skeleton. How many skeletons when you complete it? Uh, is well, the one, one you're in, no, you look at the top ten cards of your deck and oh. put a creature into play. I thought it was a skeleton one. All right. Yeah, okay. and it gains plus three, plus three, and haste. Or, no, not haste. Uh, plus three, plus three, and and um, hexproof. So, particularly when you run through, you put a Thari into play. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you just run people over with a Thari and the rogues it makes. Right. Yeah. Or at that point, you're just you know you're, you're just it's generally just enough to finish him because you've already beaten him for five. Yeah. And... yeah. Okay. So we got from Elaine. So Elaine has the Valk. Elaine has the Tundra. Raw Grand Triumph. I believe that's the Teamer Triumph. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the green. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. so Oko is still on. Yeah. Yeah. No. And she took something else earlier that said Oko is still on. Uro. Uro, yeah. Now, we don't have any way to buy these lands back, but we don't need it. I don't think we're really going to be losing them. All right, so we basically do have Saga Junt coming out of Kyle's spot. I don't, we could take the Jun. We could float the Jun Triumph for forever if we really thought we needed it uh, mm. to kind of go with our yeah, W six. So. Well, though Cody could grab that if he wants a fourth color just to have a land that he. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because it's it's still two thirds right. on color. Yeah, for the Kabu power up. Yeah. I think we're fine losing it too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's, his manifest is sick. 
Yeah, I think we just want some more, some ways to actually end the game uh, as Kyle. So, uh, Bloodbraid Elf was mentioned earlier, um, and we yeah, are... He mentioned Questing Basin and then immediately Brandon took it. Yeah, so. we have a Crop Rot, but no good lands to get yet. Right. So, I would expect... I mean, he's got Strip Mine see. and Wasteland. Yeah, that was, like, Strip Mine is, right. is the one that finished the game, finishes the game with W6, but I, I would expect... Right. But he can't... Yeah, but W6, see, that's the difference, though, is, like, he lost both... Um, Crucibles. W six is not doesn't like do it immediately. W six is a I can do two this time, two next time, that time. Yep. Like that that's fine. It's a slow grind value, but mm-hmm. it's not like I win the game. Exactly. Right? Which, Which is it's fine. It's just a way to accrue value. But okay, yeah. we took life from the loom. Yeah, okay. And like, he mentioned that earlier, mm-hmm. so that makes sense. He's playing the grind, grindy game. Um maybe take some pox. Let's go some pox. Maybe. We're getting to a point now where Blood Braid Elf is I think is actually a bad card. Yeah, no, I don't think he wants Blood Braid. I yeah, because right if we hit if we Hit a, a retrofitter foundry, a talked to Delhi, you should melt down. Right. And so these are board cards, Pithing, obviously. Yeah. But now hitting Colgan's Command is nice. It's like hitting Bitter Blossom back in the day. Yeah. Or hitting uh, uh, bitter, uh, bitter Blight Trail. Lightning. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hollow Fountain from Mason. Late Dispute. That was a one Yes, of that our, is an extremely late. That was one Donald, of our high undrafteds. Yep, it was sitting there at the top for a really long time. Yeah. I would assume we see Steam Vents go mm-hmm. on this. This run around, um, Elaine's making a bit of a run on Lance, and if that one lasts, I expect it to go to her. Mason might pick up Bayou. Her man's or still Chris. out there. How do you? Uh, oh, oh we have a white splash for Enlightened Tutor. Oh, he already had the Temple of the Night already, mm-hmm. so it was it wasn't new. Okay. Well, it's kind of leaning in now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. Sneak right attack. Now, that's it. Yeah. Sneak attack. Yeah. That's how we're going to make sure we can actually do things yeah. with this deck. Um, Elder Gregor. Elder Gregor's not bad. It's no, been drafted before. It's, we have we have Cradle, so it's a quick play, which means yeah. it's going to get there. Um, but like I said, this is this feels very much like a we are now pulling from a vintage cube draft. Right. And yeah. That, very, uh, very 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 cubey. Good good call. There's, um, very cubey. There's the I can't think of it. There's a flip creature that goes in this deck as well. Uh, green creature. I just can't remember the name of it. Like if we see that, then right. I think he's like spot on, just taking from a cube draft, a vintage cube draft. Um. If we, man, we floated Grist this long. I don't know. Uh, Mason, let's see. Maybe. Hey, folks. This is Stephen and Peter, and we are here with St. Lotus, coming from Casa St. Louis. Um, and this is St. Lotus 14. Mm-hmm. Um, this may be our last stream for a while. Um, these are kind of taxing on the, the resources in the body, and we're going to... Uh, probably do some non-stream friends and family, but we'll be posting results. We'll still be doing community stuff, uh, card spoilers, things like that. Uh, but uh, we are definitely in uh, a spot where we've been doing this for four years now, yeah, quite so. regularly. So uh, almost five at this point, something. Uh, but you know, we are definitely stay around for St. Lotus for content and things. Uh, hit the Discord. Um, you can hit the Discord there. That is a joint St. Lotus and another other group's Discord. Mm-hmm. We run these online. If it's something you want to do, mm-hmm. uh, let's pop back over here and look at what we had. So we had a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Um, the boy has fallen, but he's yes. still a solid card. Yeah. Um, we had a Death Shadow. So we don't have snuff out, right? Mason yeah. lost a snuff out, so we need some ways to pay life to make Death Shadow castable. Mason's still possible for the Dreadnought Stifle Knot. Yeah, I, I, for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Witherbloom Command, one of my favorites. I love Witherbloom Command. I think it's the best of the two color commands. Uh, you know, particularly in his deck, it's really good because he's got the Strip Mine. Yep, exactly. Uh, I was going like, to say. Yeah, he's got the Strip Mine in the Wasteland. Mill mm-hmm. yourself a little bit, buy back the Strip Mine, uh, destroying low cost creatures, destroying one, uh, one artifacts, and then occasionally just. A little extra life. Yep. So. Yeah. For the most part, I've seen a cast for the mill. Yeah. And the lens. I, I always use it for something else. The mill was always the, the byproduct, though. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it did want me a game, right? Yep. Like, uh, but I would generally use it to kill a creature or kill artifacts. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's a sorcery. It's only downfall of it, but there's the V click with the lane, like I figured it would. I mean, she doesn't have the Caracas to combo with, but uh, Peacekeeper is solid. Anointed Peacekeeper. Yeah. So that which... is the. Um, Oh, this is the corset card that goes in that deck. Okay, yeah, I can think of the art, but I can't think of what it is. It's, uh... Anointed? This one, Anointed? A-N-N. There we go. I, I had two oh, ends yeah, in it. Yep. I was putting two ends in it. Uh, this is the one that's kind of like, uh... It just tax the spells, right? Yeah, so they, it... 
it, they look at the opponent's hand, then you choose any card name. So it doesn't have to be a card in their hand, mm-hmm. but you can pick any name. It taxes us the spell that has it and activated abilities that uh, has it. Oh, okay. Turn uh, it Got it. But it's not like uh, the white one that flies because it doesn't like exile and make it. Where this goes away, the tax. Yeah, goes away. not Dreadnought Magistrate. I don't know what you're talking about. Also, finger guns. There's Echo of Eons for Brandon. Yeah. Yep. Could so, you called that way earlier on the. Yep. So now we're kind of we're either flexing into a breach deck, so we might see with Shelldock Isle. Uh, right. So we might see that coming soon in the last. Ah, uh, Cody. I, I know what Cody's gonna one card. Breakout. Oh, I just played against this card last week. Yeah, but I know what Cody's gonna draft now at one point, most likely. Uh, the, uh, the. This is like Collected Company, but weirder. Yeah, the Kavu and the Breakout signified what's gonna happen here. So Breakout. Let's look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them. If that card has many value two or less. You may put it in the battlefield, and it gains haste until end of turn. Yep. If you didn't, they yep. re- put the real card in your ha- uh, put in your hand, and the rest in the bottom. Um, so Cody online, so it hits, it hits the Kavu for him. It hits the Questing Druid. It hits NT. So you can get some good value out yep. with it. Uh, but with the Nissa, and then I know that he has an interest in. I am gonna have to figure out the name. Uh, what does it do? It is a. Uh, sloth. Oh, from Fallout. It's the it's like a twelve twelve for ten or a yes. ten ten for twelve that gets it's 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 a lot of colorless lumbering mega sloth. Yep. So Do I you see Legolas's quick quick reflexes with this as well because that's a wouldn't be surprised to see Cody draft this card. Um, Who do you want? I was thinking Elaine. Yeah, I want, we want to, you take it. Find out what she's doing with that orb bar. Yeah. All right. <laughs> The queen of the already. Yep, so we're going to be uh, be bringing Elaine to see what's going on uh, with the list, especially the Orbar. Uh, it seems kind of, it's the only card that really seems out of place right now. Um, we expect some stuff to be floated down into the last end of the draft uh, with either Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer, things like that. But um, I hope we figure out soon. Otherwise, the rest of it just seems kind of like a four-color control based in blue, which is obviously a strong archetype. Um Hi, Eileen. Uh, is this the thing? Is this what we're doing? Yeah, this is what we're doing okay, now. Set. Hi. Welcome back to VRD. Yeah, it's it's great to be back. Um, I'm not as like cracked at this game as I used to be, but you know, um, that's fair. Just... it's still like fun to be here. And, yeah. So- so we wanted to know, uh, as the draft took shape, we kind of figured out what was going on with the deck. Right now, we are very curious about the Orvar. We thought maybe Heat Shimmer, or Twin Flame, things like that. Oh, I'm not doing anything like that with okay. it. Okay, so I know it's been a while since I've been back. Mm-hmm. And I definitely am not as good at this sort of thing as I used to be. But my theory has always been that the way that you should draft a VRD deck is you use all of your picks like you actually really use them because like you know it's 46 picks you know there's 23 and then you know maybe you pick seven or eight lands whatever yeah. my theory has always been the sideboard cards are very important so like i took energy flux you know late but i, I took hydroblast really early yes. right because i saw, saw the draft shaping up i'm like there's gonna be like four red decks so yeah. i probably should have taken the other I, the, I prob- the blue one <laughs> yeah pop public could have taken that too not doing anything cute with this, but there are two decks that one has Liliana, one has yes. um, him him to Yep. So I took the so I took this card and I looked at them and I was like, yeah, that Liliana with the veil, you're definitely not going to be um, upticking against me ever, right? Because it's open draft. They know that I have the over. I'm not doing anything cute with it. I'm just going to uh, discard okay. it to their thing and I am going to um, blow them out. Hopefully, <laughs> okay. Um, so it's just like. I'm taking a bunch of sideboard cards. Okay, we weren't sure because it was it was um, it was like midway through the second third of the draft. Yeah, we you sure. always oh. yeah people should take sideboard cards earlier. Well, I say that, but I think people have figured out that you can take sideboard cards earlier. Um, yeah. So There's... at this point, I think I'm just gonna pick a couple more lands, and then as I see what people are doing, I'm gonna break out the like really um the like really like targeted sideboard pieces okay um there's also the really early mana drain which we were talking yeah, about whatever. we weren't sure if um instead of one of the forces so we were curious about the i don't i don't like the forces to be okay. honest um 
it's it's great against like if you're protecting like a broken combo, which mm -hmm. I'm not, and it's great if your opponent has a broken combo, which sure they do, except you know, C1 needs the Lotus in order to like because they don't have any fast mana, they just have like a bunch of four drops yep. and then a Lotus and Sure, if you draw the Lotus, it's insane, and then I guess I lose, but yep. you can't just, like, always ha have it, so. Yeah, so it sounds like you're actually reading the draft the same way we are here, which is just, this draft is slower than we've seen. There's no dedicated, like, the red oh, deck I would that's just gonna never blow the, you out. I would just never take the forest. It, if if there is a red deck, I'd be, you know, taking sideboard cards that do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, something like Warmth, or, like, just s cop red, or something like that. Yeah, um, chill, or chill, whatever. Chill, chill, I have taken... I think I have taken. I don't but, know, but yeah. But like, it is reading the draft, seeing what's going on because it is open draft. You know, you could if you wanted to, you could play a little slower. If you had to, you could play a little faster. That that's kind of what I meant by reading the draft. Uh, I actually have a spreadsheet open on my um, computer, and this is my first time trying this. I didn't used to like do this in the past, mm -hmm. where I have my picks open and I have my in and out for each uh, opponent. Like okay. I, I'm I, I'm already setting that up. So in this case. I know I have a lot of things I want to bring in from mm -hmm. four seats one and three, but um, I don't have a lot of things to take out. So it's like maybe I'll pick up something like Court of Cunning, which will be really good against this, uh, against some of the other players, mm -hmm. but not against those. Yep. And that way I know like what I need to do. Okay. Uh, so specifically with the court that brings in the monarchy, does the monarchy actually play into your game plan overall, or is it just the mill effect on the court that you're looking at? I'm a little worried about court because I don't have a ton of like I don't have a ton of ability to like um get rid of like random shitter creatures yep um so it's like it's not a card I'm super sure about but it's something that I'm considering and obviously okay. um yes like drawing an extra card is important but it is but also ideally this can just kill them right yep. like because I know because it's 40 cards and just exactly them, like twice yeah. and then they die it's the power behind like archive trap and like whatever right yeah. just, like, most well, I'm not going to so. play like archive trap oh, yeah, yeah. I am going to play something that yeah, yeah it's just yeah. like Zonk's Accord of the library with the court if you're the monarch it gets is it 10 is it mill 10 yeah, yeah, yeah it's mill 10 if you're the monarch yeah exactly so um I, I could also play like Court of Grace because that way it, it like protects myself a little better. Okay. I'm a little worried about my mana there, but that, I have to see how that shapes up. Yeah, so are, are you feeling alright about the mana base? Do you have the two ETB tap lands that basically cover your... the two triumphs that cover your colors? I mean, I only have one fetch land. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling too good about it, but I'll figure it out. Okay, because that's... when the run on fetches started, I, uh, I think the seat before you picked Woodfall... Oh uh, yeah, they they picked the. I don't care about that. It's only no, the blue fetches I care about. Well, no, right? they they yeah. started the run, and I said I think if I were in your spot right there, if that person wants to start the run of fetch lands, I might take the trop in that spot because you I think you'd just taken Oko, and if people are going to focus on fetch lands, oh, I, I don't care I'm about right. the. I, I I don't care too much about the, 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 the like dual lands because shock lands are basically the same thing. Like yep. you like you're not going to die to having two extra li like two extra life or mm -hmm. two, like two. F f Fear of life. There's basically two copies of every dual land, so I don't, yeah. I don't care about those. I mean, more for the ability to like ca make sure you could cast your spells, because you had just taken the Oko if you wanted to make sure it was reliably castable versus, uh, like, as early as possible versus possibly drawing an ETB tap line off the top and just having to kind of like deal with that oh, extra yeah, turn. I'm not really worried about it. That's it's fair. fine. Um, the, do the surveil lands play into what you're trying to do at all, do you think? <sighs> it might be a little too slow, but oh. I, I'm still thinking about how I'm going to build this mana base, mm -hmm. and... It'll come together, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But so you're feeling like pretty good overall about the the draft as your. <sighs> Not really. Um, I haven't been playing a lot of competitive magic in the past four years, um, so. And obviously, I, I haven't been thinking about a VRD. These people have played eight VRDs in the past yeah. like three years, and I just. You, you, you know, it's been so long. Like, Jace the Mind Sculptor picked 30th. My yep. VRD3 deck, I picked Jace the Mind Sculptor third pick. Yeah. And it's just, like, like the, the format's very different. I haven't had a time to, like, the time to, like, super study a ton about this. So, yeah, I'm not feeling great, but if I come home, like, 4-3 or better, it'll be fine. I'll come, I'll, like... You'll be happy you know, about it. Yeah, 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 it's whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, from from our perspective, everything looks great. We were worried for a little bit about every, if you're going to go three colors, four colors, and then as things expanded, you took the the triumphs. Everything kind of started to like take shape, and we saw the context of the deck that you were building, and everything kind of 
looks good, especially for as slow as the draft was. It seemed like you were reading the room really well, and so we're excited to see, you know, how it plays out for sure. Yeah. Still need to take a couple more haymakers, I think. Like, I don't have anything that matches up against Mystic Confluence, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, in terms of just things where you get to five mana and you cast this, it's yep. like, I don't know if I can beat... <laughs> if I have anything, like, on that scale, but... Yep. I'll find something. Yeah, you have another third of the draft left, and things still seem pretty wide open for you and yep. like the rest of the field in general, so there's some opportunity overall to, you know, mm -hmm. shore things up. Yep. So. All right. Okay. Thank cool. you for coming. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Um, if you, can you send Steven and Mark in, please? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so that was uh, Elaine about her draft overall, and it looks, you know, uh, I guess she doesn't feel too confident right now, but overall, things look really good for her. Um, so we found out the Orvar is basically just to blow out the discard spells. Okay. You know, like you would play the Loxodons mm -hmm. um, for that, for the Slesnia, like, oops, now it's a play trigger. Okay. Um, and uh, Elaine is still looking for a couple haymakers for the list uh, overall. She feels a little light. All right, I'm gonna tag you in second with the bathroom. We have your pizza too, while you're there. Yeah. Mm, go. Can you All right, we're starting up round uh, pack three. Elaine says I'd like more of a break. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So we found out they've been doing the Orvar is mostly for the discard spells, not for the. Um... One more time. Orvar is basically for uh, to, uh, for the discard spells. Got it. Uh, so not as much. I, I thought maybe she was going to try to um, do some kind of um, dual caster mage, heat shimmery type thing with it. That makes sense. No, I mean or Orvar is uh, <laughs> it's it's a spicy pick. I will say. Right. I'm gonna fix the names here, That's and right. then hopefully they're gonna be picking soon. Right. So yeah, let's see. Looking at the decks as they stand right now, who are the people that you're really excited about? Um, Adam's deck is intense. Yes. I, I like it a lot. Um, um, uh, I don't know. I, I'm very interested in Mason's. Uh, I don't know. I think the field's good. Um, I agree. You know, I, Jacob's deck, I think, can surprise. I think it... Um, he was really surprised. I talked to him a bunch out there. Um, he was really surprised that Kogla has never been taken before. Uh, and I... I had never really read the card. Actually, after reading that, I think I agree with him, actually. It's good. I mean, but the sneak, the sneak attack doesn't get... Like, the decks that Correct. might want it doesn't get played that much, right? That's the, the, the fail case, even if you can't sneak attack it, is being able to channel it for four, and that's still pretty solid. Right, like, that's true. It just, like, draws a card, kills something. It's it's really not a bad fail right. case. Um, anyway, I'm not saying it's, like, the best VRD card in the world, but no, it, is, for sure. it does seem like it's flown under the radar for too long. Um, I love that he has a Traxa. Uh, yeah, I think Jake's deck is really coming together uh, at this point. I don't think that it's I don't think it's the strongest deck, but I think right. it might be the most consistent. It, like yeah, I mean it's a lot of Mandorks to be consistent, but a lot of Mandorks also to get kind of blown out, right? Like that's yeah, the, there's I certainly. Guess, yeah. But right now there's only a Toxic Deluge. No, oh, and a uh, Fiery uh, Confluence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there's there's things that definitely wreck him, but uh, <laughs> and there's also the chance that you just flood a Mandorks and never get a payoff right. spell. I yeah. actually thought I, I said he should take a Yaga Dragon. Or uh, Ragged Dragon. Ragged Dragon. <laughs> I mean, it is a way to pressure it. Right. All right, let's remove this break just to give him a little poke. Yeah. Um, the other deck that really I'm curious to see how it comes together is Brandon's. Obviously, yeah. Brandon deck, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that like this Chrome Host Seed Shark is going to have fun interactions with the Echo of Aeons, with Gush, like other free spells, like Temporal Mastery is one that he talked about he's going to be taking at some point here. Um, it can do really nuts things with it. I normally normally we see that card alongside uh, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas, right, kind of a or black, uh, a blue black um, deck Academy and, to make the mana off of it. Yeah, yeah, but you, you're able to like leverage the artifacts for more value, and he's planning on leveraging those artifacts into creatures to kill his opponent. Right. He, wait, would say it again. Sorry. Uh, he's just going to turn them into creatures and okay. kill, kill people with them. He's not actually going to be using them as artifacts uh, without flipping them. But he's going to—he's his plan is to make them five five artifacts, so it's worth flipping them versus a bunch of z one one power things that oftentimes those uh, incubation tokens end up being. 
What do you feel about Dan's list? He has this, like, this is way more in your wheelhouse than mine, but it feels like a pretty solid aggressive deck that kind of him and Cody are in the same lane pretty quickly. Yeah, no, for sure. I think... Um, Other I, than Robert the Rich, which we know is garbage. No, Robert, uh, no, uh, Robert the Rich, best card in the deck. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I like Dan's list a lot. I His, his fast mana and the Karn combo part there is uh, particularly strong. I still want to see... I, 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 I think it really, really wants... Um, Phyrexian uh, d- displacer or displacer. Yeah, right? I agree. I, Eldrazi I think displacer. it wants all the Eldrazi. I don't, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't I need Eldrazi. I need you to do the three package. I think you just want Reality Smasher, um, Thought Out Seer, and Displacer. Yeah, I agree. Right? Those, yeah. those are the three. When I, th- when I think of Eldrazi, those are what I mean. Uh... I also like I like this uh, Vanilla click from Elena. I think that's a really strong. Pickup. Yeah, I called that there to go there. I mean, yeah. I think it, it. She lost the window. Of yeah, she lost the Caracas for like the infinite go in our set, but it's still just good value. Um, you know, it's still just gonna get get her there. Sorry. All right, it's still gonna be very dark in here, but it's yeah. slightly better. see i i did not see this death shadow pick up by mason so i heard mason talking so it was interesting so evidently there was a table talk thing where he said he felt that people were wondering why he wasn't picking duels earlier okay and there's a lot of duels out there yep um and the reason why is because he planned on death shadow so he was didn't do duels because he wanted he wants shocks okay that makes sense and so he was holding over the duels but he felt like if he took the shocks early it would telegraph what he was doing interesting yeah, that's that is spicy. Okay, yeah. so let's take a look at the missing cards. Oh, did we lose the missing cards? It's or, somewhere. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, consider still one of the best, and actually probably pretty good for him. And Puritan. Uh, I mean, but, somebody's but, gonna take a breach at some point, right? It yeah. Can't just live for forever. Consider probably pretty good for Mason, right? Because of the the way reanimate he's moved into. Sure. Um, Skull Clamp, Cody maybe like he's got the like, as the second um, target for like maybe there's there's not anybody that really I mean Cody is the closest I think yeah but there's oh no 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 Jake Jake needs Skull Clamp oh yeah Jake needs Skull Clamp bad because that's exactly solves the problem of oh what if I don't draw the card I need right what if I have too many dorks yeah uh, Cody mentioned a pretty interesting play that he really was hoping for which is turn one Lotus Loris. Replay Lotus, Archon of Emeria. Yeah, and just pressure them with five. And then, yeah, pressure them with five and be like, your 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 non bases come and play tapped, and you can only play one spell turn. Like, I don't think anyone's taking Dark Depths or Channel. I will call out that I think Imperial Seal should go to Adam at some point, the, but it's, it's a low priority. I could see Dark Depths going to Kyle, potentially, uh, with the life in the Witherbloom. Okay, maybe. Um, I know Cody considered it because he was considering Lumbering Mega Sloth. Um, so <laughs> that can't be a real card. No, it is. Well, up. with Dar- we, brought it up. It, we brought it up here. Let me find the. Uh, oh, like you meant scrolling out of that first. Oh, sorry. Uh, here, let's just scroll down a minute. Okay. so I can see that draft that's going. Dark Depth is the easiest way to take the mana value of the Lumbering Mega Sloth down to the Right, so Mega Sloth basically gets uh, Lumbering. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it costs twelve, but it costs. One less for each counter on one of your among, among players and permanents. Okay. So with Dark Depths out, you like Dark Depths, you have a Maya, you can play it turn two. Interesting. Okay. Right. So Dark Depths, Maya, you have an eight eight trample turn two, and then enters the battlefield tapped. That's pretty strong. Um, but he, he thought about it still because of uh, this planeswalkers. Oh, let's keep that up. Sorry. Right. Oh, okay. uh, because of his planeswalkers, he did still say he was still kind of considering it. Interesting. Uh, because you could, like, with Nissa comes in with five, she rolls up to six immediately. Uh, but he, he doesn't think he's going to. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a card I, I never really think about. Like, I've, I've, I remember reading it once and being like, that costs too much. But yeah. the fact that it does... Evidently, it's seen self-down. play... The Dark Death version is seen play, I think, in Legacy. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this Ensnaring Bridge, is that just getting... Uh, is that coming up just due to the card board, do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just card... Uh, that makes sense. I mean, he... he protect him. You know, I don't know why. Just take it away from the card board, but... It's just a good sideboard. Yeah. Uh, I'm just realizing that we're chopping off part of the card, so I'm going to fix that. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide is just a fast acceleration, I assume, is happening there. Yeah, no, Simeon Spirit Guide's great in that deck. It's one of my, my Like, he's already got the pedal. Like, you often don't get the pedal. Like, you don't get as much of the fast mana as he wants, but, yeah. like, you know, it gives you that ability to cast that, like, you know, locks up that ability to cast out a Thari turn one type thing. So it's, it's pedal number two. 
Uh, I frequently don't have the pedal when I run it, but I think in general it's a lot of the Simian Spirit Guide is the, the bird. And occasionally you just won't drop a beater, right? Like occasionally yeah. it's just like, all right, cool, I need a blocker, I need a 2-2, two -two, I, need, I need a body. Um, and Eric Benson points out that Dan, Dan's deck is disgusting, which, yeah, yeah it's, I, I do feel like it's, uh, it's one of the more contested decks. Uh, fighting Cody a lot, but it has turned out incredibly well. And I think if he makes that pivot into Eldrazi that we know he wants to, right. hopefully. Or we hope so. We don't yeah, know. we actually nobody talked to him about it, right? Right. I didn't ask because I don't want to lead him there if he didn't. Same. Right? So exactly. I don't, I don't ask a lot of questions because I don't want to lead people in the yes. uh, place, right? So I the only reason that Megasol came up with the Cody was because he said he uh, this is a deck he drafted in a bandless league somewhere. Oh. And okay. he was like, and he had drafted Megasol there, and he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing that. I was like. Uh, are you going to do everything in that? And he's like, no, I'm not going to do the Vegas Law. Okay. So <laughs> that came up in a more organic way. <laughs> Into your land harbor out of a lane. Because uh, Breeding Pool's been taken. Yeah. And, uh, and so has Trop's been drop. taken. And, yeah. What is this card? Oh, Exploration. Okay. I was like, is this, hey, Exterminate? What is that? Just a weird art. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, Kyle and Brandon are both competing over the lands going on there. Uh, is Kyle going to be going into? Um, is he going to be going into one of the like? What, what's the card that plays off the top of your library? The new Oracle, the the three mana Oracle that gains life. It gains life. Yeah, it's a three mana two four enchantment creature that gains you a life whenever you play a land. You can play the land off the top of your library. Mm -hmm. I know Augur of Autumn. No, nope. that one, but, which is actually that's like, I think it's a solid card too. We've literally talked about it today, but it's okay. Okay. Corsair of Crufix. Thank you. Oh, Corsair. Okay. I, I, you said new, so I was thinking. <laughs> when I say new, it's yeah. relative to 2010. Or right. Yeah. Yeah. You said new. I was like, yeah, of course it was like, so old at this point. Can we flip over to the draft view to see what that card Mason took was? Yep. Yeah. Leovold Emissary of Trust. Interesting. Yeah, we discussed that. <laughs> you discussed that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, Leo's good. I mean, I think that Brandon may have wanted it uh, for his green son, but... Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if he's the black. Even without the green sun, he's probably... Oh, there's the channel ember. Cool. Okay. Metallic rebuke. Okay, so we, we're probably going to see the ancient so, den at some point here. Uh, Adam is for oh, sure. Sorry, new, Adam is for sure wants to do a doomsday pile. He, he uh, a new a newer kind of doomsday pile. He, he pointed out to me what he wants to do. So nice. Uh, involving the new tutor. The new tutor is Stephen Hagen, and I am. Known as Stephen Hagen. Um, this is Discord 14, St. Lotus 14, Lotus not 14. Discord, St. Lotus 14. And we are here um, in good old St. Louis enjoying Budweiser, the king, king of St. Louis. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm Peter. This is Stephen. Yep. This is Steve Peter. I'm Stephen. We should have just. Switching back and forth, switching forward. Uh, solid fatal push there, just, you know, solid removal. Again, uh, comment that, like, cards like these don't always see play, but, like, this draft is uh, pretty uniquely a fair draft at this point, right? Yeah. Like, uh, which is funny. That's I think uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know what happens, you know, and like, sometimes these drafts, they, it's, everything's combo and everything's crazy, and other times everyone's just playing fair magic, and yeah. today it's a lot of fair magic. <laughs> it, it seemed like it's kind of reactive. The first person that makes them, it's a, the first person to blink and go fast Yeah, kind of changes the course of the draft. It's like the run on it's, on lands, right? Yeah. What? So it's the first person that wants to be unfair and fast. It doesn't matter what they want to do. It could be like a low to the ground aggressive red deck, or it could just be a combo deck forces the draft to be reactive and, right. and, and speed up. Thundering Falls. Which land is that? Uh, that I believe is the. Is that the Surveil? Simic Surveil. Okay. Sounds like a blue red Surveil to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, it is the Izzet Surveil. Yeah. I was like, it's it's thundering. It sounds that sounds yeah. very Izzet to me. Um, but yeah, it's a shame that uh, I'm in the in the commentary booth because this is exactly my favorite type of draft. A bunch of people playing fair magic. I'd yeah. be all about this. No, well, for sure. All right, so. Which also, I think, a list like a uh, like a flash list or something would uh, you know do quite well in a field like this. And we, yeah, I'm I'm not entirely excited about the um, the channel out of Jacob's list. I would have rather that be flash, but I get it. Yeah. Because um, we have the Atroxa. Like I would have just 
Rugged Prairie. Rugged Prairie can tap for colorless, so... Um, oh, that's the filter land. Okay. Yeah, it's the filter. Oh. I'm a big fan. I'm a big advocate for the filters, you know, particularly in a, in a format like this where it, you've got a lot of fair magic and yep. that you can be that hair, you know. Um, I thought the I thought a land that tapped for Boros and Colorless would be a signal that we would start seeing Eldrazi from uh, from Daniel's right. list, and so now I think we have it. I kept forgetting about the filters. I kept saying the pain land. Right, and the pain's good too, but you know he's got enough of the other that he may not need the pain. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. So like they stopped being played in Commander, so I stopped remembering right. their cards. <laughs> Nature's claim. Nature's claim. Nothing wrong them. with oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Easy sideboard card for Brandon. Like, leans in. Not too bad. Oh, I forgot what card I was trying to bring up before we lost uh, internet. It was the new Spree one. That's right. The the, the Spree... The, the, the Black Spree Sprawl. Let's see. I run it in Prosper, so I can probably check it really quick. Okay. Uh, what? There it is. Insatiable. Insatiable avarice. Yeah. So you can. Sur it's tu tutor for three is the issue, right? Yeah. But if you've got the mana, you get to also draw three cards and lose two life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And yeah. his target player draws three cards. So it's like is, sign in blood. Yeah. So it is. You know, occasionally. Uh, yeah. Right. I actually won a game with that in because I played it in my sealed pool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I needed it because it targeted them and it hit hit a crime, so it targeted uh, three things I needed and did two life and, and them. was enough to kill them out because yep. I crimed. That's awesome. Because I crimed. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was gonna win this game, but then I crimed. All right. So we have wear tear into Jetmere's garden. So yeah. The solid yeah. sideboard card and fixing that man up. Yep, a little as bit, we expected. Right? Do we have Comet in that list? Yeah, see? Comet. Okay, is, yeah, Comet really. Yeah. 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 Fourth Aerolingus yeah. Comet was his... Uh... The back-to-back. -back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> There's Seasoned Pyro. Very, very solid. Um, Ooh, okay. You know, I don't know. I want to say I think a little underdrafted, but no, I don't think so, actually. I think it's just the right amount of drafted. It, it, yeah. You know, occasionally it's nuts and gets you... It's the actual little bit of card draw and filtering you want in a deck like this, and then occasionally it just does nothing, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I I would be more worried that would do nothing than help in this list. But yeah, you're right. Churning through in the mid to late game. Churning through, like, pitching lands to get to, you know, something juicy. Is, yeah. You know. Yep. Divine Smite. Target... Creature or planeswalker an opponent controls phases out. The permanent is black, exile it instead. Okay. Interesting. Why? So Elaine was basically reading the room. Oh. oh, Celestial Purge. That makes more sense. Exile a red or black per permanent. So it's even more potent. It gets planeswalkers. Yeah, purge is good. Virtues ruin. Destroy all white creatures. <laughs> That's just all That's just all Come on, perish. Like, if we're going that far, <clears throat> why not just perish him? There's the preordain. Super late, I feel like. I still, like, consider better in his deck, I think, just because uh, you've got the reanimate package there. Yeah. So. Uh, nobody's taking... And it's an instant. Yeah, nobody's taking the breach. There's the doomsday. So nice. I feel like if consider was taken earlier, doomsday couldn't be taken at all. If Adam didn't already have consider. But Yeah. He also missed gush. Yeah. Eh, I don't. Oh, it is time. Mark's Bible. This is uh, uh, the Gush. <laughs> yeah. Understanding Gush: Strategy and Tactics by Stephen Medinian. My God. <laughs> there, there, this is simultaneously one of the most awesome and one of the least awesome things I've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that somebody that Magic can get how many pages worth of pedantic? Uh, <laughs> A singular card. 399 pages, 401 pages with the appendices. This is the fourth edition of the book. The fifth <laughs> one's coming out soon. <laughs> you gotta buy the fifth? A, a <laughs> card that is still restricted? Yeah. It is re-restricted. Re-restricted, yeah. So, yeah. Hey, yeah they talk all that every now and again. Okay. So we have Ulamog the Ceaseless Hungerer, which a great channel target, right. into Terracidon, which is something Stephen you suggested, to the yeah, Vault of Yeah, that was a marker. I don't like Terracidon. I think Terracidon's like... 
in general, I mean, you're you're sneak attacking it in, and they they get to kill it immediately, right? Like you're blowing up some of their stuff, yeah. but like you get unless you're doing your own and somehow giving them haste. I don't. I don't like Tarasso. I like his Woodfall Primus pick. Yeah, I, Primus like comes back immediately. Right? I, like, I like Tarasadon. Uh, oh, there's the Tide Binder. Nice, yeah, nice. Then, then Woodfall Primus because Woodfall Primus doesn't give your opponents a creature. Yeah. Like, to your point, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to dislike about the actual card Terastodon itself when it's on board. The fact it has no Tr- keywords. Terastodon was an all star in mid early commander yep. because you could target multiple people. Yeah, and you weren't giving one person three elephants most of the time. Yeah, like, that was why it saw all that play in that kind of mid early commander. For sure, and um, like it's kind of just hold over from the heydays of vintage as well where you could oath it up and then destroy your oath right. in two lands and now you have 18 power worth of creatures on board that they can't deal with in a singular turn so you get them over too. Um, it's just this kind of like last vestige of magic circa 2008. Do we have a Ganjo taken? No, we should. Yeah. Choke is bad. I mean, I've drafted it. I always regret drafting it. Like, uh, this is something that Alina was talking about, which is just all of your picks should be relevant regardless, like even your sideboard picks, and Choke is a very relevant sideboard card against the majority of the field, which is blue. Right. Um, so for something like Elaine, she would be looking at, uh, like, Chill, I believe. Uh, that was a card I suggested um, against Red. Um, chill, she I mentioned, like. She mentioned Warmth. Chill, chill's was, more proactive. The problem yeah. with Choke is, like, if they, they haven't tapped it, yeah. they, you know, like... It's, yeah, same thing with uh, Back to Basics. Yeah. Like, if they don't tap the lands, it doesn't matter. Also, really bad... Both of these cards are really bad in the face of Gush. Yeah. Because you just get to reset your lands. Or, or against Zern Orb Crucible, Fast Bond. Like, that's a... Is acid Rain? Well, see, it's funny that Elaine said that about every card that mattering, and then it has Acid Rain, which... Destroy all forests. Yeah. So it's funny that she would say that and then turn around and drive. Now, Cathar Commando, I do love. So I mean, Acid Rain is really good when your opponent plays Yavamai. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's one match that is going to mm-hmm. blow out. It. I mean, it, and it's solid against these others. Like, oh, for it, sure. It's not bad, but it goes against that be good all the time. Yeah, all the time. Strategy, right? um, so Cathar Commando is one of those cards I was kind of talking about before in generalities, which is just like, I thought, the reason I thought Dan wouldn't take uh, reality Smash is because that's higher up the curve right. than where I thought he would want to be when he took Mother of Runes. I thought he right. would want to fill out the twos and threes, which is what we see in Cathar Commando, going a little bit tighter. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, we still couldn't have Displacer and uh, Thought Nuts here. What's up, buddy? How was your climbing, buddy? Why are you bouncing? Good. Logan, for anyone that doesn't know, was on the very first VRD stream. And has done everyone since. As mm-hmm. a tiny baby, about six weeks old. Oh. So, you probably want two natural order targets, which do you like? Well, to answer that question, you got to ask what you're doing with the deck. So, my first. I mean, I think with all the with all the little dudes, you want Crater Hoof. That yeah, exactly. I would I would be playing the a cra- a deck that wins with Crater Hoof, and then after that, um, if I was going to be playing an aggressive deck, I would probably look at Woodfall Primus because Natural Order is a card that can be used to tutor up. Right, and he's got a track, so yeah. I mean. But that is a different style of deck right. for Natural Order. So if I was going to be playing that style of deck, then Atroxo would be number one. Yeah, and then I think Woodfall Primus would still be number two. Yeah, or something. The other way to go think about it is something that's really hard to answer. Um, so I don't know it off the top of my head, but some kind of big green. Something with like a hex proof or uh, you know. You could go super value and if you were Jacob have having taken under mountain adventure. Trask. What Trask? To the Tarask. Tarask T A R R It's not right. This is a half time in cheek, but it's a type you could do it. It might be the Tarask. The Tarask, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this thing. <laughs> Haste and Ward... Is that 10? Yep, as long as it was cast. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have the word 10 again, but still, it's... it's <laughs> Whenever it attacks, it fights target creature defending... Play. That's really funny. <laughs> um, so, it, yeah, if I was going to be playing uh, like this kind of natural order deck that we're seeing Jacob kind of lean into, I would be taking... Um, we mentioned it before, the new Galta. Yeah, so, no, for sure. Uh, new Galta is... 100%. Like, um, now, <clears throat> with Sneak Attack and Natural Order, what he wants to be doing, right? Because he can just dump. Uh, Grudge is solid Stam- there, Stampede Cody. Tyrant. Yeah. 
I'd be playing this. Uh, yeah. If I in this kind of natural order deck um, that Jacob's playing, I would be playing Gotha because we have so many chunky creatures that we're gonna end up with a couple in hand, and natural ordering for this Gotha just allows us to dump them on board uh, with with. Re Grudge and Darcy, yeah, so early value Darcy can yep. be a breakout target. Get you a little card selection. Yeah, I don't think there are a lot of. I don't. I'm not a big fan of Darcy. I know Mason makes fun of and says like, "Why doesn't uh, Saint Lotus like Darcy or Saint Lotus like Darcy?" Yeah. but uh, I like Darcy in the right decks. So I just don't know if Cody's in the right deck for it. Right. We we have no bobbles, not a lot of no zero drops. We just have planeswalkers, so it is truly a, a value Darcy. Um, I just, I don't even know if I would play it if I was Cody. Just like taking a card to take a card at that point. Um, let's see. There, there's something else I was thinking. Oh, reprieve the card. Literal card reprieve. Right. That's the white, remand. Yeah. Yeah. I E V. Of course, I spelled it wrong. Eight of fourteen drafts usually. Okay, so we've passed the point where reprieve is usually taken, but it's yeah. Like it actually goes pretty. Four sevenths of drafts. Yeah. Reducing. Yeah, repeat would be really, really good. Um, so yeah, nice value limo there. I just don't know if it fits in anybody's deck. Uh, it. I think it's good for Dan, right? Because it draws you the card. That's the only deck I could think of. It's just, yeah. I don't know if I would ever want to see it in my opening seven necessarily. I think I would want to threat, you know. Uh, if I don't, if I'm not dropping like, it depends. Uh, you know, if you're not dropping like the turn, two, you know, turn one or turn two fatty, I, yeah. I I'm happy to see it in my opening seven just because okay. it's going to draw me the card and. Slow them a little bit. Yep. Uh, but you know, it goes either way. I, okay. Yeah, I like. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, but I don't think it's bad either. No, no, no. Um, like that's something I could see a lean lean into. We mentioned. Hold on, sorry. Uh, I got, I'll be right back. I got yeah. it. I mentioned like remand is still on board uh, as an option, as well. So we have effectively you know, the Azorius remands. Um, Mason has the opportunity to flex into them. Um, I don't think Adam will splash into white. Okay, Elaine taking the Mystic Gate to help round out the mana base. Um, as we mentioned, uh, too many ETB tap lands in, in that deck is definitely going to muddy the waters and make it a little difficult for her to play through, so a filter land seems perfectly fine. I wonder if we would see the uh, the Is It filter land out of Aline. Um, and that, would, that would just kind of help out. I don't think we would see the Simic one or the Gruel one. Those seem a little too, too far-fetched. Um, still not really sure how we're going to power up the Uru on this set. But we'll get there when we get there. All right. So what do we got from Kyle? So right now, I I still want to see a card that closes the game from Kyle. Force of Vigor. Right. Not a bad main deck. A card that we knew. You want to be Steven? Sure. All right. So I did hear you mention that Kyle doesn't want Blood Raid anymore. What what's the reason for that? So it seems I said it seemed like we were moving past a point where we would want Blood Raid because there are a lot of cards that don't seem good to hit off of Blood Raid. We, it seems like we've hit kind of a critical mass of main deck spells that don't cast well. Um, the Tutor still really I'd still really be happy to hit that. But if we go back to uh, to this view, uh, K Command. That is an, like, could be good, could be bad. Meltdown's very bad. Meltdown, like, there's actually, like, cards in order. Like, Bitter Triumph, Crop Rot, Pithing Needle, Meltdown, Retrofitter Foundry, Toxic Deluge, all, like, Life from the Loam. Those, like, even Weather Bloom Command, Exploration, all all those cards could be bad. Hits well, off they're of largely, Blood they're unexciting, but they're not bad, right? It's not like your Counterspell or something. Correct. Like, nothing would be wholly useless. Like, I don't expect Meltdown to be in the main, you so I don't yeah. think that's going to be an option. Right? I think Toxic Deluge would be in the main, and that is, like, a rancid hit off of that. Yeah. Like, similarly, Life from the Loam and Kologon's Command are going to be in the main, and those, like you mentioned, they're, they're unexciting to hit because you might not have good options for all modes. Like, you might just have to go with, like, Discard Deal 2 when you... when do you mainly expect to do like discard reanimate yeah um so, nexus of becoming is a card i don't know if i've ever seen before oh yeah because it's from uh big score or the vault or whatever yeah one of those all right came, let's see if it's a another fun one here is thought scour i'm actually i love thought scour here and i think that uh there's a good chance that um thought scour ends up being both thought scour and mental note in his deck because he does ah, have okay. he has other things he wants to be milling off himself off of um, oh, okay. Elaine did take the it line, like I thought. Um, what are we looking at? What is the card? Uh, Nexus. Nexus of Becoming. And I'll pull it over right here. Yep. Nice. So, at the beginning of combat in your turn, draw a card. Then you may exile an artifact <coughs> or creature. If you do, you make it, you turn into value. Cool. Yep. Um, so yeah, like, not the card I haven't really seen a whole lot of. The 
So, I mean, it mostly just is a it's another Halloween mine, a one directional Halloween mine. Is it better than the the other four mana version of it? I do not know. So I guess it does pump out creatures, so that's nice. Yeah, it's just you have Tinker, so you want to go as big as possible, sure. I guess, like at your value. Uh, it pumps up Thoughtcast. He has the Tolarian Academy. There's other reasons for it too. But... Yeah, yeah. He had this card on his list, but I wasn't sure what it is. What is, it, what is it? It's, it's a Tinker target that yeah. gives you a Halloween mine that also lets you pitch extra cards to creatures. Okay. Yep. So it's have, fine. Yeah. So we have Magus of the Order now. So Jacob is basically kind of telling us that like natural order is the plan here. Mm -hmm. um, like we just want to get some chonkers in. I really do hope that Galta. Uh, I Stampy genuinely, is... I thought Street Wraith was already gone. Mm -mm. Adam needed that one. That is a big miss. We talked about uh, Wraith, and I think when Mason took Death Shadow. Yeah. That seemed like it floated down way too far, because Mason needs to lose life. Correct. And, like, well, and Adam is already on a Doomsday list. Yeah. Like, this is one of the best ways to open a pile, and the other one being Gush. Uh, there's also uh, Edge of Autumn is still around. Sure. Right. Yeah. I'm I mean, not saying it's good, but it is correct. one of the options, right? It's a card that you, he'll have in the pile, but you yeah. don't want that in your hand. No. Interesting. Okay, right. so I like Elaine's lands here. She's eating her vegetables. Yeah. So I mentioned when uh, Elaine took Mystic Gate that I, I would thought the is it one was uh, was up next, but the Simic and the Gruel ones were just out of the question. The Jitte is a good call. Jitte. Brandon with the Winter Orb. Steve, oh, are nice. you sure you're not also drafting Brandon's seat? <laughs> yeah, I you know. <laughs> are you on the phone feeding him picks right now? No, I was talking to my daughter. All right. Trying to keep her negative Nancyness in check. Mm -hmm. So we have two comments here. Uh, Wandering says you probably want at least two natural order targets. Oh yeah, we already talked about that one. So okay, I said depending yeah. on which, which version of the deck you wanted to go. If you wanted to go like the combo kill version, Crater it would be Crater Huff, and yeah. then I'd probably back it up with what if all Primus. Yeah. But if I wanted to go with the way that Jacob's building, I would probably start with Atroxa, like like Jacob has. Or if you want inevitability, you go Progenitus. Yep. Right. That's Stephen mentioned Progenitus. I also mentioned like even in like this kind of list, I would still want a Woodfall Primus as the number two. That makes sense. And then I mentioned like Galta floating around because. If once you have again, it's a crit like the critical mass again. <gasps> oh, Ooh, there's the stifle. <laughs> well, the easiest. Yeah, the easiest of the stifle not targets. Um, Weirdo also points out how long this freaking draft takes. Uh, we yeah. are we're nearing the end of it, but yes, it, the draft itself takes roughly three to four hours, uh, and then we're about to have a seven match tournament after that. So yeah. it's a round robin tournament to go immediately after this. The entire thing is an endurance competition where it usually ends up around. 10 to 12 hours uh, before you're done. So It is a haul. And it announcers, it is a haul as well. Yeah, correct. Because... <laughs> but well, this is why I like these live, because people do it online, and it's a very different experience when you get to make 46 picks over a period of a month and a half, and you get to think about them in between. Mm -hmm. In this case, you have everyone sitting there, and if you start taking too long, they start they start chipping at you. You you really got to make your picks on time. Yeah, you're under the gun. I got it. So give her runes again from Daniel. So I don't know if you heard me saying, like, when, uh, when the Mother of Runes was picked, and now that we have Cathartic Commando into GTA to give her runes, I don't think we're going to see Reality Smasher. I don't, yeah, I don't think he is. I don't think he's going to go with the Eldrazi there. Which, that's a lot of big mana to not yeah. have those, right? It just yeah. feels... Or even like, even without the... Um, like, if I'm Dan, even without the Stoneforge and yep. that big mana, I'm taking a value batter skull. Yeah. Um, There's finally the Undermountain Adventurer gets taken. Super so, late. So Elaine flashed that. Not too... When Elaine took... I'm going to scroll up a little bit on yeah. the sheet. Uh, when Elaine took Hinterland Harbor. Okay. She actually flashed Undermountain Adventurer first. Wow. And then took it out for Hinterland Harbor. <laughs> she took Acid Drain, too. That mm -hmm. card's terrible. No, it's not. Uh, it's terrible. You have Cody with Yavamaya. Correct. And Cody with the Yavamai. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, yeah, Yavamai is your force too, so it blows up. Yeah, Azurain blows up your force as well. But your Hidden Land Harbor is not a forest. As the person who's taken, I right, guarantee sorry. I've taken more than twice as many Acid Rains as the next closest person. It is a bad card. Unless you're just really into the Doctor Who art. That's because it is very much the the Weeping Angel. Yeah. yeah. So Mason ha like is on the value reanimator plan for Death Shadow basically. Yep. Um, Street like reanimating Street Wraith is a way to chip away at your life total. It's fine. Yeah, for Death Shadow. I assume he'll. I mean, he, you could also just reanimate your opponent's cards. Like, oh yeah, for sure. For is sure. super flexible. Yeah, I'm just thinking about ways to actually make Death Shadow a threat, and I'm gonna be really excited if Berserk is the last pick in uh -huh. Mason's well, draft. As I said, I don't know if you were in here, Mark, but I said I don't know if one of you was in here, one of you wasn't. But Mason had mentioned outside that he took. People kept saying, oh, like, surprise, he wasn't taking duels. Yeah. But he was afraid to take the shocks early because yeah. it was going to talk about Death Shadow. Yep. Yeah. I like this Emery pick. That's a good Emery pick. 
we talked about kind of Emery being one of the options if he wants to go more into the thought cast style deck. Mm-hmm. And I already take a thought cast. Has and thought monitor, monitor taken? Okay, good. Yeah. Took them both. No nice. When thought, he could, he'd go Cannoneer then at that point. That, too. Yeah, uh, the first pick out of that bunch was Thought Monitor, and I suggested the Kappa Cannoneer back on yeah. the menu. Mm-hmm. Uh, does he have the Urza's Bobble? Yes. Okay. Oh, no, not Urza, sorry, he's Mishra's. He has Mishra, somebody else took Urza's then. Okay. Um, I saw it got taken. Oh, there's Rata Dragon. There's Rata Dragon. Oh, man. Steven's pick comes through. Uh, I'll be back. Yep. <laughs> he's about to go give some in high five. All right. I like this Owl and Liberator, too. It's a card that obviously made waves in Vintage. Yeah. Uh, but I like it a lot in this format. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up because the flip side is actually... The, the front side is really good. It's a uh, Viridian Zealot, correct? Uh, the front side is Viridian Zealot. Uh, but the the back side is really, nuts. Yeah, really what people are afraid I'm of. I'm going to flip over to that. <laughs> yeah. Oops, sorry, okay. yeah. So you can sack it to destroy target artifact or enchantment whenever it attacks... Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Yeah, depending on control. So you just get to keep smacking somebody. Yeah, so you can smack, just sack on the front side, and then the back side, once it flips, you Ooh, just transmute. keep going and keep going. Transmute artifact. Sick. So we have gadget tier. We could use power artifact, actually, on one, on one or both of our mono. Yes, both. Yeah, to go infinite. Uh, Emrakul and uh, Nulamog are both off the table. Well, I guess it won't be Nulamog in like a month, but like <laughs> Nulamog and the Ceaseless Hunger are, are, are off the board. So, oh, there's a consider for Mason. That's a card of like, so I think you, bo- you were both mentioning it for Adam. I was thinking about it for Brendan with uh, LED, Shell Dock Isle, possible Breach, uh, Echo of the Ends Breach Shell. And it considers a way to just kind of churn through. Yeah, I thought after this point, once he took through Animate, I figured Mason was the one spot it really needed to. Yeah. I, that's a no, both Mason and Elaine have like this treasure cruise and dig through time I, and Elaine also has Uro and I don't know exactly how they are both going to fill their graveyards <laughs> enough to make those cards worthwhile uh, Mason at least has both Consider and Thought Scour what's so, the remind me of the doorkeeper Thrall can we I know it prevents it's... artifacts and creatures from having ETBs okay okay yeah, I, knew, I knew it was kind of a, one of those I, I think this card's good it is uh, it is on I unironically one of the best creatures in Vintage because there's just so little removal that sometimes it just gets it done. Yeah, there's also the the X spell one from uh, that sees play in different things, like it makes the artifacts come and play tapped, maybe? I think it's an X spell. There's a white new, white dork. Did you, you might have even printed it out. I don't remember what it's called, though. Are you talking about the, the three mana, the new Aven, <laughs> uh, the Aven Sensor? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, Aven you were talking sensor. about that. Yeah. I couldn't remember the name of that bird. New <laughs> No, actually, I wasn't talking about that one. That, that, I don't think I'm talking about... Um, Just go to Mythic Spoiler. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. All right. Active Authority. Okay, okay. I like Active Authority. That's interesting. Not Dead After All is also fun. Yeah, Not Dead After All is the Grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep going to the right. Yeah, I'll check it out. What does Active Authority do? Um, it's when it comes into play, so it's yep. enchantment. When it comes yep. into play, you exile, target, uh, artifact, or um, enchantment. Yep. And then you can, at the beginning of your upkeep, you can pass it to one of your opponents mm-hmm. and exile an artifact or enchantment. Oh, okay. So it was frequently, I don't know, there it's just going to give her two, especially because she doesn't have a lot of artifact or enchantments, yep. so it's not going to matter. Got it. I used it in Aminatu because you would do it and then pass it and then bounce it back to your side uh, and just keep doing it over it. and over got again. It, got it, got it. Not that af- after all is a little interesting. There's only grief, so it's like a really weak scam. Endurance and fury are both in Jacob's list. Kyle has grief. Cody, I think, has solitude. I love how I had the time to clean my entire bathroom yep. and the track's still going. <laughs> yep, deep clean nonetheless. Yeah. So I think we're missing solitude. I think that's the last uh, of the element, the pitch elementals. But yeah, Kyle has uh, solitude's sol- gone. Subtlety, you mean? Or subtlety? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah subtlety. Titania, Protector of Argoth. Okay, that's a really good card with Zurin Orb, Crucible, and Fast Bond. Five fives go burr. Even Interrupters on the screen as well. Yep. Okay, so yeah, that's not the one I was thinking of, but that one's good. This one is Enters the Battlefield, Exile Target Spell, it becomes plotted. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for the one I was thinking of, which is an anti artifacty thing. Um, so Chandra TOD. In Dan's list, a little extra mana gets you going. Can finish the game out. Um, we're looking at a draft that actually does seem to be, aside, unless you're Jacob, pretty light on creatures, honestly. 
Like Elaine doesn't have a lot. Uh, Mason doesn't have a lot. Adam doesn't have a lot right now. Like, where, what number are we? Like, where are we in the rounds? All right, we got like six, seven more rounds to go. Like, we should hopefully start seeing some more creatures come up. There it is. Two cities. City of Brass, that's made of oh, nice. Okay. Oh, I like that Titania there. That's not yeah. bad. Well, well yeah, well, that's what it, so you have you have fast bond, you have crucible, right? And then you just make infinite five fives. Done deal. So let's see. I think Jacob wants a couple more. Uh, just a couple more cards before the natural order. We're just a little short. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if Brandon's going to take um, Spelunking. I doubt it. I, mean, I don't know if you even know. He's been kind of... You can go infinite with... Uh, or close to infinite with Spelunking and like two bounce lines, I think. Right. And just so it just makes infinite five fives again, I think. Sorry, folks. I've been a little distracted here. I've got a child issue going on and ongoing, so... When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, sure. Then you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. If you put a cave onto the battlefield, this way you gain four life, so that doesn't matter. Land as you control, enter the battlefield on tap. So this is the second amulet of vigor, so it allows you to effectively just what go is infinite. this one? <clears throat> Three steps ahead. This was the card that basically kind of uh, okay. made a number of the slow plotting decks in this last Pro Tour possible. Um, okay. I think it's cancel, it's draw a card. Oh, right, right, right. The modal cancel. Yeah. Oh, okay, so Wither Room. So we were asking about Kyle's reach earlier, right? Like, how's he going to finish? And he's got the vamp. Uh, so... Wither Bloom Apprentice? Chain of Smog. Yep, okay. So... Or, okay. Could also take Chain of Acid, Dark Steel Citadel. Not Citadel, <laughs> Dark Steel... What's the land? Uh, Dark Steel Citadel. Yeah. Citadel, okay. I thought that was the big one that made all your artifacts. No. Nah. This Forge, okay, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... Gr Gristlebrand, off the reanimate. That's the thing... I wonder if Mason's last bunch of picks are all just reanimator yeah, spells. Yeah. yeah, or not the other one. That's still could be. That's open. Chris Brand also uh, plays well with no. Death Shadow. It's true. Yeah, Re reanimate's gone. He has no other reanimation spells yet, though. So it could be animate dead. It could be entomb. Not entomb. Sorry, uh, exhum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like what? What's the next best thing that somebody's going to exhum against him? It's either going to be Titania or something from Jacob. Like, yeah, the You know, really, yeah. You know. I wouldn't really fear much out of anybody else's deck coming Solitude. out of the graveyard. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. But then you can just pay with Crystal Brand in response, right? right. Just do what, you need, what, do what you need to. Yeah, because you're getting ready to gain more life anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So reset. But that does turn, turn off the the Death Shadow. Right. But yeah, uh, Necromancy's still out there. Animate Dead, Dance of the Dead. It's all it's all open. Mm -hmm. um, no Bizarre. That hasn't been taken yet. Neither has Urborg. Nor has Workshop. No, that's... Adam. Yeah, I don't see merch up in this one, but it's... I mean, Adam could be, but... No. Yeah, but I don't think so. I think, especially with the Doomsday back up. If he hadn't had the Doomsday plan there... There's our board. Okay. I like that. Yeah, it, it just makes your color comments that much easier. I, think there's, I don't think there was a reason to not take that card as Adam. Does the Simic Growth Chamber from Brandon indicate that he's going to go Amulet? That's why I thought. That's why I mentioned spelunking because it, it technically a better amulet. No, but it doesn't indicate he might go crabs. Yeah, because that's, that's cor fair. coarser crab. Yep. You just that fast is. bond and yes, mill them out. Crab. So yeah. yeah. Which is actually I don't know not this version of the power cube on moto, but the previous version of the power cube on moto had exactly that that <laughs> list. Like I've almost everything that Brandon has drafted right. comes from that list. Um, and Caleb Durward drafted it a number of times. And yeah. the key card wasn't spelunking, but it that was one of the cards that allowed him to just combo somebody out on that turn. Otherwise, it had to, it took a couple of turns to get there, mm -hmm. like two or yeah. three, but it was very efficient. And, and Brandon was the the start of the crabs and VRD drive. It's been since kind of re and and uh, pioneered mm. and made great by Stee, who's won several <laughs> lists with it. But uh, mm. Brandon was definitely the one who kind of started the started the crabs as a thing. Okay. You know. So turn tip I said turn timber somebody else's I summoner's trap on the front right. No, because it only hits like smaller creatures. Uh, okay. I, it can hit a bunch of mana dorks. Like, I don't know. I don't think this spell. I've never... This spell's not great. Unless you're trying to hit specific sh small combo pieces. 
In the top seven cards of your library, you can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Got it. Yeah. If that card is converted on a cost three or less, it enters. Oh, okay. So no matter what, you get a creature. It just gets a bonus if it costs. Oh, okay. the the... If you find one in the top seven. Yeah. Right. That still says. Oh, okay. <gasps> so that's why they were going nuts because that was on the that was in paper. That's hateful. Yes, it is. Okay. Come on, you have to take Galta. No, you don't. If but oh, you should. But yes, yeah. well, you got Soul Guide Lantern. You get Mucked Mason. All right. You still can take Chain of Acid and Dark Scissor. <laughs> it's not good, <clears throat> but it is an option. This Chain of Smog, man, that's a it's brutal old pick. Do you take the... <laughs> Do you take the... See, I think you take the Chain of Smog first because there are other cards that it works with. Yeah, Professor Onyx. Yeah. Right? And, and the other one that's good, Sedgemore Witch. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sedgemore Witch makes it infinite yeah. dudes. And infinite life, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Archonic Pearl. Okay, that's a card I thought actually Jacob was going to take earlier right after Sneak Attack, but the deck seemed a little questionable in regards to direction, so I didn't want to suggest it. Very good card, though. Yeah. Yeah, I like Mason's Pivot into Reanimator. Yep. Yeah, it's a smart, it's a very clear, nice pivot. You know, it's one of those that's just like, hey, this is clearly no one's in it, and yep. it works with what I'm doing. I'm still surprised he hasn't had the Grist here, just because it throws cards in there um, but you know his, his green is really minimal yeah right. uh, I, I'm surprised that either him or um, Kyle doesn't I mean that was the yeah. I, I had I actually I was joking with Mason about the green sun because I said I was like I think Kyle wants the green sun on draft sitting earlier but if he doesn't take it now Mason will take it on the way back and he'll take it with the grist and then Brandon took it and, and, and Mason was like yeah Brandon uh, I didn't see the grist part because I didn't want to bring that up but I just started the green sun and he was like yeah you know, that, that green sun would have been mine you yeah. know um, I was I wondered if when we saw the reanimator stuff if we'd also see Agatha Salt even come out for Mason's list I mentioned it with the grist for Kyle if Kyle wanted to do that um, I mean, I guess it's, I wouldn't. Uh, Cody really likes it just to have as a random graveyard hate with yeah. potential upside. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it there, and that you can just randomly hate, and then sometimes you get massive upside. Yep. Right. Like hate out the walking ballista, and then all of a sudden just upside for your own creatures, right? Yeah. On, on pick forty, getting hated out here by Kyle has got to be thrown his mental game a little bit. Yeah. I I know that that's uh, an area he's worked on in Magic, and I I really hope he like pivots from here and just takes the time finds the right pick because right. this, this is a tough. Tough spot to be in, getting hate picked in a spot that doesn't feel justified. It's right. like a tough spot to come back from. Yeah, I get that. You have crop rot though, and Urborg was taken, so you still have. Ur it, it only costs him one pick, right? It only costs yeah. him his yeah. one apprentice, so exactly. it's, it's a one for one. But still, it doesn't feel good. No, no. Oh, Ashiok. Okay. So we have Oppo Agent, and we have Ashiok now. So we're just kind of mm -hmm. stuffing the search. Yeah. Dreamer right, Cascade. Oh, there's a crab. All right, so we need to switch over to the draft tab to see what's missing. Tormond. <laughs> it's, it's our good buddy Tormond. It's uh, Tormod's cousin. So wait, why would we take why would we take Rune Crab over the, the original? Because he's gonna take both crabs and it doesn't matter. Correct. Rune Crab is better though at Exiles. Ah. Okay. Oh no, sorry. This is the mill one. The other one Exiles. The other one's better. No, I think the other one hits every opponent. It also Exiles though. I, I don't think so. I don't, both of them, no, both of them mill. One of them just hits every opponent. Yes, Rune Crab hits each opponent. Okay. It doesn't target. No, they both mill. All right, he just... All right. Painter's Servant, Grindstone from Cody, into Hedron Crab from Brandon. So, yeah, yeah we got it. Yeah, so I don't know if Cody's actually going to play the Servant Grindstone, but it just it's something that you can ha always have a threat to bring in and <clears> make sure <throat> someone else doesn't have it. Yep. Um, one thing that was kind of discussing earlier, somebody were talking about, Adam was saying outside that... Um, He's kind of got the same thing that he had. I had last time that we had talked about a stream, which was a lack of sideboard cards. And I said, honestly, at this point, main deck cards are so strong, sideboarding is even harder, and I think not as important because a lot of times, like, okay, I can bring in this, which shores up like a five percent, but how much am I cutting out of my engine or yeah. out of my thing? And I said, so at that point, we had a question: Does if sideboard cards become less valuable because main deck cards are so strong, is hate picking now more valuable because you have all these extra picks yeah, that, to do something with? That's right? kind of where Elaine was going when we were talking. She want Elaine was saying how all your cards need to be useful, and while 
she was drafting, she's also creating an in-out list, and she's having a hard time finding cards to take out because right. all the cards are just so good. Right. Um, yeah, we're at a so. really weird point where cards are just so ridiculously yeah. strong that it's just like I often have great sideboard cards. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, yeah, I can bring in this one thing, this one card that hits a graveyard for their one value reanimate. Yeah. But yeah. like, what am I cutting to do that? Not every card is literally chill. Right. Yeah. And particularly, like when. Like if you're drafting engine decks, yep. right? Like if you're cutting an engine piece, yep. like you know, especially in forty card where there's less yeah. flex. Yeah, Adeline, so good. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Dan just looks to be playing a Boros Agro with the, with some initiative. Yeah. Uh, synergies. And it does does kind of like, win a lot, but he might die of boredom. That's the downside. Yep, I get that. Oh. Water Winer points out that the crabs also have different toughnesses. Okay. I knew that, but yeah. but <laughs> some crabs are resilient to that spray. Other crabs you got to go to the doctor for. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it's... Mark knows. That's what happens when you're from Michigan. Deserted beach. Is that the reveal a cart? No, that's no, tour. It's a fast line. Okay. All right, so we're down to the end here, folks. We've got the five. Um, I think to speed things along, I don't want to do an interview after this, just to let people build. So we're probably we're going to go to after draft is done. We're going to go to a, an away screen. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye, and we'll come back as soon as we have a first game. Uh, it should be within 20, 25 minutes or so. Yeah. So, uh, but just keep an eye where we'll give ourselves a little break and do that and uh, head about and talk to people as they make decks and then we'll get our first game up and running then. Yep. So one thing we are gonna do a little different this time is we are not Horizon going lands. to try Ooh, to um, just constantly rush someone over and like, put games on hold to so we get someone so we might have a as different than the past we might have a few more we'll be right back screens yeah. uh, up because you know when we try to have a game constantly on it makes for some weird dynamics and mm -hmm. drags the night on a little bit yep. so it makes it really difficult to make sure everybody gets on in a timely yeah. fashion too so spyglass really good what's that Malcolm that's the uh... I draw it loots when it hits uh, unless you get to four in which case you get to cast the card for free oh that's right that's right yeah yeah yeah, that card's yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, and that's with, a new card that will need printed. Yeah. <laughs> and with Fairy Mastermind already, Malcolm's a fine secondary option there. Yeah. Thrun the last troll. Go. Cool. Is that four mana original thrun? Mm -hmm. Okay. Original. I like both thruns. I, I think they're solid. Hard answer. Yeah, it, that's a fine creature for the deck. Like you just want to play some mid range crap, some yeah. in the natural order away as a sticky threat for a while, or just you know try and finish the game up that way. Anything really interesting that's missing, or did our, t our uh, missing go down when we? I'll get that down. Uh, I think it might. We might have lost them when we. Uh... Oh, you can do that. <clears throat> one, yeah. If I had to guess, there's definitely some lands that are still out there. Like I don't think we've seen Steam Vents go. Yeah. So that should be like literally the number one card that's missing. Is Bayou gone? No. But I think Steam Vents was above Bayou right, on that it list was, anyway. It was, yeah. <laughs> Which I really like. Nuclear Fallout? Yep, that's from the Fallout set. What does that one do? I just read that card for the first time the other day. I sh should remember. Each creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Each player gets X rad counters. And rad counters are the mill counters. Yeah, so rad counters work where you mill X cards mm -hmm. equal to the rad counters you have. Mm -hmm. And then you, if you, for every land you mill... You remove a rad counter. You keep a rad counter, right? Is it? It's one or the other. Like, what cre lands either remove rad counters and you lose life, yep. or they keep rad counters and it's creatures that remove them and lose life. Got it. It's one of the. One of them keeps, one of them loses. So. We'll need to print out the rad counter. Yeah. <laughs> Not as rad as you think. Never is. Here's missing cards. Yep. Steam All Bed right. still. Steam Number one. Breach. Clamp. Brain freeze, which I expect that will go to Brandon. That won't be missing for long. Yep. That was my thought. Was Brandon would take it towards the end? 
Oh. You mentioned Skull Clamp. Don't know exactly where that's going to go. Lattice yeah, should, go. Yeah, Lattice should go to for the Karn, if he remembers. Jacob doesn't have the sheet up, so my guess is that he is missing the Skull Clamp. But he's the only person that wants it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a Caustic Brontodon. Or Dark Bronfodon, sorry. Oh, the new the Dark Bronfodon. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one I was discussing with you the other day, Mark. Caustic what? Bronto or something like that? Bronco? Yeah. So if it's unsaddled, you draw a card and you... It bops. You lose life. If it is saddled, you draw a card and they lose life. So it turns... So, but if he saddles it and flips Grizzlebrand... <laughs> bam, bam, bop, boom, bop, bop. Pretty good. I think it's pretty good in this deck, actually, right? What's the saddle cost? A three saddle? That's eh, not too bad. It's good without saddling up, so I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Who has top? Uh, the same person that has... I think it's... Has the same person that has it's the Kyle. It's Kyle. It's Kyle? Okay. Yeah, Kyle's top. Mana leak didn't get taken. Yeah, no, leak's not. No more lies hasn't remained. Been yep, reprieve. It's kind of wild. Yeah, there are a lot of good cards out there that are just kind of floating. I E V. Yeah. Creeping corrosion might be a print. Nuclear fallout. Caustic. Oh, Bronco. I was trying to bring a pest infestation before. That's what I was looking for. That card is very good. Yeah, yeah I thought I thought Kyle would have taken that a long time ago. Pit oh, boy, boy three thousand. Quote, this should go in every commander deck. I don't know what that card does. Pit Boy 3000? Yeah, it does a lot of things. It's kind of like it's a boring. mini walker on an equipment type thing. Yeah. So, when equipped, choose one. You either loot, mm-hmm. uh, you put a 1 1 counter on that creature, mm-hmm. or you untap up to two target lands. Okay, yeah, that's pretty boring. And it's tutorable by Saga. Saga, yeah. Okay, so Elaine's plan to win is by her opponent's playing creatures. Understood. <laughs> there was the reprieve. Okay. So that was Dan. Yeah. Dan took the reprieve. Yeah, Dan took the reprieve. Terror Thunder, Thunder. Yeah. nice. Perfectly fine sideboard card. Oh, yeah, so good. Yeah. I mean, it's like a. Abrupt K Assassins, Tear Sunder, they yep, all yep. go boom, boom, boom. We have enough green decks with enough fast mana that I would have thought, because at, at least Adam is in the field, that Pest Infestation would have gone earlier. Yeah, no, I think it's one that's really good here, uh, and any of these could take Natural State, that just uh, wipes artifacts, right? Yes, yeah, so I think it... Is it the one that tucks? Generous Plunderer. Oh, okay, it has a, a mana value restriction on it. Okay. What is a Generous Plunderer? I don't know. It's, it's a not- new one. It's not Pitiless Plunderer, so... No. Gemstone Mine. Oh, okay, these picks are coming in fast. Oh, it, it, one of those, sometimes the newest cards don't pop yep. up there, uh, even if the right, name pops go. up. Yep, I got it. I'll... Okay. Menace, 2-2 two, two for 2. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a treasure token when you do... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was talking about this the other day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, at the beginning of your life, you may create a treasure token. When you do, target opponent creates a tapped treasure token. So yeah. you each get a treasure token, but there is a tap, so they can't right. use it. And then you, when it attacks, it yep. does damage. So it, this is a great sideboard card against Adam. And Adam, yeah. Uh, and uh, Dan. Yep. Yeah, that's a good pick there. Uh, and Adam Pockle Thousands Moon, that makes gnomes, right? Um, or Ari Anim Pockle. Oh. Whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, put a 1-1 counter on Nadine Pakal, then create X-1-1 colorless gnome artifact creatures that are tapped and attacking, where X are the number of 1-1 encounters on Anna Pakal. Okay. Yep. So. so I don't... Here, there's a collective brutality. Uh, there's a subtlety. subtlety. Okay. So this is one of those things so for, for Elaine's deck. I can't remember... Do you know the name of the Wrath? I think it costs five that incubates. No, it's I not, don't remember. It's not Sunfall. Um, is it... Yeah, I don't remember it. I don't think it's Sunfall. It's, it, it might be Sunfall. If it costs five. Yep, it costs five. Exile all creatures. Okay, he mentioned this for Mori Volt. What does this thing do? He This sounded really cool. He explained it to me, and it sounded really cool in his deck. Um, so it's a land. It taps for colorless. Tap three in it. Discard a card. Look at the top. X card of your library reacts the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards in the hand and the rest in your bottom, and on the bottom in random order. Okay. This card seems really good for him. I like that pick a lot. Yeah, that's solid. Control. Yeah, so effectively at some point you just get to set the order of the bottom of your library. Yeah, you're just digging, 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 yep. digging. Creeping Corrosion, good sideboard card. We missed uh, that pick. Pe- uh, pest Infestation would have been better there. 
Yep. Just because you get a yeah, yeah, he has the dorks to do hey the XX and, and the two Moxen. Yeah. Inferno Titan. Like that though. Yeah. I like Inferno Titan. It's just you know, prime time is good, but he's not looking <laughs> to get the lands. I, in fact, he does he doesn't have any lands nope. outside of base. He has drafted no lands. So yeah. actually, no, I think he took something early on. Cradle. He did. He has a few things. He has Cradle. He has because uh, he had the white splashes, so he took a couple. Oh yeah, yeah. there's definitely some right stomping grounds, windswept, air mazes. So yeah, he has yeah. some lands. Okay. Yep. But still, I like Inferno. You just end games. Yeah, you don't have any synergies with uh, fishing up lands. It also does. Assume it's bored, and it also comes in pretty good against uh, Cody and Dan. Right? It does pretty good there. I mean, if you sneak it, it does nine acidic. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, acidic Actually, if you sneak it, it does uh, twelve. Oh, because it ETBs it does three. ETBs does three attacks yeah, for yeah. six, and <laughs> it does yeah, three on turn. Yeah. Attack trigger. Yeah. Acidic slime costs a lot for a little. It does. It does. There's just better than you know. Call up a call. A call up a call. I have no idea what this card is, and I'm gonna go ahead and guess the uh, the draft search feature doesn't either. At the beginning of each player's end step, if an artifact under the battlefield under your control this turn, look at the top two guards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Okay, so you just start to peek at the top. Yeah. Lingering souls and sort of a yeah, shoulder edict. Okay, some agnostic stuff. Yeah. Linger, uh, lingering souls, another card that you can entomb for value. We already no, for life. sure. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't think that's what we want to be doing, but it is a thing that can happen. Um, yeah. Look here, I wonder... So Treachery gets a card that's in play. Is yeah, it? and then untaps... Yep, the five. The five. Because it's from, you know, that era. Or that, that, that block. But Bribery. That is... Yep, exactly. Yep. <laughs> is that the better option? Because there's so much going on inside decks. Would you rather just it go It depends. Fish? Sometimes I you know, sometimes I want the card that's in play. I, that's right. right. I, I, you know, I, sadly, it doesn't do both. Sometimes yeah. I, I need to win the game, and I need the card that's there. Right? There are three picks left, so por que no los dos, you know? Yeah. Blood Bowl Sorcerer. That is the red uh, initiative. One of the red initiative ones. Isn't it? Nope. No. Okay. I entered the battle. Oh, yeah. When it ETBs, you take the yeah. initiative. It's a 3-3 three, three right. for 4. Then it has Crown of Madness. One in a red. Sack an artifact or creature. Go goad. target creature. Oh, God, I don't think we're doing that. I think we just wanted to... I mean, you goad can randomly be good, like, if I want to get rid of Bob, right? Or I want to get rid of something that... I, I think this is just a... I'm yeah, not... no, no. It's the initiative. But, like, there is a random cases where they've got something that you need to get rid of. Yeah. yeah. That goad can... Take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's what are we missing from a lane? I don't know. We're on the, the text version, so it's not okay. like we're missing an image. Right. Um, so we're just kind of chilling. I don't know. There, there's still a lot open uh, in the way for options for a lane. Complicate. That's, that sounds complicated. It does. Crystal vein. Why are we taking lanes? That... Counter target spell and control. Okay, so it's a a model leak that cycles. Or four spikes when you cycle it. Okay, yeah. interesting. Why are we taking Crystal Vein as Brandon? It's not. A, it does sack, so it plays into Titania. Monomorpho seems fine for Cody. You know, redraw and set your mana. Right? Yeah, I don't know if he's in that's main deck or not. I mean, I don't know what you want it for, but it's not bad. Yeah, it feels like a fine. It, it, I don't want to say a throwaway pick, but it's right. just it, it could. You know, tie the room together when you sit out right. your deck and you're like, uh, I am very close to being able to not play cards. So right. Let me take in a little bit of fixing. Horizon Canopy. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Oh, temporal Mastery. Right. Okay. That, it, he likes the Temporal for the. Um, that's the. Take an extra turn with uh, Delve. Is it, oh, is it Delve one or is I that the. Um, oh, the miracle, miracle one. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I think you're Which right. Which he's got, he's got uh, Mystic. It is. It is yeah, a he's got two. Yeah. Does it ban, uh, exile itself? It or does not? exile itself. Okay. okay. So you can't re, re abuse it. Mm -hmm. So we've got a Talisman. Again, I think Talismans are massively underrated. Ooh, Night, Night Pack Ambusher. I love that card. Let's see, is it in here? Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one plus one. It's a big body with flash that makes wolves. Yeah, that's the <laughs> end step. If you didn't cast a spell this turn, okay, yeah, yeah, like, oh, it's oh. a control wolf, man. It's a yeah, bit, like, yeah. Elaine's not necessarily playing tap out control, but there right. are times where you could just pass the turn with a bunch of instants in hand. Yeah. So yeah, why not? You gotta end the game somehow, right? 
Yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's the problem with the the slight uh, the sneak attack deck is it's like you often you get the setup and you get the payoffs and do they have to come together. Sometimes and, the twain never. Yeah, show sometimes meet. the yeah. twain never show meet. <laughs> That is the problem I had playing the de- the deck in Legacy when you had eight show four yeah. show and tells four sneak attacks two omniscience and like between eight and twelve cards to put into play. Sometimes you just spun your wheels with one side of the combo in hand. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> All right, Kyle with the Rabble Master, okay. which seems fine for the Gen deck. Nah, no, it's good. It's Under just... Mountain Adventure and Rabble Master will definitely close out the games. Yeah, pretty easy. Um, I, that, that's a good pickup. There's still like some be Bloodbraid Elf is still here doesn't really work with rabble master yeah. legion war boss is still here not a bad option overall um seems decent new new smee potentially oh yeah the new squee uh, yeah. or squee oh, yes me yeah i've been playing lorcana so i think that's it's me I, 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 my first thought was bob hoshkins <laughs> yeah. it's me it's me yeah. that's me which I, one is he dubious monarch i've been yeah dubious monarch yeah i've been playing a lot of lorcana so that's where i'm thinking of smee uh yeah so yeah you just, yeah the three drop that just makes yeah. it open. There's the Goblet Shrine. From Mason, okay. A little yep. more just paying himself. Yep, to make... Oh, Jewel Jeweled Amulet. Amulet. Oh, okay, okay. What, what did that one do again? That uh, ETB, you draw three cards... Oh, no. Oh, no, sorry. This is not Jewel Amulet. This is like a weird... No, you're thinking of the weird... The pass back and forth jewel. stone. Yeah, this yeah. is like a, a Mox, but it has to have a counter on it, and you can put a counter on it. Oh, okay. Uh, taking a turn off, basically. Circle of Dreams Druid, Roxanne? Roxanne! As everybody out there says the same thing. Uh, Is she putting on the red light? Like, who the hell is... Yes. Yeah, she is. All right. Whatever Roxanne... Oh, yeah, it's uh, a meteor based Oh, that meteor's pretty sweet, though, man. I mean, that's kind of cool. Whenever it ETBs or attacks, create a tapped colors artifact token named Meteorite. Yeah. When Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target and tap, add one mana of any color. Doubles your rocks, mana rocks. Whenever you tap, all right. Yep. Okay, so Circle of Dreams, Druid. I think this is the one I might have been thinking about earlier. It's the Cradle. Uh, yeah... Th- three green cradle yeah this one there's still one more that I was like okay. if we see this coming what's in, that I man all that sorts of, it's a <laughs> fallout come on V8 so, uh, two black black split second choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness destroy the chosen creatures okay I mean I like I like I like split second split second's always oh, there's, there's the enemy dead, dead. another yeah. solid very good brotherhood nice brotherhood end yep. nothing I think I saw Kyle looking at brotherhood end brotherhood's end and cast them to the fire when I was out there on break yeah um, but yeah that's and brotherhood's end effectively the same thing just looking to clear the board of yeah basically Cody's creatures <laughs> okay so Brendan is solidly not playing breach yeah, we have no, we, yeah, we have no win con. So, I, I still wonder if he brain freezes here. Like, <laughs> like last big brain freeze, I still wouldn't be surprised, yeah. but, you know. So, Tatani doesn't allow us to play an extra land, and we have no other way. So, we have Fast Bond, we have Crucible. Or, no, uh, Tasha's hit this last for last pick. I'm calling brain freeze or Tasha's for Brandon. For Brandon, okay. Yeah, I have no idea for Elaine. Um... Dan, I'm just going to assume like another a talisman or something. I don't know. I don't well, conviction's know. the red white one. I don't know where else you need to go. Yeah, true. Right. Um, I mean, you could go out and that, I guess, but that doesn't seem. Yeah, I think I think Dan set up pretty He's well. He's got the G. The G tag, yeah. Uh, if another. Oh, hibernation from Elaine to reset all green creatures. Not a bad shared, shared fate. fate. I think I know what that card is, but I'm not 100. percent So I'm just going to throw. I it think. On this I don't think yeah, he's not yep. playing it. He's just being silly. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no way you can cast it, so I'm not even going to bother. So, Tasha's or Freeze. Make me right. Make me right, Brendan. What's the coolest thing we can do off the shell, Doc Isle? Is it just Echo of Eons? Yeah, I mean, probably. So we have Fast Bond, we have Zern Orb, we have Crucible, so we can infinitely mill, we can make infinite five fives. We can't. We have. Uh, we don't. We have. I thought we had one Horizon Land in here. Yeah, what there is Waterlogged Grove, so we can draw infinitely. Right. Basically, Brendan's set up to just do infinite everything. Yeah. You can. You know. Gold Vein Hider, that's new. Okay. This one does. Oh, something. no, this he's. Oh, he's been. He was all about this when it got spoiled. He came out. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, that's right. It's basically the new um, Fireball Hydra. Vigilance, right. Trample, Haste, X and a green for a zero zero. Gold Drain Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When it dies, create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to its power. So again, something to do once you've made you know, like yeah, an unbound amount of mana. We also have Tireless Provisioner in here. Not as good as Tracker, but it is something that you know, yeah. triggers something like yeah, that. Yeah, he was, he was talking about that Hydra a lot when yeah. it got spoiled. Like, he popped out of semi-retirement. Uh, and was like, this card's legit! <laughs> <laughs> and then Invasion of Gobacon to round it out. So this yeah. is the so, White Invasion solid, card. Yeah, solid sideboard card. Yeah. Somebody actually want to slow something down. Yeah. The card's good. Yep. He might even main deck, to be honest. I mean, the card's just legit. Yeah. Uh, being a mess up. Oh, the, the flip's so good. Yeah, that's, that's what you want for there's also the case that uh, is an anthem effect that, like, once you solve it, all your creatures get plus one from this one. Yeah. I'm surprised we didn't. All right, folks. That is the draft there in build phase. This is kind of crazy. I don't know where what's going to go where. Uh, who's your front? Who do you think? Who's your, what's your prediction?